Well, good afternoon and welcome to Silverstone Circuit. You can see there's a slight haze across that circuit. It's a nice day here. I'm trying to say it not too loud because I don't want to tempt fate. We've had the qualifying all morning, including a wonderful Super Bowl for the Miata Trophy. But now it's time to go racing for day one of the MSVR race meet here on the Silverstone National Circuit, starting off with the Clubman's Sports Prototype Championship. My name is Chris Dawes, and uh, we've got down in the pit lane when, uh, when, when things get going is that you will hear, even if it's just for the uh, the podium interviews at the end, is Jack Werrell, and he and I will be swapping positions for tomorrow on day two, but also up here in the commentary box. It's uh, a voice very familiar to this circuit in particular. In fact, in the world of motor racing, it's Ian Titchmarsh. Hello, sir. Uh, well, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Chris. Yes, looking forward to this afternoon's racing. It's my first outing of the year, actually, uh, talking. I went along to oh, the really? British GT because we've got that coming here soon. But, uh, yeah, uh, we had some interesting qualifying this morning. Uh, Silverstone National Circuit provides some great racing normally. Lots of space in which to have their uh, fun, yes. their drivers. And they'll be making their way out. In fact, they have made their way out onto the circuit now. Oop, somebody's come in straight into the pit, I think it was, or in fact, or possibly yeah. ducking somewhere else. And I was just watching on the stream someone's. Mm -hmm ducked uh, a different direction to everyone else. Everyone's got that one friend, haven't they, though? But uh, they, uh, <laughs> if they haven't, then it's you. But uh, it, it, they're making their way out, and uh, it will be this for this opening race, the Clubman Sports Prototype Championship. They have three races over the course of this weekend, two today and one tomorrow, and they are all 15 minutes long. And today's uh, grids are actually based on their first and second fastest lap times in qualifying. And the grid, you'll see that there's their, they're lining up there. I've got to make sure I remember that it's the opposite way around to what I'm used to in terms of the pole is logically, but it's on the outside, so it's on the right-hand side of our grid sheet of, uh, of paper. But uh, Steve Dickens, number seven, managed to, uh, to put that car on pole position. And, and it really was mixing it up during the course of that qualifying session, to be fair, is that uh, there, there was at least three of them vying for that pole position from memory, Ian. That, that's right. The, the two Steves, Dickens and Collier, former champion, and Clive Wood, also a club champion, not in this category, but in, in, in this uh, championship. But uh, yes, it was very close indeed. We got Alan Cook out in last year's championship winning car, but it wasn't Alan who drove the car. The Phantom PR22, James Clark raced last year. Uh, to the championship very convincingly. I think it's going to be a more open championship this year. Uh, and any one of those first five drivers, although uh, first four drivers, certainly, Steve Dickens, Steve Collier, Clive Wood, Alan Cook, and Ben Malik, I think, also is a potential uh, winner. So we should be in for... They like their 15-minute races. They, they, that's quite long enough. They don't need to have the 20 <laughs> minutes. Uh, I, I, I have asked them about this in the past, and they say, no, 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 15 minutes is... Plenty long enough. <laughs> we can have some uh, cup of tea in the pan and go out for our later race. Well, races. as they make their way off on their green flag lap, the uh, clubs, Clubman Sports Prototype Championship, the grid will be lining up as follows. Pole position goes to number seven, Steve Dickens. Alongside him, 32, Steve Collier. Row two, number 50, Clive Wood and 17, Alan Cook. Third row, 55, Ben Malik and 68, Jared Lester. Uh, I'm hoping that both Leicesters are out there because one of them was brought back with a wheel missing off of his wagon, which is never a healthy place to go. Row four is 47, Graham Wilson, and 66, Adrian Leicester. Row five, 33, Tom Brown, although I think we were noticing he may well be missing from that, and 24, Mike Lane. 53, Will Freeman, and five, Neil Chapman on the sixth row. Row seven, 12, Tom Commander, and 15, Adrian Holy. 74, Lee Parks, and 76, Morris Hart on row eight. Row nine, Ian Crombie in 65, and 54, Barry Webb. Tenth row is 40, Mike Upton, and 42, Pippa Tanner Wood. Row 11, 58, Tom Muirhead and 41, Charles Jones. On the 12th and penultimate row is 52, Roger Watton and 22, Peter Begley. And all alone on row 13, number 11, Alan Davenport. So 25 cars due to be on the grid. As I say, I think we may be missing the number 33 car of Tom Brown. They were sort of past us in the line and we could certainly spot that there was, uh, there was a gap but uh, not sure entirely where that gap was at the moment. So uh, we'll wait and see if it is indeed Tom Brown that is missing. 
Well, they're coming up now to the grid with number seven, Steve Dickens there, as is number 32, Steve Collier. In that strange looking device. I love Clive that. Wood is third, do you? Right. Yeah. Fourth, 17 is there. Ben Malik is there. Then we've got 47, Graham Wilson. No, Jared Lester, 68. Okay, so I had a feeling that one of those yeah. would be and missing. Who's the other one you think might be missing? 33. Yeah, Tom Wood. Uh, I think. Will be missing as well. Yes, we've got the uh, picture of the grid on the screen, and obviously it's a staggered grid that we've got there. So yeah, Jared List Lester is missing, as you say, and then there's another Graham one Wilson, missing. and then yes, and that's Tom Brown is missing as well. Now one of them did seem to suddenly pull to a different direction as they came out of the assembly area, so potentially as late as that. But uh, I think that's probably just about all that is missing at the moment. So cars are into their positions, ready for this 15-minute race. The green flag waves at the back. Their eyes are trained on the gantry. That wonderful picture-in-picture picture gives us an indication of when the lights are going to go out. He says, hoping that the sun's not glaring. Here we go. On go the lights, ready for this first race. Off go the lights and off go the field. And it's a good start from our pole sitter. But somebody has stopped in the middle of the circuit and everybody has just about avoided them. And that is a relief because we had a car slow with an issue yesterday that got collected from cars behind. But uh, thankfully got away with it. And it is the 47 car of Graham Wilson from that fifth row fourth row. Sorry. Obviously that part of the grid is not a good place to be because Quite. Jared Lister and Tom Brown never made it there in the first place. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> now we've lost Graham Wilson as well as the uh, cars make their way around then on the opening lap up to Beckett's and then on to the Wellington Strait as the leaders come under the bridge into Brooklands. It is number seven Steve Dickens who leads the way but uh, pressure being applied for second place. Clive Wood has it at the moment I think just from Steve Collier as the cars turn through Luffield. Whoa, yes. spin, with spin there Clive from the Wood. number 50. Clive Wood has lost it in the middle of Luffield. He's uh, letting the car roll back out of the way. He was second, coming into the corner under strong pressure uh, from Steve Collier. But Steve Collier now clear in second place. Uh, and in third place is Ben Malik. In fourth place is Alan Cook. In fifth place, Adrian Lester. In sixth place is Mike Lane. Mike Lane could be somebody to watch. Though. I don't think he had much luck in qualifying. So he may be one to make progress up the order a little more in the race he's currently in sixth place some commander very much a veteran in seventh place one that needs to be careful the 76 car of morris hart just overtook coming onto the start finish straight when there was double waved yellows because the uh, the car that was stranded at the start yeah. has been pushed out of the way so that was uh, not a very sensible move with uh, marshals in harm's way i'm afraid but thankfully the mighty orange army have got that stricken Graham Wilson car out of harm's way, which is brilliant to see, which should hopefully get us freed up from yellows fairly soon. So, we do still have Dickens in the lead. There is the uh, the number 15 car. Being uh, still pressed strongly in second place uh, by Steve Collier. And then in third place, Ben Malik. No relation of the, the Malik family, as far as we're aware. Ray and uh, Richard Malik and their father, Arthur, who founded all this, really, I suppose, all those years ago. So there on the screen, number 32, Steve Collier. Closing up a little, I think. Now, Clive Wood has already made up two places after his spin on that last one. He dropped down to 21st. That number 50 car is up into 19th place. And uh, to lap time-wise, you'd expect him to uh, to come on strong. But the front two are glued yeah. together brilliantly. And it is your pole sitter, Steve Dickens, from the second place car of Steve Collier at the moment. And, yeah, you, I, I love that front end. I think it's very cool and different uh, for me. Well, it's, it's certainly different. It's different, yes, I know. What I you mean by cool? Well, cool is a word that has uh, all kinds of meanings. Yeah, true. Right, so leaders over the line, completing their third lap. The gap between them down to 0.498 of a second. And the fastest lap goes to uh, Steve Collier as he closes up on the leader. So this is uh, now becoming a serious Clubman-style battle for the lead between the top two as they come through Maggots into Beckett's on the national circuit a long right hander then it takes them out onto the uh, wellington straight and is it steve collier going to be close enough to make a bid to take the lead under braking as they get to the end of the straight into brooklyn's no so it's still seven steve dickens who is leading but only by the skin of his teeth and what about the progress that 
Clive Wood is making after that first lap spin. Well, notes to tail the two leaders. That's as close as they've been since the start of the race. Coming out of Luffield into Woodcut. Well, unsurprisingly, in qualifying, it was literally a quarter of a second that separated these two. And they're going at it now. And bizarrely, blue flag uh, was waving at those two. Definitely not going to be let in uh, Steve Collier through. Oh, we've got one going very slow there as they came into, out of Brooklyn's into Luffield. I think that was the 66 car. Yeah, so that is uh, Adrian Lester, if that is the case. So, sadly, that car is stricken as well. And uh, looked like it was just limping its way towards the pit lane at the moment as uh, through there goes the number 50 car of Wood up to 10th place now from 21st uh, he stumbled down to. That's right, so uh, continuing to rise up the order looking at the CSP B class. Uh, do we, can we quickly identify the leader there? Yeah, Barry Webb uh, running in second place in the class behind Tom Muirhead. And that was into the pits. Number, 40, not number 47, number 22 uh, in the pits. So leaders through. It is still just seven Steve Dickens who leads, former champion Steve Dickens then. Uh, in second place, Steve Collier. And the TSL screen has given up on us. Oh, yeah. We've. Uh so we still have uh, the battle for the lead, but it looks to me as though Steve Dickens has now kind of settled down. We've also oh, red flag. We've gone red flag out here. Sorry, Jack, you were going to jump in as well with something. Yeah, we've also got Charles Jones. And when I say into the pit lane, he was uh, down the pit lane and then straight into the garage. So obviously not all is well there. Hopefully what, whatever you guys can, can maybe see on the, the stream is, uh, well, is all OK. And the stream's working, but all cameras have gone down. Yeah. And I wonder whether that's got something to do with this red flag because the race control yeah, need to see. Some clerks of the course don't like commentators to see incidents after red flags Of course, go sorry, out. you are correct. Yes, of course. So there's a, uh, something has happened somewhere that means that we've brought this to a stop with 9.27 still on the clock and it was still being led by the number seven car of Dickens, but not by much. I mean, it was brilliant to see that yeah. uh, fight taking shape. And it's no surprise with how close they were in that qualifying session. So here comes Steve Dickens uh, onto the start finish straight. So he'll be stopped on the... Well, it won't be gridded up just yet. They'll just be line astern at this stage. Somebody's come into the pit, Jack, heading towards... Yeah, yeah directly towards me. Um, a quick word with Charles Jones. Oil pressure is, uh, has, has dropped on his car, hence him going straight into the garage. Um, who else have we got here? This is car number 11 currently with me, Alan Davenport, engine off. Um, of course, that car had issues earlier on this morning. Um, getting the car in gear, but yeah, engine off. I think more mechanical issues with that car have um, unfortunately brought his race to a, a very brief end. And we're looking here as well. I'm not sure that you guys have got it. Yeah, yeah I'm stood here at the moment. Bodywork is coming off. So again, maybe more mechanical gremlins. Well, we've got some cars in the pit lane. The majority there are now being uh, set up. Jared. Yeah. That's a sort of pre grid. What 65 is now coming into the pits as well. That was one that sort of uh, dropped over there. Run by the delightfully named Scuderia Sunroof. Really? Sunroof, not a very Italian word. I don't like Scuderia. But See, whenever you say sunroof, it reminds me of the joke yeah. of. Uh, oh dear. By, you have to know, watch out, strap yourself in. <laughs> Yeah, go on. Uh, I was born by cesarean section. It never affected me other than every time I park the car, I get out of the sunroof. <laughs> it won't get any better. That's, no, that's it. Okay. Right. <laughs> so I was just trying to make sense of. Uh, no, there's nothing, nothing that makes it obvious uh, who's going tumbling down through this order. So they will hopefully have time to. With nine minutes on the clock, you'd be uh, assuming that they're going to get this race back under. Way, I don't think we're too hard pushed for time, are we, today? No, oh, they're famous last words. Uh, no, we, we, we began the afternoon not hard pushed for time, right? Yeah, that's the best Whether way we'll to say it, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, the final race is scheduled to end at 17.45, and we should really stop at 6 o'clock. 
Is it six, is it here? I can never quite remember. So it looks like a couple have gone down to rejoin this race at the end of the pit lane. From our vantage point here, we're able to see straight down the uh, the pit lane. Good to see on the, on the camera pictures there that we saw some people here in the grandstand. Welcome to uh, the, to those of you that are here at the circuit. You'll find that it will sort of chop and change the way that we're talking because we do have the stream that is running live as well, and so we we uh, we have that stream in front of us. Uh, welcome to you that are watching it live on the MSV TV YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you've got your uh, tablet or phone, mobile device, you can jump onto that as well. Search for MSV TV and uh, you'll catch all of this. It is still us commentating, as you may have guessed from what I was saying there. But uh, it means it's there. And of course, you can watch it back afterwards to see what you missed um, from wherever you're sat if you're at the circuit at a particular point. But interesting as well that uh, Jack came up reporting in that it's uh, it's very warm there. I mean, it's been nice since we got here, but it was fairly fresh, wasn't it? With with a bit of a, 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 dra a breeze, bracing, a yeah. bit like Skegness. It, yeah. <laughs> Whereas apparently now it's not, and he wants to take his coat off, but he needs pockets. I think it's a first world problem again, isn't it? But what, uh, lacking pockets. Exactly. Yeah. I might I might wear me combats when I'm doing pit lane tomorrow. Because of course pit lane tomorrow will be uh, uh, different again because we're going to have a five hour enduro KA race. I'll tell you what, don't underestimate that for anybody who's not caught it and thinks course truth really. It's brilliant. It's so much goes on and uh, it will just sort of flip and flop and change and they'll be picking up penalties for things during the course of the race that will set them back if they break down or go into the gravel and they have to be recovered back to the paddock they can rejoin the race but they get i think it's a two lap penalty or something like that uh so we'll be jumping into garages and catching up with bits and pieces jack will be reporting when there's anything down in the pit lane to to, to let us know about plus grabbing interviews post race we saw on the screen just then number 11 alan davenport uh, out of the car which looks so it's not going to be going any further it didn't look to be damaged so it's presumably some sort of mechanical problem that's befallen it. Uh, so we await further news of the jack from being nearer to the uh, nerve center of the operations. Can give us a clue about what the reason is for this, this stoppage. But, uh, depending on how long it takes to deal with the reason for the stoppage, will determine how much longer the race is going to take on the restart. So uh, interesting updates to uh, to let you know about Ian. Just looking at the, uh, the the sort of bulletins that come through. That again, you can uh, find out on msvr.co.uk. Um, Alex Miller, who set Master. pole position, didn't he, in the Super Bowl? Yes, under weight. He's been thrown to the back in a 10-second penalty. Four. Underweight. Oh, underweight. Sorry, yeah. I thought you said weight, as in weight. Uh, oh, no, sorry, ride height. My apologies. It was actually the ride height. So he was under the ride height. So he's been uh, thrown to the back. Them's the challenges at the start of a season, isn't it? You think you get yeah. everything spot on and, yeah. and it's little margins. But uh, I'm afraid that our pole sitter... Uh, who came runner-up in the championship last year, so was really hoping yeah. to go with a bang, especially with last year's champion missing out on that Super Bowl and starting sixth. But he's going to have all that work to do, so we'll have that to, to look forward to a little bit later. And I said something along these lines, as if it needed any spicing up, but heck, it's just received it anyway. Notice that this uh, championship is uh, supported by King Henry's Taverns. Eat, drink, relax. Are you giving me an instruction there? No, that's what it says. Oh. You should do if you uh, visit oh. one of King Henry's taverns. I'd have, uh, I'd have, I'd have just followed your instructions then, Ian, <laughs> if, if that was the case. We've got a lovely, lovely commentary box up here where we've had the water and the milk provided for the kettle, but there's no optics, is there, for the gin with this no lovely sun weather. Right, well, it rather looks though 66 is going to be able to uh, right. I think it might be continue once the race resumes, Adrian I think it Lester. Might be power outage. Okay, that's all right. And the good news is, is that they are now sort of getting the cars into right. their grid positions. That's okay. Be it a little bit further back. 
I was wondering how much this will do. Again, it depends on how many minutes or laps the you know, restarted race is going to be, but uh, it should give Clive Wood yeah. after that spin a bit of help. He'll still have cars in front of him to overtake, but he is one of the quickest drivers uh, on the grid. It's a lot closer to them, isn't it? That's, yeah, the that's beauty. right. Um, ten minutes is on the clock, it's showing. I think by the time the clock stopped, it said nine minutes something. So they've, they've rounded out to 10 minutes, which is good. We're not losing any of the time. I always think these, uh, these Clubman Sports prototypes, I, they, they, I love the look of them. Totally different to the Sports 2000s, the, the obvious one oh, yes. you explained earlier, where one's got, yeah. these have got the engines in front of them. But it looks like they could be lying down in these cars with their feet a long way in front of them, but it looks like they could topple backwards with it's the big the wings. a few racing cars I've been able to drive, for, not at full racing speed, but around um, Barry Webb, let me... Is uh, drive his Malik around here some years oh, really? ago now. Yeah, so they're, they're lovely cars. Wow. Um, even if they're rather uh, untypical in having front engines. Uh, and, and the aero does genuinely work on these things, doesn't yes. it? Yes. They have aero these days, of course, but the origins of these cars are the Lotus 7, which of course is now the Caterham um, in the 1960s oh. when Clubman's Racing came in in 1965. The first year was either U2s, you didn't call them Malik U2s then, because U2 could build one supply from bits. I remember that story. Acquired from uh, <laughs> Arthur Malik. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Ah, oh, I think Jack has... He's, on, he's on the grid. I'm on the grid, why not? I love a grid walk. We'll have a quick chat with Steve Dickens. We've, we've spoken to you once already today, Steve. Um, a fairly OK start to the race, let's be honest. You're still at the front. What's the plan for the rest? Um, yeah, I've got a good start. Ish. Clive was behind me going into Brooklands and then he disappeared. I don't know what happened there. But Steve's giving me a good run for my money. So much of the same, really. Um, see if I can get a good start and get away. But we'll have to wait and see what happens. Great stuff. Best of luck for the rest of this race. By the sounds of it, we've got quite a, a, an exciting race on the way. I'm just looking down to see who else we've got. We've got car number 17 here. We'll have a quick chat with a quick chat with Alan. Obviously, you're still yet to get gridded up, but you've got to give that start another go. Is there anything you're going to change? No, no. I'm pretty much the same as before. It's uh, just repeat. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice short sharp from Alan. He just wants to repeat what he did the first time round. I suppose can't be that tricky. I'll speak to one of Chris's uh, favourites now. That's car number 53. I would have done, but engines are starting, so interviews cut short. We managed to grab two on the grid, well done. but from what I hear, they're going to get all gridded up again now they've got the updated yes. grid sheets and go from there. Y yes, so it's going to be a, a 10 minute race. Yeah, one green flag after, lap. After one green flag lap, yeah, and which they're now embarking on. And I assume it's going to be another standing start. I wasn't sure whether oh, yes. they would go roll in for, no. for a restart, but no, they're going standing. So they're just moving forward because where they were held them was uh, was where the chequered flag is waved. But uh, the start gantry is, well, you can see the lights there just below the big Silverstone. I, I keep wanting to call it bridge because it used to be, didn't it? But it's what? that used to be a bridge, didn't it, that part there? What, where the gantry is? Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's what I think. For many but years. I keep but trying to go to call it bridge, and it's like, no, it doesn't go across anymore, as it, you can see. It's for just many years, it had the Motor Magazine, as it's, it, was the, it was the Motor Bridge. Right. Um, after mo which, remember Motor? It's sort of rival to Auto Car. Well, number five's just been pushed through the, the barrier, so it's not going to be able to take uh, the, the restart, that's sadly. Neil Chapman, and what about the, uh, the other one? Is lining up, so yeah, Neil Chapman, number five, off the grid frustrating after sitting there all that time and it does look like we've got uh, a good three cars I reckon at the end of the pit lane that are going to be looking to to take this restart and of course they can do because this will be a totally separate race now this will be what dictates the results the yep. grid is on Ooh, there's another one being pushed back there as well that's that one I was talking about that's uh, really intriguing looks like a single seater no, oh, that's the Ardmore, isn't it? It's just being pushed back there. The, uh, so that means that that'll be uh, Will Freeman in the number 53. Well, there you are. Steve Dick is on screen. On pole position, he was for the first time asking and continues on pole position. Former champion. His grandfather used to be the man who did all the hard work here at Silverstone. He was the, the track charge hand, I suppose, is what you could call it, many, for many, many oh, wow. years. At the end of the Grand Prix, when the days of straw bales, uh, out would come uh, Les, uh, and he would 
be there with his tractor and trailer and picking up straw bales and tidying the place up. Wow. And, uh, yeah. Arthur was uh, Les's son, Stevie's grandson. Wow. Well, you know, I hope that means that it is quite a nice uh, feeling sat there on the front row here at that, the Silverstone Circuit with that great family connection and uh, just motivate him that a little bit more if he needed it to be able to try and secure the race win. So one of the cars is sort of just positioned smack bang in the middle for some reason. We see it there at the back there. I'm not sure why it sat there. Well, it's checking the positions off against the... Uh, we haven't got a copy of it, but the uh, amended grid sheet or revised grid sheet for the restart, as Chris says, it'll be a separate race. The result of the race will be based on what happens after this 10 minutes. So, uh, on the screen there, number 32, Steve Collier with the vision. A slightly depleted grid compared with what, <coughs> what we had for the first time of asking. But there will be, as uh, Chris anticipates, some cars joining in from the pit lane. But the cars now setting off on their green flag lap. Hopefully, none of them have suffered too much just sitting there waiting for this restart. Shot there, 15 Adrian Holy. He seems to be uh, ready to go back into it on the original grid. He was on the 14th on that original grid. Jack? No. <laughs> yes. Um, whilst it's not necessarily uh, a Clubman Sports prototype related, it is racing related um, as per the rest of the day. Um, we saw that, or I mentioned Josh Law's uh, oil pressure had fallen through the floor. Yeah, that car's not going to be out for race one, but it will be out for race two, but not in the way you expect. Um, the team are currently driving down to Essex to pick up another chassis, pretty much another car. They're going to swap bodywork, swap fire extinguisher, make sure the car's all legal, gone back through scrutineering and get, in theory, the car back out again. But it's not necessarily the same car. It's just going to look fairly identical to Josh's original. Right. Thanks for that. That's the Sports 2000 race. Right, cars coming round then to take up their place on the grid, but there's one car that has so under the gone bridge, uh, Wellington straight, pulled isn't off. It? Yeah, I think it may be even further back up the straight than the bridge, but uh, anyway, let's hope it's been able to get to a place of safety so it doesn't have to have a delayed start. It looked, I mean, it was a long way to be able to really tell, but it looked like that was 70 something, maybe 76. Um, which would be the, uh, the black car. That's oh, Morris Hart. Yeah, Morris Hart. So we'll wait and see. That one could well be missing. Which sort of depletes it a little bit further. Hopefully, being on the straight, they'll be okay that that is uh, sufficiently out of harm's way to be able to get this underway. So Steve Dickens, number seven, sits there. Again, on pole position, but he was being hounded through those early stages by the 32 car of Steve Collier. There was a bit of a gap back till the, the blue 55 car there of Ben Malik, but he'll hope to stick with them a little bit more. So, green flag has been waved at the back. We're going to get this 10-minute sprint out of the way. They've only lost a third of the uh, race time so far. In the uh, picture within picture, you see the, uh, the lights ready to go. They will come on and then go off again is the plan for this one so long hold at the moment lights go on engine notes rise off go the lights and there's again somebody has stalled on the top waving furiously to make sure that that doesn't happen of course an issue and then does get going thankfully so back underway again and it just sort of shuffled up that mid pack a little bit isn't it with the big one making a move at the back of that gaggle is the number 50 car of yeah. clive wood after that spin in the first start and four cars <laughs> yes, started quite. from the pits half the grid yeah it looks like not quite <laughs> it was only four as chris said but nonetheless uh, a large number of cars joining in from the pit lane there's the ardmore running wide it's just uh, a wonderful looking car, car isn't it that ardmore i love that one 
So under the bridge, down the Wellington straight they go. There's the car that's uh, just pulled off out of harm's way. That does look far enough out of harm's way to yes. avoid. There comes Clive Wood, the number 50 car, trying to make up some of those places. He needs to do that, Ian, as quickly as possible, doesn't he? Because otherwise these front three uh, are pulling away of Dickens, Collier and Malik. Yes, Clive is quick, so uh, he could have already made his way up to... As they come through, it's Steve Dickens, Steve Collier, Ben Mallon. Mike Lane up into, it's Mike Lane up into fourth place. Uh, and just looking to see where Clive Wood is. He's just he's made up seventh. some more, but he's made up more there. But ben he had to throw right. the anchors out the back as he went down the start finish straight. He was trying to make a move on uh, Cook. And suddenly Freeman, Will Freeman in that wonderful Ardmore car was going quite steady for some reason, yeah. got back up to speed again. But as he went to try and go past Cook, was suddenly encountered with the rear end of the uh, of, of the Ardmore and had to suddenly slow down and go the other side of the circuit and then managed to take them both up the inside uh, at, um, uh, the, at Cops Corner. I thought we'd had a change there, but you've got to congratulate the 55 car of Ben Malik. He's not allowed that gap to come back no. open too much at the moment. Well, it's, it's opened a little it bit has more now. because of, a, of what was a thwarted attempt to overtake going into Brooklyn. So... Uh, he was really challenging for second place, challenging Steve Collier, but didn't get through. Lost a bit of ground as a result, as tends to happen with the floor taking manoeuvres. Uh, we've just had the fastest lap of the race uh, on that uh, first flying lap, which makes sense, of course, because we forget what happened in the first part. Ben Malik then uh, in third place. Mike Lane fourth. Clive Wood up to fifth. Now, has he got a chance of catching what's his lap time look like compared with those ahead? One minute, two, one minute, three, one minute. Oh, no, he may not be quicker than they are. He, I mean, this, that one wasn't represented because he had to really slow down on the start, finish straight. Um, but we yeah. got to remember he yes. was behind them in qualifying yes. by approaching half a second. So um, it will be a big ask. And the front two are absolutely together again. I thought that Steve Dickens had managed to gap Steve Collier, but uh, the red 32 car has shaken off the attention of Ben Malik again, yeah. and he's glued to him. But you can see that coming down the start finish straight, the speed on that number seven car is fantastic. He stretches his legs out as they go through the blasting all the way down the straight. But as soon as they go through Cops, you can see that Collier is glued to the back of them as we see. Sadly, the 65 car, me. yeah, he's out. But that Scuderia sunroof. It, there's a change. There is a change for the lead. I had a feeling that coming out of Cops is that Collier was looking quick, but now he's given it... Is he giving it back? I wonder whether he just abused track limits or something to that effect. That looked like a hand-me-back, didn't it? It was a bit like that, yeah. So uh, we'll see how it pans out over the next few corners. <laughs> They're turning through Brooklyn's at the moment, and it is uh, once more Steve Dickens who leads, but only just he's being pressed very strongly indeed by Steve Collier in the vision. They come out of uh, Luffield, coming to our side through the window in a moment, through which they come, and it is the number seven car which still leads Steve Dickens in his ballot mark 29. Rob, Steve Collier, Ben Mallet, Clive Wood chasing after them, but still got a lot of work to do. If he's going to get on terms even with Ben Mallet, let alone the two ahead of him. Mike Lane is in fifth place, and Alan Cook in sixth place. Who's that in the pits? Well, that's the Ardmore, isn't it? Still the lead pair chasing each other like mad as they went back towards the uh, the Wellington straight there. So uh, obviously being on the national circuit, we get down to Maggots, but then hook a right and come back up the, uh, the, the Wellington straight towards us. And it looked like a big old challenge between the pair there. 40 and 58 having a great fight there. And uh, in fact, that means that Upton's yeah. just got past Muirhead. But uh, leading that class is Pippa Tanner Wood, who is Clive Wood's daughter. Uh, and she has just been overtaken by Tom Command, who runs in a different class. But Pippa Tanner Wood, uh, leading class, uh, leading her class, CSPB. Jack. Yeah, and into the pit lane. I'm not sure whether you guys have spotted it as of yet. Alan Cook, we had a quick word with him whilst he was on the grid. Very, very smoky into the pit lane yeah. behind the wheel of his Phantom. So you said it was getting hotter. It's starting to run the cars. That is a shame because, yeah, I think from uh, memory his comment was uh, much of the same. Well, sadly, he hasn't had much of the same uh, this time, so he's out of the race and goes tumbling down through the order. He started on the second road, that number 17 car. Hopefully it's not too serious because they've got another two races to come, one, today, one more today 
and then uh, a race tomorrow. Last time around, Clive Wood set the fastest lap of the race, but he's still got ground to make up. He's four seconds. I don't think he's going to make that up. Uh, he is four seconds behind Ben Malik. That is quicker third. than Clive Wood went in qualifying this morning. Yeah. So that is impressive. And in fact, that would have got him pole position this morning as well. So it does show you we can't discount him at all. But it is a big old gap as Clive comes into the background of your image there. But there is our race leader, still the seven car of Steve Dickens, with the slightly less pressure at the moment from Collier. And really great to see Ben Malik, who started fifth on this grid. There he is, the blue 55. He's right with them still, isn't he? Yeah, they may have been delayed slightly by lapping a slower car, but nonetheless, you're right, he is closing in on them. But well aware, probably, from the pit signal that he is being caught by, or at risk of being caught by Clive Wood as well. So there's a bit of a concertina effect going on here. And uh, as they lap, lap a slower car, Ben Malik is absolutely with them now. So the gap first to second is much the same as second to third. The blue car, number 55, of Ben Malik, Malik Mark 30 PR. It, it really looks like these lead two have got strengths and weaknesses at different yes. parts of the circuits. Now that could be the cars, it could be the drivers, who knows, but uh, it's impressive to see that that stretches and then comes back again. Now we've got just under three minutes to go, so not many laps left in this one. Is anything going to change in the remaining three minutes then? As we cut to a shot in the pits, that's number 17, Alan Cook, with the uh, car that won the championship last year, driven by James Tart, the Phantom PR22, which showed great reliability last year, as well as pace in the hands of young James Clark. I can only assume that uh, Clive Wood had a time disallowed, because I'm sure I said it was 57.0 was his uh, fastest lap of the race. It's now shown him as the fastest lap of the race with a 57.566. Um, so maybe he's got to be a little bit careful. Talking about careful, Steve Dickens again under pressure with a pair of back markers ahead of him as they come out of Luffield onto the start finish straight into our view, and they're picking their way through these back markers. I always say it, what's worse than back markers is battling back markers, and that was that great fight between yeah. Upton and Muirhead that's been raging for several laps now and they've picked their way through it and I don't think it really unsettled either of them any more or less than the other. No, with Ben Mallet then three tenths of a second behind, the gap second to third is smaller than the gap first to second that time through with Clive Wood still setting fastest laps but still over four seconds behind the leader. So we're down to a minute and a half left to go. Jack, is that someone else into the pits? Yeah, that's car number 12, Tom Commander, into the pit lane behind the wheel of his Phantom. So if you're driving a Phantom this weekend, it clearly isn't your weekend because quick chat to the mechanic, can't quite pick out exactly what's wrong with it. He's, the driver seems rather confused as well. He's sort of, Tom, gestured with his hands as if, to, I don't know, it's just not right. So again, becoming a bit more attritional. You're not supposed to know if they're Phantom problems, are you? That's absolutely right. <laughs> You're pleased with that, aren't I you? I am, I am. <laughs> I even got you ready for it with a bit of a nudge to the arm going, watch out, Ian, here comes another one. <laughs> 60 seconds left to go. And uh, still, I mean, that's what this commander just uh, taken off his helmet. Still a smile on his face, even though there's a problem with the car. Tom has been racing, Tom Commander has been racing Clubman's cars for must be minimum of 20 years, probably more than that. Wow. I love it because uh, at Castle Coombe we've got the Woodward family and they, uh, oh, yeah, they have raced yeah. uh, the Clubman's for many, many years. Yeah. 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 And Clive and, and, and all of that lot. Yeah. Right, well the gap first and second has opened up. So uh, in the last lap or so, Steve Dickens has pulled away from the other two who are still at it hammer and tongs. And you see how close the Clive Wood is in the background. Look as you'll see the uh, sort of grey with the luminous yellow flashes just suddenly appear yeah. in the background. They'll get through for one more lap, won't they? Yes, so just. So only 10 seconds to spare on the clock. Over the line goes the leader from the start, number seven, Steve Dickens. But the gap to second place to Steve Collier is up to 1.698 seconds. Wow, and Clive Wood's done a new fastest lap of the race, 56.850. Yeah. Bearing in mind, pole position this morning was 57.699. That is lightning quick. Yeah, I think that 
track is a bit quicker at the moment than perhaps it was first thing this morning, but certainly Clive Wood showing the pace that we know he has, ruining the fact that he spun on the first lap of the first race, hence his uh, not so good grid position. Oh, Collier's got a problem. Yes. Collier's got a problem because he's dropped down to third, Malik has got past him, and he's under pressure from Clive Wood as our race leader comes through, is that Collier's just going to be trying to nurse this one through. As our race leader Dickens, he's had to handle lots of pressure, but he comes around now to receive the checkered flag and he takes it, pole position, to the race win. Second is Ben Malik, who must have been held up a little bit there because third and closing was Clive Wood in number 50 and 32, Steve Collier, whatever the issue was that dropped yeah. him back, he still managed to bring that home in fourth position. They are all CSP ones as well. So the next car, number 24, that should be coming through, which is Mike Lane, is also then going to be a class winner in CSPA. Assuming that's still going to be the case because we've got a few back markers coming first, haven't we? We've got a, cla a class battle amongst them. Uh, in Tom Muirhead winning CSPB from number yeah. 40 in second place. They, Mike were back, Upton, but they were back and forth, weren't they? What happened to Pipitana Wood? Oh, she came into the pits a lap earlier. Yeah, P P Pipitana Wood, uh, who was leading the class, she's uh, out of the race. So, not such a good race for daughter, but for dad, a race to third place uh, was salvaging something after his first lap spin in the first part at Luffield when he was in the leading trio. That's, that's exactly what us commentators enjoy, isn't it? Get someone have to work their way from the rear. It's always going to be uh, exciting racing then. So, uh, but one person who started pole position twice and still managed to take the victory, but uh, it doesn't tell you everything. So Steve Dickens, great victory there under constant pressure. Second place, Ben Malik, he did not fall away. And the number 55 car finishes as runner-up. Clive Wood, great fight back. 21st he was at one point. He comes home in third, third position. Steve Collier, an issue at the end in his vision, but he still comes home in fourth. Fifth was Mike Lane, which uh, is a win in CSPA. Then in sixth place, Will Freeman. Freeman wins CSP2. Adrian Holy in seventh. Eighth was the Lee Parks. Tom Muirhead comes home winning CSPB in ninth place overall, just ahead of champ, uh, t class rival of uh, uh, number 40, Mike Upton. Eleventh is Roger Watton. Neil Chapman in 12th place. Barry Webb comes home in 13th. Pippa Tanner Wood finished in the pits but still classified as 14th. In uh, 15th place is 22, Peter Begley. Tom Commander downwards they uh, didn't actually finish the race but uh, 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 shown as in those positions 16th backwards it's going to be a few busy uh, teams and drivers for the, on their cars for race number two later isn't there i think that's right but they will be out for uh, a, a later race today they're racing again tomorrow as well Yeah, I think their, their grid for the second race is based on this race, isn't it? Because yes. it's the Sports 2000s that's based on their yes. second fastest, but these guys, it's based on their results. So they'll be out uh, race number seven, so they're one and seven of the day. And uh, if that, that was enough of a race to sort of get you ready to, to look yeah. forward to the second race from the uh, Clubman Sports uh, Prototype Championship. A great victory there for Mr. Dickens. Right, so our... We will shortly have, in fact, I think I can hear him open. It's Jack. Yeah, so I'm down here with the pit lane from the or of the top three from the Clubman Sports Prototype Championship. We'll have to pick our way through who we've got here. We do have Steve Dickens first, of course, our race winner. We'll grab a quick word with Steve. He's deep in conversation with uh, Clive Wood. Um, Steve, Chris just said a, a moment ago, you had two goes. Uh, you, you nailed it twice, but you were never really sort of left on your own. You really had to fight for the win. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Steve Collier gave me a run for my money. He got, he got, he got past me with the back pits once. I had to cut back up underneath him. him. Um, <laughs> I, I, and then I, I think, think in the last two laps, I just uh, decided to drive better, better because, because I got down, down to nearly a qualifying, qualifying time, time, whereas the rest I just went like I was driving at the moment. We'll try again this afternoon, but I'm glad to see these two guys over Yeah, really good race. And of course, you've still got two more races to go this weekend. Is there anything you're going to change with the car, or are you just going to leave it as it is? You know it's got race winning potential and go from there. Um, I might change the tyre pressure a bit. It was a bit, bit uh, wavy at the back, back. Um, um, having to, to hold on to it a bit. But, um, no, other than that, won't be changing too much. It's, it's decent drive a bit better. I think Clyde will be there this afternoon, so we'll try later. 
Great stuff. Best of luck for the rest of the weekend. We'll jump in with uh, third place now. We've got Clive Wood here. Um, Clive, unfortunately, I don't think people got to the end coming into the pit lane pretty much on the last lap of the race. But um, I guess all is well on your side of, of the Wood family, managing to get P3. A strong start to your weekend. Yeah, that is, it's pretty good. Well, well, unfortunately, I spun on the first start at, at, um, at Luffield, but... Um, and I was ninth, I think, on the grid at the restart. But oh, I'm happy to get to third. I'm very happy to get to third. And of course, now you know that the car's got got the pace, minus that spin later on this afternoon. You, you're looking for maybe a step higher? Yeah. Oh, most definitely. They're, they're, I've got to be number one. So we, we'll go for it in the next race. Great stuff. Cheers, Clive. And we'll wander over now and pick up uh, Ben Malik. We've got Ben here. Um, ben, you were again there or thereabouts, but you really had to. Uh, you really had to work to, I think, maintain second place. As such, how how hard that fight was. Yeah, no, it was great. It was, I mean, first time on the podium, so I'm over the moon with that. And that was a fantastic result. And the starts went well, so that was great. I made a place in the first start. Um, but yeah, Steve Collier is a, a difficult merchant to get past. So, in the end, we made it. It was brilliant. A really good race. Thoroughly enjoyed. And of course, not just a good start to your weekend, a good start to your season as well. And you think a good motivator for the rest? Yeah, absolutely. No, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, it's got me buzzing now. So let's see how the second race goes. Great stuff. Thank you very much. So I think that's all the drivers we have down here in uh, in the Park Ferme area. But back up to you two because we've got another race on the way. Thank you very much for that one, Jack. Yes, the uh, the Globans tend to do their own uh, podiums later, but great that we're able to uh, to grab the interviews with the uh, with the. They sound like they're ready for race number two as well as well, don't they? Ian, to be fair, mm, absolutely. So we're having our well, we've had the first race was broken up into two separate races in there, but we're having our second scheduled race now, as one Clubman's car sport prototype is brought back to the pit lane. And you've mastered the intricacies of this, how we get to where we are, Chris. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we've lost a car from the pole position. It's gone to the, the back of the group with a 10-second delayed start. That's number seven, Alex Miller. And that was because of, was it? Ride height. Ride height, yes. Yeah. It was, uh, it was below the ride height, so your, your pole sitter, who was the runner-up in the championship last uh, season, Alex Miller, thought he got off to this bonsai start. But uh, a banzai start, even not bonsai. That's a, a, a tree. tree. Yeah. A little tree. It yes. is. So, anyway, uh, the grid is <laughs> now then number five, John Language on pole position at 73. Daniel Parron Smith alongside him. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, which is is interesting because uh, um, yeah, John Language taking that pole position. Daniel Parron Smith up onto to row two is uh, sorry on the front row means that uh, Daniel, who was the quickest in the normal qualified session, through to the Super Bowl, went from first in the original session to, to third. So at least he's moved up onto that front row, which I'm sure he'd be quite relieved with. It's a side-by-side -side grid, incidentally. This not a staggered grid like it was for the sports prototypes. Side-by-side, two-by-two. Indeed. So they uh, make their way out again. Don't forget, this will be a, uh, a green flag followed by a standing start for these uh, Mazda MX-5s. And the grid will be as follows, as the last couple of cars just make their way into position. As you say, now the uh, pole position will be going the way of number five, John Langridge, with Daniel Parent-Smith in number 73 alongside him. Row two is number 19, David Chapman, and 42, Cully Atkins, did a great job to get through to the Super Bowl shootout and now starts up on uh, in fourth position on the second row. Row three is number one, last year's champion Declan Lee, and number four, Nicholas Stott. A lot behind them is 26, Drew Fletcher, and 88, Rowan Lundy. Row 5, 33, Dylan Stepney, and 14, Collard Clifford. 55, Simon Fleet, and 4, Ray Worley on the sixth row. Row 7, 2, John Robinson, and 28, Jack Hodges. Row 8 is number 10, Ed McDermott, and 24, Charlie Lane. 6, Colin Wells, and 1, 2, 1, Gary Smith on row 9. Seemed to have an issue, did Gary Smith. And on the 10th row on his own, number 48, Chaz Allen. What we then have is delayed back from that. 10-second delay... Alex Miller, car number seven, starting in effect on the 13th row and delayed. He's going to have to work hard to get through this field again, isn't he? Well, he is, but uh, uh, such was his pace. Have you got a note of his fastest lap uh, in the... Here we are. It's a 1 minute 9.490. So that compares with some lap times, quite a lot of lap times, 110. So I, th I think he's got a good chance of getting... I would stick my neck out and say get into the top six. 
Well, especially where they were saying earlier that the slipstream is a big effect yeah. with these cars on, yeah. on this circuit. All right, there's not much of the circuit to do it, but you've got the big Wellington straight. The start-finish straight is a big old drag on the power all the way coming out as, as you exit Luffield, all the way down to, to Cops Corner. So there's plenty of places where he can really make that slipstream work. But we did hear other drivers making that point that says, yeah, but if you get yourself right up with them at the wrong time, mm. it compromises you through that corner, and suddenly you're the sitting duck to the cars behind you. Right, the pole position guys, black and white, so the next two cars are, are orange and white, or white and orange. So uh, you can pick out the leader quite easily. Somebody being a big tyre squealer there, <laughs> getting to me. That's the green car, which is on the left-hand side of the grid. That's Declan Lee. Oh, it's, it's last year's champion, it's Declan Lee. He was very relaxed when he was being interviewed, just missing out yes. on the Super Bowl, wasn't he, in sixth place? He said it doesn't affect too much, which I think is, is valid, which is why, hence your comment about Alex Miller. He's going to have to fight with no slipstream for a long time as he pulls in in front yeah. of our commentary box. And it will be a, a 10 second delay. It's not just the back of the grid, it's a 10 second delay as well. Yeah. So, uh, but somebody else worth keeping an eye on, I think, maybe Ed McDermott, number 10. Uh, who was racing in the GT4 class of the British GT Championship in the first round at uh, Alton Park in Easter. Right, off they go and uh, head towards Cops Corner and has the, yeah, the leader from pole position is John Langridge as the cars make their way through Cops and head up towards Maggots and Beckett's. Uh, it looks like wing mirrors uh, are optional extras, bits and pieces flying off from a couple of the cars. I think that was the illuminous yellow Dylan Stepney shed a bit of, uh, of weight there. But uh, John Langridge has got a cracking start uh, and up into third place already has come Declan Lee. So he was right. It didn't matter too much. Oh, and just being uh, bumped out a little bit wide. I think that's David Chapman, the 19 car. Uh, Cali Atkins going up the inside. He did a great job to get into the Super Bowl. But they're now fanning and going three wide as they come down the Wellington Straight. And I think we'll have to let our uh, pole sitter, John Langridge, know that they were going three, threatening four wide down that Wellington Straight. And then funneling in towards Brooklands. And I think they've all just about got away with that just one. looking to see where McDermott has put himself up to already. But you can see from what Chris has just said, uh, the progress being made by Declan Lee, who qualified six, but in third place, halfway round the opening lap, to the end of which they've now come, and he is closing up on the second place man. So Declan Lee in third place still, but closing up on the Daniel Parrott Smith. Uh, and the other one we want to see, Alex Miller, number seven, where's he got to? Oh, he's only come through in last place. Yeah. So, so ten, the 10 second deficit hasn't yet been eroded. No, and he's done well, though. He's got that margin to the car in front of him down to two and three quarter seconds. So he's already taken seven and three quarters yeah. out of that uh, delayed start he had to do. Huge pressure there being put on the second place car of Darren, uh, Daniel Parron Smith, the 73 car. Uh, can certainly see last year's champion, the big number one emblazoned on the side as they go down the uh, Wellington Strait. He's being sensible, is Declan Lee, is he's not diving out at every opportunity. He is hunting him down, waiting for that perfect opportunity, which is enabling the uh, the number 26 car, Fletcher, just behind him. Or oh, in fact, Fletcher yeah. got a good line there, didn't he? And he was the one having a sneaky snifter up the inside. Yeah, and uh, I think this time around we should uh, we should have Alex Miller past a few cars. Meanwhile, leader goes through. He's uh, opening up a gap bigger than it was before, so John Langridge leads now uh, by nearly one and a half seconds, 1.426 seconds. Pound Smith still just holding off Declan Lee, then it's Fletcher's stop, where's number seven, still in last place, but about to take penultimate position, I think. Yeah, I think he's about to take two in quick succession uh, as they disappeared around cops from our commentary box. We could see that he was closed in on Allen and Wells, the 46, 48 and 6 cars. But look at this battle. Second, third, fourth, absolutely glued together. The 26 car there of Fletcher is doing a great job of, of reeling in the two. Drew Fletcher started seventh on the grid, sat in fourth and, and hunted them down. Another car that moved up well on that last lap was the 88 car of Rowan uh, Lundy. Uh, the, the Burgundy car, just as you see in the background, is already looking to, to put a challenge yeah. to try and go another position higher by the looks of it. 
In fact, I think he possibly has. Yeah, he's got ahead of a 42 car. Oh, no, he'd done that last time. My apologies. So maybe those two are do -si do your partners. And 19 Chapman, David Chapman was just behind them as well, the, the trio there. But uh, Chapman went tumbling down through the order in the early stages, but he's starting to make them back up again. Not convinced that Declan Lee is going to make much more progress. In fact, he's dropped back a little bit uh, from Daniel Parron Smith on that lap, only a small amount, but nonetheless he has. Fastest lap of the race now to uh, number 26, Drew Fletcher, running in fourth place. And we can get, yes, uh, Alex Miller is up two places, as Chris predicted, up into 18th place in car number seven. What was his lap time looking like? 110.1 that time around, or 110.2, I mean. So he's lapping more slowly than the top four. Currently, fastest lap of the race was by the uh, 26 Drew Fletcher. We'd already mentioned he's coming up through the order. Look at this, side by side. This is the three of them that I was talking about fighting. Number 19, Chapman, trying to get past. The, in fact, he's done the pair. So 88 Lundy's lost two places there. Uh, Atkins in 42 jumps up one, but he's under, he was under huge was because he just kicked up the dust. Did Chapman in the 19 car. That now means he's lost the momentum all the way down the start finish straight. He's a sitting duck to Rowan Lundy as they come down the start finish straight towards the right hander of Cox. The only good news for Chapman is the 19 car has that inside line. Is he going to make it work? They're turning right. You can see the driver, Rowan Lundy, was looking right as they went through. That's the beauty of these open top cars, as you can see what the drivers are doing. Uh, indeed, yes. John Langridge, meanwhile, squeezes out another tenth or so in the lead. Chapman's going again, so he's up the inside of Rowan Lundy. This is at the cutback from uh, Maggots through to the Wellington Strait. And he's, I'm going to say he's got it done, but they're now still side by side. And guess what? They turn left at the end of this straight, which means Rowan Lundy's going to yeah. be the one that will have the inside line again. Yes, indeed. It is absolutely take your breath away racing as always with these uh, Mazda MX-5s. Here we go, the left turn, and it does look Rowan Lundy's there, but Chapman in 19 just running a little bit wide, trying to do the, make sure he's on the inside for the right hooker as they come round Luffield, and they're going to be back into our eyesight soon. Here, here comes John Langridge in the lead. Across the line, that's five laps into the book. Look at this, two still side by side on the stream across the last half finish straight. Rowan Lundy therefore showed still ahead of Chapman. In fact, it's Chapman that's now got the nod and now suddenly getting involved is the 14 car of Connor Clifford. Alex Miller up a couple more places, so he's now 16th. There's all lots of time left in the race, 13 and three quarter minutes still to go in what was originally a 20 minute race, so. Plenty of time left for things to change. Rowan Lundy's going to lose another two places now. Through has gone the number 14 car of Connor Clifford and the Dayglow Yellow 33 of Dylan Stepney was trying to get involved as well. But Lundy's now trying to come back at him. It's the great thing. You look. It looks like you need to be very patient in these cars because you can't get frustrated no. at losing a place because it's very possible to get it back again within the next lap. Yes. So the lead coming down slightly that time around lead of John Langridge over Daniel Pannon smith still Declan Lee in third place. This is amazing watching this that's on the screen is that we had a MX-5s cubed there basically is that we had side by side by side by side. The first to second gap is certainly less than it was looking visually gap on the screen 0.862 of a second the gap's and coming down for third place. We got the change for third place is that Fletcher got a good run on Declan Lee all the way down the start finish straight and he dived up the inside as they went down towards Cops Corner but Declan Lee's got a good run out of there. I think that was uh, Chapman that got the very wide line coming out of there, though. And yes, Declan Lee's got himself uh, back up into third position again. But the, after that uh, strong start he made from sixth on the grid, he got it into third place pretty quickly, Declan Lee, but he's not progressing from there, is he? They don't do any teamwork of, right, let's work together to close on the cars yeah. ahead, do they? <laughs> it's just, it's, it, the gloves are off every single time. And Declan Lee is about to possibly drop back down to fourth position again as he, yes, goes through, goes the number uh, 26 car of Fletcher. But again, Declan Lee trying to come back at him. Nicholas Scott, number four, glued to the back of this pair as well, ready to... I was going to say ready to pick up the pieces, but I think he's prepared to put his nose wherever a gap presents itself. And there's... What's that going to be? That's for seventh backwards, I think that is. Sixth backwards, sorry. 
I mean, go on. No, go on. Alex Miller, I was going to say, uh, number seven, has progressed last time around to 14th place. He's now, uh, still, sorry, to, third, to 15th place. He's now 14th, Alex Miller, so another place gained. So close for the between the lead two now, as well as for third backwards. So one of these will get on the podium, the other two will get zip. And at the moment, it's down another, another place for Declan Lee because through has gone the number four car of Nicholas Scott. But the lead two were incredibly close as they got down towards Maggots as well. There's still 11, 11 minutes left in this yes. race. And here we go, we're going to get a challenge. Parron Smith dies up the inside, he's done it at the end of the Wellington straight in towards the left, left hander of Brooklands. And he has it signed, sealed, and delivered as they. They now put their way through the right-hander of Luffield and a great move there from 73 Daniel Parent smith Remember, in the qualifying session, he was the quickest car. He just missed out on it when they went into the Super Bowl. Yes, you do wonder whether the driver, because he had a, a worthwhile lead on language and it's now completely gone, and whether it's getting tired, the uh, concentration needed to maintain uh, uh, the pace in this race is uh, hard-earned. Well, we're talking about hard earned. Declan Lee is uh, is hard earning and hard leaning as he goes through the right hander of Cop's corner there, trying desperately to find a way up past the. Uh, I was about to say the second place, but of course this is the second battle, isn't it? Third, fourth, and fifth, and they're still side by side as they're up. Maggots turning right. Oh, and that suddenly there was no contact there, but yeah. just trying to carry the speed through there. Fletcher just had to collect that up then, didn't he? Right, halfway through. So we've had all the action, an awful amount of action, and uh, we're only halfway through this 20-minute race, and we've got another 20-minute race for them to come later on. Yeah, they, they get everything wrapped up in the single day, don't they, yeah. to, to keep their cost down. And uh, But there's nothing about wrapping up just yet because Parent Smith is under huge pressure for that lead, as is the third-place car of Fletcher. Oh, sorry, Declan Lee is, is ahead of them. And, in fact, Declan Lee is not only ahead of them as pulled away has he not? oh no sorry that's uh, another car atkins has joined in as well now hasn't it so that's uh, four trying to go for that third place now so the leaders have gone through they have uh, now uh, completed nine laps so we're looking at are we an 18 lap race all being well daniel parons smith led over the line by a fifth of a second from john langridge and up into third place over the line was Nicholas Stott, number four. And that's the first time he's featured in a podium position in this race. A little bit of bodywork on the circuit there. Probably just about off the racing line, unless someone's trying to make a move. I haven't clocked quite where that is yet. Someone's come into the pits. I didn't catch which uh, number that was. Oh, it's Chapman. So it is the 19 car of David Chapman that I said sort of fell down through the order. Started third on the grid, fell down the order in the early stages, then started coming back through. Uh, I don't think he was really involved in too much of the way of rough and tumble, but he was certainly close racing. He was your, the one you were going yeah. to put money on. <laughs> um, Have you got any money on the Grand uh, National? I think uh, what he may need is a bit of spare change himself because the outer skin of the door oh. has, has come off. He, he, there is marks along the sill sort of indicating he's been involved in some sort of knock, but back out onto circuit, I think, because whilst it has got that inner skin, driver is still enclosed in theory. And that'll explain the uh, the debris that we saw yeah. on the footage and the uh, red and yellow flag is therefore out. I know that uh, uh, the misconception is that that is slippery surface, but of course it also means debris on the surface, as, on the circuit as well. And that was the kind of shape, wasn't it? It was door size and shape that was on the circuit. Whilst we're talking sense. flags, of course, it used to be the oil flag and it's now, yeah. as you say, the slippery surface flag. And it was a recommendation by the BRDC back in 1938 that really? flag should be introduced, yes. Yeah, so there it is, and it's letting the drivers know that there's uh, debris on the circuit, so be aware. Rowan Lundy just made up three places. The Burgundy 88 car that we saw involved in some great fights in the early stages sort of uh, lost out a little bit. In fact, oh, you could just see that he was about to make a move, but also about to make a move. John Langridge, our pole sitter, is determined to get back up into the lead ahead of Darren, uh, Daniel Parron smith and In fact, he's got the, uh, the move up the inside there, and as he comes flashing past our commentary box, he's got himself back into the lead in. So John Langridge leads were uh, taking got his second win, taking a breather, and uh, is leading by point well over the line just by under a fifth of a second with Stott in third place Lee fourth and fifth Fletcher sixth is Atkins and monitoring the progress 
of Alex Miller. Where's number seven? He's in the top ten. He's ninth now, Alex Miller, and from the back of the grid, plus ten. Yeah, and he was glued to the back of the fight just ahead of him of Stepney and Lundy. So keep an eye on that uh, black with the bronze flashes, number seven car, because I think he may well make up another couple of places shortly, which will may leave, may leave him one place out of what you felt he would get into. I said top six, six, didn't I? Yeah. Yes. yeah. So I think he's getting close to going up into seventh. Lee Pair down the Wellington straight they come. Third place is the number four car of, uh, of Stock. Lee and Fletcher still looking up close and personal with uh, 42 car of Atkins ready to, to either pick up the pieces or get involved if they come into his clutches. But it does look as though Langridge in that number five is just maybe starting to gap Aaron Smith ever so slightly at this point. But there's, there we go, there's Alex Miller. He's already got past Rowan Lundy, so the 88 car is now behind him. So he's moved up one of the places. And I think it's the Dayglow Yellow is his next target, number 33, Stepney. So he's up to eighth place as he comes across the line by my calculations. Let's just have a look. Yep, he's yeah. in eighth. And uh, his next target is that Dayglow Yellow 33. And you can see that Alex Miller is definitely on a mission, although Rowan Lundy, who's been having a great race, he's now looking up the inside line. It just struggled to turn right there. Big understeer from Alex Miller yes, by the looks yeah. of it, wasn't it? Probably counting a bit too much speed, but he'd be able to tidy up his uh, cornering and hold on to the position just about as they come out of come out of Beckett's. Rowan Lundy's racing getting really involved isn't he? Now we've got on the screen and I, I'll have a look and see if I can find out what it is that there is the exclamation mark that suggests that there is a, uh, a penalty, five second penalty pending oh. for number 26. So Fletcher that sat there in fourth position at the moment is going to be picking up a five second penalty. Right, and Alex Miller is up into eighth place. He now has the fastest lap of the race as well. So, the gap first to set in four tenths of a cent, so it's still very tight at the front. Perrin Smith to Langridge, Nicholas Stott third, the penalised Fletcher in fourth place, Drew Fletcher fourth on track. And I, I missed it, you may have been talking it while I was working out at this penalty, the fact that Langridge I thought was pulling away from Perrin Smith, but Perrin Smith back into the lead again now, the 73 car, and he's gapping Langridge, is that an issue for John Langridge, because that's the biggest we've seen the gap yeah, between the top two. <laughs> That, that is really dropping away, isn't it? The car suddenly looks as though it's going a bit slower. Yeah. But was it just a missed gear, perhaps? Or is he being caught by the pack behind? I think he's being caught by that blue bonneted car behind him of Nicholas Stott. Oh, in the background there, I think Miller, number seven, was about to make a move on the Dayglow Yellow Stepney. In fact, there he is in the background. You can just see that Miller has indeed gone up the inside of Brooklyn. So that's in the background, just keeping an eye on that challenge as it constantly evolves as well. He's, He's going to get close to that sick. There we go. Number seven has done it indeed. So up goes Alex Miller into seventh position. One more and he <laughs> achieves your target. And we've got just under three and a half minutes left to go. But it's a big gap, isn't it, now for, for his next target, which will be the, uh, the first two car of, uh, of Atkins. Help though, because Fletcher has Fletcher's penalty been applied? I don't think he has, has it? I don't think so. So no, you so could it, find he is into it, the top six, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, once that penalty is applied. And we don't know what the story is with John Langridge. What was his lap time? A 111. That makes him slower than any car in the top 10. It does. You're right. Not masses in it. It's not necessarily a full blown issue, but he suddenly is not able to, uh, you know, bearing in mind he was two seconds a lap quicker earlier. In fact, there, there is Dr. John Langridge. He's falling back towards the number four car, isn't he? Great tussle going on behind there. So it, Declan Lee in fourth place has just been passed by the 42 car of Atkins, who has impressed me today. He's done he a cracking well. job. He has yeah. done well. Kelly yeah. Atkins snuck into that uh, Super Bowl. 26 Drew Fletcher that has got a penalty coming his way is uh, at the back of that trio now. So that means that Atkins has got past both of them then, hasn't he? Yeah, so Atkins has got past the, the pair of them, uh, moves up two places into fourth. Rather like it was in the, in the full qualifying session at the start yeah. of the day, he only appeared with a quick time towards the, end, the end of the session. Now yeah. it's the same. Uh, perhaps he's just a slow starter, but uh, once he gets going, he's quick. Yeah, ag agreed. Uh, it looks like Ed McDermott, who's up into 11th place in the number 10, has also picked up a penalty now as well. Uh, 
it doesn't tell us on the race control tab exactly what it is. That's a 10 second penalty for him. Side by side, and we've now got Langridge under pressure from Stott. So, uh, yeah, Langridge has been passed by Stott. I'm convinced that something has, uh, has now affected John Langridge's car. Not enough for him to need to stop, is it, Ian? But no. he's under pressure. Declan Lee was in the background about to make a move up to fourth place. So uh, still that challenge is on, but Langridge is going to have to hold on for another minute and 24 seconds. And Atkins is fourth. Yeah, Atkins, sorry, Alex Miller, I should be looking for not Atkins. Alex Miller is still seventh. 4.6 seconds behind Fletcher in sixth place. So Declan Lee, number one, up into fourth place. Kelly Atkins under pressure there, and in fact, he's been passed by the 26 car of Fletcher. But don't forget, Fletcher's got a five second penalty that will be applied as soon as they take uh, the end. Another car that's got a penalty, and in fact, the McDermott one's disappeared, and they've applied it to 19 Chapman instead now. So they've obviously changed their mind about, uh, about that one. So still in the top three is number five, John Langridge, but it's uh, a fading third place that he's occupying now. He's just looking to come back and challenge Nicholas Stott for second place. Nicholas Stott three and a half seconds behind Daniel Parons uh, Smith, so he's not going to catch him. Well, and our race leader looking in the mirror, trying to desperately see where everybody's gone because I think it's taken him by surprise a little bit as well. Possibly slightly frustrated because I think they do like well, to uh, to have the 12. battles. 10 seconds. Yeah, he's going to sneak through because here he comes now across the line. So one more tour yeah. of the Silverstone National Circuit coming our way. Daniel Parron-Smith, this is the point where they can hear things, see, smell things, feel things going yes. wrong with their car. Uh, and he'll be delighted because I'm sure at the end of Super Bowl, he's frustrated that he finished third. Uh, after such a... Declan Lee's got a penalty now. The number one car, last year's champion, sat there in fourth. He's picked up a penalty. These have got to be track limits. Track limits, I would have thought, yes. Wow. So there you go. That number one car's got a, a penalty. Let's have a look. Well, that's, going to, that's going to put uh, Alex Miller into the top six, I would have thought, almost certainly now, when these penalties uh, are 42's applied. got a penalty as well. So fourth, fifth and sixth have all got penalties. Uh, five seconds for Atkins, 15 seconds for Fletcher. What? Five seconds for, for Lee. So I'm not sure where these are coming from because we're not getting... Alex Miller has picked up a, blight, a time penalty as well now. I was just about to say, wait till he gets one. He's got one. Right, OK. Yeah, five seconds for him. So a whole load that are going to be applied as they cross the line. But the top three are all right, aren't they? So Daniel Perrin-Smith comes up to take the chequered flag. He's got a time penalty as well, by the way. Has it? Yes, he has it. Yeah. Nick, Nicholas Stott wins. He does. So Baron Smith Stott. loses that win, doesn't he? By that time penalty, he must have picked right up towards the end. Yeah. So your victor is the number four car of Nicholas Stott. Incredible. And there's going to be some grumpy drivers out there that are going to be taken aback by these uh, time penalties and the effect it's had. So it is. Nicholas Stott, number four, takes the victory. Second place, despite being a comfortable margin ahead, 73, Daniel Parron Smith. Uh, in fact, no, he's dropped down to third place, would you believe this now? John Langridge, with his ailing car, has finished second in the number five car. So Parron Smith back down to third. Fourth is then the 33 car that started ninth on the grid of uh, Dylan Stepney. Declan Lee, number one, despite his penalty, finishes in fifth. Sixth is number 42, Callie Atkins, with a penalty as well. 88, Rowan Lundy finishes in seventh. Eighth is the number seven car of Alex Miller, so didn't make it no. into the sixth, but well, would have. because of penalties. Yeah, because yes. he picked up <laughs> his own penalty as well. Ed McDermott, number 10, finishes in ninth position. That's good, from 15th on the grid, so he came back through. Tenth is the number 14 car of Clifford. Connor Clifford, yeah. Eleventh, uh, number two, Robinsons. Twenty-six, Fletcher, with all those penalties, ends up down in twelfth position. Ray Worley, number forty, in thirteenth. Fourteenth place will be the twenty-four car of of Lane. So Charlie Lane. Fifteenth is Simon Fleet. Sixteenth, Jack Hodges. Gary Smith in seventeenth place. Chaz Allen, eighteenth. Nineteenth is Colin Wells, and David Chapman, who came into the pits with a bit of an issue, was a lap down, but still came brought that car home in 20th place and he had time penalties as well so that was a whole lot of track limits being abused uh, and uh, I think that uh, the drivers have possibly 
Jack, I, I know you're down there. Do you reckon they now know that those penalties have been handed to them? <laughs> well, that's probably one way to put it, because um, Daniel Perrin-Smith, um, he's not got the body language of somebody that has won the race, put it that way. Um, yeah. And the, the celebration from Alex Stott clearly sort of dictates that, yeah, he, he knows he's won that race. So we'll try and jump in and grab a word with uh, with Alex who I'm guessing now knows he's won the race on corrected times um, um, was that just the case of managing those track limits did you see anybody else doing it yeah I, I think uh, I mean they, they go off after about four laps and then it's a case of just kept keeping the same delta getting the same lap time over and over and I just picked a, a sort of lap time set I was doing a 1098 and just tried to stay at that uh, the whole way through and that meant the tires were a you know, had more life in them at the end. And I think that's how I got John, because uh, his tyres went off a bit and I was able to catch him, pass him and pull a gap. So yeah, over the moon with that, yeah. And obviously another race later on today, are you going to try, try and manage the tyres better there? Or are you going to be a bit more aggressive as, as it's the last one of the day? Oh, it depends whether or not I'm fighting for a place. If I'm out front, then I'll I'll take it easy, look after them, make sure I've got a good lap time at the end. If, uh, if I've got someone to battle with, then no, I'll be going aggressive. I'll be going for that win. Great stuff. Congratulations on the win. We'll wander over and grab a word with Dan Parrin Smith, who is here now. Do we have Dan here? Yes, we do. Um, Dan P3, uh, whilst it was P1 on the road, unlucky with uh, track limits. I'm assuming on those uh, on those penalties. Was that something you were maybe aware of during the race? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, my wheel, four four wheels weren't off, but apparently you can't have two wheels off. So. I didn't really know that, to be honest, but it is what it is. I'm happy with the pace, so I think in the second race, we can definitely get get a lead and hopefully actually win it on the road this time, so yeah. And obviously, you know, you know you've got the pace to win a race. It's just about sort of putting two and two together. Is that the plan for the rest of the day? Yeah, 100%. I mean, you know, I've got to manage to get away there, and then John dropped back, so it was, it was lucky for me, but yeah, the toe's massive, so it's a lottery in the second race, but we'll see how it goes. Great stuff. Best of luck for the rest of the weekend. We've got John Langridge over here, unfortunately, with his, with his back to us. John, can we grab a... Can we grab a quick word? We'll get you in front of your car. It's a nice shot there. Um, so, obviously, P2 on corrected times, that's got to be a good motivator. Whilst it wasn't it on the road, it could have happened to anyone. Uh, yeah, well, it was very nice to uh, start the year off with a with a solid second place there. Had a slight problem with my engine stop revving at one point, so um, something to look into in a minute. But otherwise, the car was flawless, thanks to you know Terry, my dad, everyone at Miller Motorsport, and the backing from Cambridge FD and, and uh, Hardline has got me here. So, happy days. And obviously, apart from the mechanical issue, is there anything else you're going to change? Maybe with a setup, maybe pressures, anything like that? Possibly. We'll see what the weather does. It is warmer than yesterday, so the times are a bit slower than we had in testing. Um, but hopefully, we'll get it sorted, and I'll be able to give these boys a good run for the money. Great stuff. Best of luck for the rest of the rest of the day. But um, they're, they're all the drivers we've got down here yeah. in the pit lane. So back up to you two in the comments. It's a change, Jack, to let you know because Parent Smith wasn't third he's down into seventh place and we got stepney 33 finishes third now instead so uh yeah let he won't be down there he won't be. well actually the car is there and i can see jack no. that it's being pushed back towards you do you have that driver or is it just the car that's coming back got the sorry just had to wait for the yeah, mic to turn back on um I think we've got driver and everybody here. We may be doing a podium as well. The, the, the gates were previously cable tied, so I couldn't get up onto the podium, but I'd imagine we will be uh, we will be getting uh, a full podium in a minute. Yeah, so you say it's Dylan Stepney that's now by three. Yes. Correct. The 33 Dylan Stepney is in third place because Parent Smith ended up down in seventh place in the end with 15 right. seconds of penalties. We've got the Sports 2000s coming out as well, so... Jack, butt in when you can, but we've got the two-part grid with 10 seconds between them. The classic Sports 2000s, or historic Sports 2000s, being the second later grid to set off. For the front row, Michael Gibbons, number one, the champion, and number 82, Ben Cater, uh, on the front row, side by side. Second row, 117, Colin Peach, and number 50, Steve O. 117 and 50, row two. Row three is 26, Tom Stoughton and 77, Tony Barwell, 26 and 77. Row four is 40, Tim Tudor and 48, Andy Chittenden, 40 and 48, row four. Row five, 44, John Eiley and 25, Josh Needham, 44 and 25, row five. Row six is 34, Roger Donnan and 73, Ash Law, 34 and 73, row six. Row seven, 111, Grant Gibson and 88, Peter Williams, 111 and 88, row seven. Row eight, eight, Clive Hayes and seven, Mike Turner, eight and seven, row eight. Row nine, 55, 
Rafe Higson and 9, Andrew Butler, 55 and 9, row 9, row 10, 8, 28, John Owen, and 55, Bryn Tootle. So 28 and 54, row 10, row 11, 16, Richard Cook and 14, Adrian Ridge, 16 and 14, row 11. And at the back, number 36, Rollo Tomasi, Rollo Tomasi, number 36. Then there's a 10-second delay, and then the second grid goes of the classic or heritage cars, 67, Gavin Wills and 37, Will Scriver, 67 and 37, row 1. Row 2 is uh, 27, Mark Noaro and 17, Clive Steeper, 27 and 17, row 2. Row 3... 33, Mike Fry and 45, Peter Needham. 33 and 45, row 3. Row 4, 35, Mark Hobbs and 13, Mike Dodd. 35 and 13, row, th row 4 and row 5. 57, Simon Aldworth and 2, David Muse. 57 and 2 complete the grid. Jack, have you got a chance of chipping in? I think he's moved away from there now. They kind of went up and did the podium, and I think we had yeah. the correct drivers. Did yeah, they have it, the correct drivers up there in the end? Uh, they did have the correct drivers, but what the Miata Trophy are doing, are literally just a quick presentation. They don't want anything over the P8. They're just doing it nice Fine. and quick, get the photos for, okay. for the social media and go from there. Fabulous. But that was uh, all sorts going on well, with that one, wasn't there? Goodness me. Yeah, we've only had two races so far. Right, sort this lot out. Two grids. Uh, these uh, great-looking Sports 2000 cars. Last year's champions on pole position, so starting uh, this year as he carried on as he uh, ended last year. Uh, and uh, who else is to, to watch out for? Well, we've got uh, Tom Stoughton is always somebody that features well. Cars setting off now on their green flag formation lap. It's a 20-minute race. Somebody stopped Roger Donan, possibly. He's got going again now, thankfully. <clears throat> Love the fact that on the screen you'll see Sports 2000 raising awareness for Lime Resource Centre charity, the LRC, limeresourcecentre.com. And uh, always lovely when we see that uh, championships are raising awareness and, uh, and everything else for these, uh, these necessary and wonderful causes. Yeah, among the cars in the historic class, we've got two Shrikes, the Shrike P15. Uh, which was very similar to the Aquila. In fact, I think one was related to the other. Uh, but they, they always reminded me of, of uh, Dougal from the Magic Roundabout. They, they hug the ground so tightly, and they have that sort of shape, if not furry, um, of, of uh, the notorious Dougal. But uh, they are front runners, uh, and one driver who is worth keeping an eye on, he's on the front row of the uh, heritage grid, is... Uh, Will Scriver, number 37, who's very successful in historic racing. Son of Michael Scriver, who also was very successful. Gavin Wills, also somebody uh, who's on the pole position of the heritage grid in the Royal RP 37. Will Scriver uh, and Gavin Wills, number 67, is in a shrike. Namesake of a, a very uh, talented and successful uh, former Ford racer at Castle Coombe, sadly lost his life. Sad. Um, we got a red flag, by the way, so something's not right that they've decided that uh, they're not going to be able to take this start. So they're waving reds as well, even though we haven't actually started yet. I fear it may be that car that was reluctant to leave the grid and may have well, got, ground to a halt. Yeah, it, must, it got going again, but it must have stopped. Where have they actually stopped them then? I'm trying to picture where that is now. That's uh, it's going to be further round, and they're going to go safety car, presumably. Uh, hi to Susie Black. Thanks for your message, Susie. Sat round in the uh, BRDC grandstand, supporting the uh, Sports 2000s and the Clubmans. Good to see that you're here, Susie. You're always at a race circuit every weekend somewhere, aren't you? But what a big loss, though, that we uh, we obviously lost the uh, the 91 Joshua Law car that was sat there on the the front row. So mm. they couldn't get that issue sorted. It isn't taking this start. I don't know whether that means that uh, they're, they're still working on it, and hopefully we'll see it for uh, for race number two. Um, but uh, we'll we'll wait and see whether they they reappear. But certainly pulled out from this one. Hence Penn Caters up on the uh, the front row with Michael Gibbons. Thirty six. Rolo Tomasi placed at the back of the grid without an, a time. So I'd assume that that means that they uh, they just realized that it was uh, necessary uh, sorry able to take the start but not able to put time so I was just looking on the cameras to see if we could see any uh, affliction afflicted car somewhere around the circuit but uh, but nothing I can see there at the moment uh, 
big shout out my cousin Paul Dawes he's uh, he's watching on the live stream as well don't forget you can see it at uh, MSVR TV or MSV TV uh, so welcome cuz uh, he used to run a car in the sports 2000 races back in 2006 and 2007 you've been everywhere running cars though cuz you know what's going on but they they do have people helping them out with these cars because they they are very um, sophisticated still aren't they in a not not technically demanding but they do need someone that understands what to do with them so I am none the wiser what happened with this one what the reason for the stoppage is no uh, uh, we've got a, a, a gathering at the uh, cluster of Marshall's go on I, what, is it, what do we call a cluster of Marshall's but um, I reckon because I've just seen paperwork handed over I wonder whether they didn't have the amended grid and maybe they were lined up slightly wrong but I didn't see that it's just only the fact that a piece of paper is moved uh, uh, sorry well, appeared right well one Michael Gibbons is there and 82 Ben Cater is there so that's the front row should see 50 next so we see 117 we haven't had a 50 do we have a 50 no we have a no, it falls apart by the time we get to the second row we've got cars but not necessarily like the right cars but not necessarily the <laughs> <laughs> in the right order that's like me when I'm singing all the right notes just in the wrong order don't worry I won't do a demo Are you sure yeah, I'm sure you I, I wouldn't do that to you Ian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right yeah so they're, they're heading down but very steadily the, the rest of the field is still held back uh, at Luffield because we can see the tail end the other side of the BRDC suite did I see as well talking of uh, you know your did you say 50 years that you've been commentating uh, yeah <laughs> and that now uh, Paul Truswell has been what do you call it inducted into the BRDC yes this last week yes. or two as well yes another commentator that's been around for a good chunk of time well, I think Paul regards himself as more than a commentator because he, he does, he's a strategist oh, as well. Oh, he is, absolutely. Um, for uh, sports car teams. Yeah, he is. I've, I've had the pr uh, privilege of being over in Europe with him yeah. uh, at an event and the teams know him because they're trying to get him to be their, their strategist and he's like, nope, I'm doing commentary this weekend. <laughs> I can't do that as well. And he then has to try and be uh, impartial once he's then on the microphone yes. as well, which is challenging, I'm sure. So, re, uh, re gridding everybody up. Hopefully, that is uh, all confusion resolved. I'm not convinced that it is. So I think we're missing a car from the second row. Oh, really? Well, there seems to be quite a gap behind the car that's on pole position. Or perhaps I'm just imagining things. No, well, well the, the trouble is the commentary box that we now have is located quite a way. from the start line. But Alan Jones, no less, has walked in. And he is telling us what? Let's just find. Yeah, Simon, if you can let me know once the field is clear, because it's not all there. So that, thank you for the update. So it was, as uh, I had a horrible feeling may have been the case, is that uh, yeah, just slightly uh, out of kilter where we'd had the revised grids. Quite often when a car is withdrawn, they don't always fill that gap, do they? But it was obviously done, but it was quite a late amended grid, wasn't it? Do we know why it, it was amended? Uh, what, because what, what of 91 reason? pulling out. Ah, that's the answer. Yes. yes. Um, and, I, and I believe that there was a talk that the historics were sort of round. So we are lawless. We we are, we're, not, we're not lawless because I've heard you always Ashley, are. Ashley Law is. Uh, I shouldn't say that because you were in the law. League of I was. You? you weren't lawless. I take it back, Your Honour. He says with a trembling voice. <laughs> okay. Away we go on a green flag lap. This isn't the start of the race. You might think it's about time we had the start of the race, but <laughs> that'll be happening shortly. But for the moment, the cars are setting off on 
another green flag lap in the grid order the that was as we, gave, as yes. we <laughs> gave it to you, which was from an amended grid sheet. So yeah, 91 withdrawn. Hopefully just from this race. Great to see Colin Peach there, the number three car, the orange. Mm. Uh, um, well, I assume it's orange, it might be peachy coloured. Uh, and, and black number 117, he, uh, he was sort of not sounding happy on his social media. Uh, about about the so car you not said, being ready. Yes, yeah, he yeah. just didn't didn't look happy at all, including in the early hours this morning, still working on it. And uh, he's he's up there starting in third place, which is also leading his class. So fair play, he's done a good job to, to or he or they or whatever, done a good job to get that car ready. Something tells me this is going to be a Michael Gibbons benefit, I think. Uh, he, yeah, he was he half a last second year, clear, wasn't he, he? Yeah, winning the championship last year, not for the first time. He, he uh, was very quick, and I'm not sure there's anybody who's going to be able to match his pace. Of the shared cars, uh, 40 is Tim Tudor, we understand, in this race. Uh, 14 is a two-driver car. Adrian Ridge, we believe, is in the car for this race. Barwell's number 77, Tony Barwell. And 27 is Mark Noaro. The way that Sports 2000, I suppose they grew out of uh, the two litre sports prototypes of the early 1970s. Uh, sports 2000 came into existence in 1975, 76, uh, or was it 77, mid 70s anyway. Uh, and they've now evolved into miniature versions of uh, LMP2 sports prototypes, as I'm glad to see are still racing in the, this year's uh, European Le Mans series. Even though uh, I think Le Mans itself has dropped them as a category. Well, after all that fun and games, I think the grids we are look pretty full. Yep, it looks like we're pretty good and we're in position. Green flag is waved, bit of a breeze making it difficult to wave that flag. Red lights are on, not hanging about here. Off go the lights and off go the field. And there is a 10 second delay for the Historic, so don't panic for that uh, gaggle still waiting there. But the, uh, the rest of the field is off and they are just about holding the same order. Off go the Historics in front of us is the noise you might be able to hear. There they go. <laughs> the 11s that have been screamed by the rest of the field ahead of them. And uh, down we go with Gavin Wills hoping to, to hold on to that lead. And I don't think he has. It looks like Shriver possibly, well, they're both red, so it's difficult to tell which way round it went. But there is the lead pack heading back up the Wellington Street straight. I mean, th th they're going to be reappearing incredibly quick into our sight again, aren't they, these cars? Um, I reckon that it is Michael Gibbons who leads. Yes. As you said, there was a good chance. I think Tony Barwell, number 77, has got jumped up ahead of Tom Stoughton. There is Stoughton in that green and yellow that last year was a very challenging work in progress. And he'll be hoping in that it's a little bit uh, on par this time. It's a very different shape to the rest because that is the gun compared to the MCRs around him or ahead of him, certainly at least. And it is Gibbons from Cato, Peach O, and Barwell has got ahead of Stoughton. So Stoughton drops down into sixth position at the moment. And here come the uh, challenging historics and it is uh, the same order at the front Gavin Wells from Will Shriver 67 from 37 but the uh, the changes that uh, happen a little bit behind them is that I think that it's uh, Clive Steeper has yeah. moved up into third that's right yeah, yeah. shot there of the uh, Shrike of David Muse number two bringing up the rear meanwhile for the lead it continues to be the reigning champion Michael Gibbons in the number one MCR who leads the way out of Woodcut over the line. The next two doing their best to keep up Ben Cater and Andrew Peach still some way back. In fourth place is number 50 Steve O. And behind him Tim, is uh, Tony Barwell, number 77, fifth. And sixth continues to be number 
and 26, Tom Stoughton. So we're looking at the moment is that uh, Colin Peach 117 is putting some great pressure yeah. on Ben Cater. And in fact, oh, and he was just fainting to sort of let Ben Cater know he's there. Doesn't need to do it because Colin Peach is leading the DB category. Uh, that is the Duratec uh, Class B. He is leading that at the moment quite comfortably, to be honest with you. But these are racing drivers. They just love getting involved. Uh, ben Cater is, uh, is second on the road and in class so even if he got passed by Colin Peach it doesn't change things but the great fight coming down to Wellington straight and that is the uh, the red number I missed which one it was then is it the uh, 67 so this is the lead for the historics I wanted to pause to make sure they'd have to get past one of the uh, Duratec um, uh, back markers and it means that the 67 car of Gavin Wills under huge press from Will Shriver and you predicted that Shriver was going to go well yeah. here didn't you? Yes well Will's done a lot of racing in recent years with historic, historic Formula Ford and more powerful cars than that and we're expecting to shine the lead which Michael Gibbons had at the end of the third lap was up to one and a half seconds as Michael said, the new fastest lap of the race. Which is kind of in line with the half a second a lap difference yeah. that we saw in qualifying, isn't it? There? Yes. Through he goes, four laps in the book already, such so is the pace of these cars. They're already flashing in front of us, but heading uh, out of uh, Luffield is the triple one car of Gibson under huge pressure. Missed them as they went through there by uh, 25 Needham. Oh, Needham was having a look up the inside there, but Needham actually lost two places on that last tour, so he's trying to fight back and get those places made back up again. He lost out to both uh, Williams and Gibson, the 111 car just ahead of them. Whatever the issue was, it looks like that's back up to speed again. Grant Gibson in that uh, big white Van Diemen RF94. It does look big. It is, You're does right. it? Does I, look, I thought it, when it? I saw it earlier on, it was going to say something about it. It, it looks bigger and wider. And I find it weird that it's called a Van Diemen RF94, because I'm like, that, isn't that the same name as a Formula Ford car? Yes. <laughs> so they haven't even gone, let's call it something different. It, uh, it well, is you just could a call it a Van Diemen blank if you were Rollo Tomasi. Now, that fight on the screen that we see now, Clive yeah. Steeper under huge pressure from Mark Noiro, and that is for the lead in that particular class, the historic Class C, and that means Clive Steeper's gone tumbling back down a little bit because he was comfortably ahead of Mark Noiro. Noiro's looking as they turn left at Brooklands to try and make a move. Not possible there. Noiro's having to be very mindful of the car directly behind him as well. I think that's the yeah, 33 Fry. Now, Fry is third in class. C in the historic, so that is first, second and third in the historic Class C battle that is uh, is raging to say the least. Needham behind them is uh, is A, but the suddenly the uh, 45 car, sorry 13 car of Dodd is another one that is in three. I love that 13 car, look at the livery on that 13, how beautiful is that? That reminds me of some historic livery, but I can't remember which one or which one it just makes me think of, but it's beautiful. And that one is fourth in the, the C-Class. Oh, and just flashing across in front of us, by the way, Stu Stoughton in sixth place is under huge pressure from uh, Tudor now. It'll be the ex-Sunoco Ford uh, of Porsche. I think it was like a 595 or something like that, Chris. Thank you. I knew it was something. I know I wasn't going fully mad. <laughs> Always rely on a so, Sorry, like a what? What did you say it was again, Jack? It was uh, Sunoco Porsche, I think he said. Yeah, just got my mic back on. I think I'm, I'm going to research this now. You've got me thinking about it. I know it was a Porsche. I know it was originally Sunoco sponsored. I can't remember exactly which iteration. Five, five springs to mind, but I may be wrong. Okay, cool. Thank you for that, sir. Michael Gibbons lead now 2.7 seconds. And he still has the fastest after the race, not surprisingly. Andrew Peach still third. And no changes amongst the... So the action is going on as Chris has been directing us to in the heritage classes. Gavin Rills against Will Stryver. 
Well, it is in two different parts in the Historics. Oh, and we've just had a challenge by the 45 Historic A class, getting past Mark Noiro and then nearly losing it, which has unsettled Mark Noiro, which means that having been challenging for the lead in Historic C, now Stump falls back behind. That will be Fry, won't it, the 33 car? So I think Noiro will be very frustrated about the, uh, the what the move there was from the 45 car. But, yeah, fine, being in an A class Historic, we'll probably feel it doesn't need to be there but it's kind of getting mixed up. And in fact, the 35 car of Hobbs has now moved up into third in historic seat. Mark Noiro off the podium in, in his class as it stands. So Michael Gibbons is now trying to pick his way through. The leader, goodness me, that was very close as he came round onto the start finish straight. Tried to go three wide with a very small gap, but there goes your outright race leader trying to look up the inside of the 33 car of Fry, thankfully puts the lap on him uh, in the end, but wasn't hanging around there, was he, Gibbons? No. <laughs> when you consider his lead was enough that he could have been patient, but he was determined to just scythe through like a hot knife through butter. Well, Mike Fry has been racing these cars for a very long time, so should be a safe person to pass. Right, lead 3.3 seconds now, so Michael Gibbons continuing to dominate race we've got 11 and a half minutes on the clock still and up a place into 13th place has gone number eight david horton now he's normally front run a front runner so is he one to keep an eye on although he's in the depths of the field at the moment and we've got ben cater now trying to pick his way through these battling historics and he's just been run very wide off there as the historics uh, went all the way to the edge of the circuit as they came onto the start finish straight out of Luffield, but just about got away with that one. I don't think he should get done for any kind of track limits there because that was not his fault. The historics just kept coming despite the, the quicker Duratec car coming through. And it looks like Colin Peach is picking his way through. He's about to put a lap on uh, Peter Needham, the 45 car there. Job done. His next target to put a lap on is going to be Clive Steeper, number 17. And you can see the white, orange and grey car just behind Colin Peach. That is number 50, Steve O. And this sort of lappery has probably squeezed those two back up together again. Just behind them, you see, is the 77 car. That is uh, Tony Barwell. So I think third backwards, yeah, you can see that uh, the 50 car of Steve O is now right with Colin Peach. But Colin will hope that one, now that he's clear of the, uh, the fighting back markers and just stretch his legs back out again. There goes Tony Barwell, number 77, so that's the lap put on the uh, historics by him as well. Just picked up a change of driver, actually. Number eight isn't David Horton, it's Clive Hayes. Oh, ah, OK. He's in 13th place. It, I think if it was David driving, he would be further up the order. Yes, uh, OK. Uh, by half a second of that, then Michael Gibbons continues to lead the way. Ten laps completed, nine, just over nine and a half minutes remain. There's the battle yes, you were talking say, about, isn't it? 67 and 37 there, Gavin Rills and Will Scriver. They were close in qualifying, their nose to tail now. And in fact, this is the best uh, scrap of the race. Uh, a spin there for number 14. That's the Ridge way to do it, Adrian Ridge. Was it all Wayne Ridge? Adrian. Yeah, it was Adrian Ridge in that one. Quite a harmless spin in the end, thankfully, wasn't it? And he's yes. able to get going again. Uh, oh, and someone else that's going across the grass. That's the number 17, Clive Steeper, the leader of the historic C class. So I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, I know that that was a, quite a, uh, a ferocious battle going on there. Oh, hand up in the air. So the number 14 guy, it may have been a har what looked like a harmless spin, but maybe there's a cause or effect argument there. Is that a little whiffs of smoke coming from the back? Yes. Although, is that just a collapsed Could be. left rear? Because it looks... A bit uncomfortable there on that left rear, doesn't it? I think we're going to see a few changes on that uh, historic battle then. 45 Needham's got past Steeper. I wonder if that was what tipped him into it. So Fry is now leading historic C. Mark Noir back up into second. Remember, he was out of the tree. Another and that's spin. Ben Cater. Yes. Oh, and he's nearly been collected by uh, a car that was behind him missed which one it was that nearly collected the front and he's not managed to get it going that is just in our view on the exit of uh, Luffield and he has now started moving again thankfully but that second place Ben Cater has disappeared down through the order 
mean. Mark Gibbons is down to sixth position as well. well we didn't uh, see that. Uh, yeah, we did. Really. There he I, is. I, I, yeah, I hesitate to say it was him because he ah. was the leader. But yeah, he was shown briefly on the screen. He's fully on screen now. Crabbing so number there. one uh, is no longer the leader. The leader is now 117 Andrew Peach. Uh, Steve O is in second place, number 50, and third is Tony Barwell, number 77. And who's that, number seven? Turner. So that's uh, another car. Someone's into the pits. I think that's the 14 that's just brought itself back to the pits. Yeah, the uh, uh, number seven car of Turner, that's before he even gets the left-hander. And we've suddenly nearly had a loss there for yes. the second place in the historics. 37, Will Shriver, suddenly got into uh, Luffield and nearly lost it. Now, I wonder if there's some fluid dump there. It looked like a line yeah. from the 14. It's come into the pits and it's all the way behind it. It's fluid. There's, there's too many cars for them to losing grip. For it to be related to the one car, it must be something on the track surface. Well, certainly, you could see the line going into the pit lane, and the, the car we're looking at, uh, it looked like it was spewing some stuff out there. There is another car off on the entry into uh, Brooklands as well. So whatever's gone on, it's clearly starting to affect a few. Yeah, that was the number seven that stopped at Brooklands. We've got the slippery surface flag basically showing everywhere now by the looks of it, because they're showing it down in towards Cops Corner, and I can't believe that's the only place. So the shuffled order is in the lead is number 117, Andrew Peach in second Colin place. Is number, Colin Peach, I'm sorry. Colin Peach in second place is number 50, Steve O. Tony Barber, number 77, is third. In fourth place is number 40, Tim Tudor. In fifth place is 26, Tom Stoughton. And sixth is 48, Andy Chittenden. Seventh is 82, one of the spinners, Ben Cater. Eighth is number one, Michael Gibbons. Ninth is number 88. Ninth, number 88 is... Oh, Peter, Will Peter Williams, Peter Williams. Uh, and in 10th place is number 34. Uh, number 34 being uh, uh, Roger Donnan. But that's probably changed again. So how long have we gone there for Drift? Five and a half minutes. So Gibbons was, is still losing places, so something's yes, not, drastically not, wrong with right. that car. He's, he's, it's not as if he's had a temporary glitch and be able to press on again. No. He's dropping down the order. But look at how he's really bunched up this lead battle. Is you've got second place Steve-O in the 50. Directly behind him is uh, Tony Barwell in 77. Direct, oh, Colin Peach has ran very wide coming down onto the start finish straight there, so it's clearly very slippy there. But there's second, third, fourth, fifth. So it's fifth all. place, 26 Stoughton is right there as well. Yeah, well, the leading group, therefore, is five cars, isn't it? Really, uh, spread over 1.9 seconds. But nonetheless, they're all very much in contention still with four and three quarter minutes to go. It just clearly is very, very slippy out there for them, yes. isn't it? They're, they're now side by side, 40 and 77. This is for third position overall in this race, and they're just about to split either side of the lead of the historics as well. <laughs> Amazing <laughs> sight as they come down the Wellington Strait and turn into Brooklyn as they're two, three abreast. Yeah, it might be slippy out there, but it's not stopping them, is it? <laughs> well, they're all worrying about where they're coming up to the next bit of slipperiness, I suppose. It will be very slippery as well. I've just had a quick word with Adrian Ridge. It's oil. Um, we, we don't know where from. We don't know whether it's a, a bl just a, a blown hose or a gasket or something like that. Um, but it, it is oil and it's very thick and very slippery because Adrian knows firsthand it was going all over his um, his left rear, which is arguably the most important one around Silverstone. Wow, so that explains that's why it's slippy out there. There's been a change in the overall historic lead as well. Shriver 37, who we saw Spin. come unstuck in the early come stages. Unstuck, yeah. Oh, and we've just had a bit of contact there by Tudor on uh, the 13 back marker of Mike Dodd. Um, so just a bit of a side swipe there as uh, the triple one. Grant Gibson's now up there with them as well. Yeah, is that legit? Yeah, that's, that's got... No, that's a lap behind. That's one of the, the, the last lapped cars. That's why that one is, but it's lapping the, 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 the other back marker. Um, but yes, sorry, change in the historics lead is that Shriver is ahead of 67 Gavin Wills now. So, yeah, that's backwards and forwards as our race leader is uh, now 
just about to come through. And in fact, it's Colin Peach is under growing pressure from Steve O again, I would suggest, although they were almost identical in uh, their lap times. And uh, Tony <coughs> Barwell, number 30, is not that far behind them either, is he? Absolutely, taking Tudor and Stoughton with them. So it is sort of five there in with a shout. Roger Donan there, we see on the camera, under huge pressure from the 88 car of Williams, the yellow and blue 88 car. And directly behind them is number 25, uh, is that Joshua Needham, isn't it? Yeah, yes. Joshua Needham, 25. So three of them there, that's for eighth, ninth, and 10th. Second and third in the DDB class for 34 and 88. So they are trying to make sure that they lock out that podium. So what are we down to now? Two minutes, 20 left to go. Colin Peach, there he is. There's our race leader, but look at the pressure. Steve-O, they suddenly change their racing style when they sniff a win, don't they? Well, absolutely, <laughs> it's, it's an extra incentive. the two leaders separated by six tenths of a second and with just under two minutes to go we've got time for at least two more laps the one they've started plus one more ben cater has recovered a place he's up into sixth place now ahead of andy chittenden just saw 73 ashley law making a lunge up and past the 25 car of joshua needham and have we lost michael gibbons uh, no, he's still circulating 19th place, so he's just nursing this one home. What's yeah. his lap times? 1 minute 15 compared to his best of a 58 flat. Yeah, so uh, well off his normal pace. He's just trying to make sure he brings some points home because he's, yeah. well, he's in the top 10 of the uh, Duratec A class at the moment. So less than a minute and a quarter to go. Colin Peach still leading away in the 117 car. Across the line he comes for the 19th time. Oh, two more laps. oh no, and into the pits has come Martin Waro. Now remember, that car was competing for the lead in the C class of the Historics. I think it almost took a side swipe, and I think he's got John Harmer down, his teammate, and the, the car sharer that's just sort of leaning over and having a chat to see what the issue is. So that's a significant car that's out as well. Uh, the number 26 car of Tom Stoughton is up into fourth place, managed to get ahead of the number 40, Timothy Tudor, last time round. So that, and that is second and third in class. And in fact, Barwell's leading that Duratec eight, yes. so that is a great battle there. So here comes Colin Peake, still the nose just twitching as they come into onto Brooklyn's his, and Lovefield. Onto his last lap. So he weighs about to his time. Yeah. He'll just... Squeeze another lap out of this. Well, he might prefer that he didn't have to squeeze another lap out of it, but he's got a reasonable cushion now. He's got uh, this is Peach over O, 1.9 seconds. Suddenly the, the lead has doubled. Well, you notice their lap times are back down to yeah. what they were before the, uh, the, the circuit got sprinkled uh, royally by fluid uh, or oil as we now know it actually was. Oh, and and uh, Steve-O, number 50, desperately diving up the inside of a back marker there, Clive Steeper, number 17, uh, who sits third in historic C. But uh, Steve-O was not hanging about, presumably knows, but he's under pressure now from Barwell. That's not for class positions, but it is overall. But Steve-O in the white and grey car just holding the, the, the edge. Got yellow flags at Brooklands. Yeah, I can't tell what that is. Ah, there is a car I'm seeing on the CCTV with smoke coming out of the back of it. We've got the leader then, Colin Peach, coming out of Wood Luffield and Woodcut and up to take the chequered flag. There it is. So Colin Peach wins in the end, reasonably comfortably from Steve O by 2.741 seconds. Steve O in car number 15, second place in third place, Tony Barwell, number 77. Fourth place, Tom Stoughton. Fifth place, that's number 26. Fifth place, number 40, Tim Tudor. Sixth place, having been up to the for the lead early on in the race, number 82, Ben Cater. In seventh place, number 48, Andy Chittenden. In eighth place, number 34, Roger Donnan in ninth place, 88 Peter Williams. 
and in 10th place, number 73, Ash Law. Now, Colin Peach, I think it showed that they hadn't shown a chequered flag on TSL, and I oh. think they did actually miss him because he's just had to go again and he's now celebrating, but he had already won it a lap earlier. There was definitely a flag for, for him for, for him previously. But he didn't show it on the TSL screen, so he kept going, but uh, he has seen it this time round, so he might just sort of make sure that he knows, don't go missing the flag. He's a, a, an arts instructor at Thruxton as well as Colin Peach. Oh, OK. So, yes. Uh, knows how to uh, to pedal a car and he's done a great job there and I'm sure after that frustration Colin Peach will be absolutely ecstatic takes the victory 21 laps completed in total Steve O comes home in second place just ahead of Tony Barwell Tony Barwell winning his uh, Duratec A class Steve O won his Duratec uh, DB class as well Fourth, Tom Stoughton, great fight through there, through the order. Fifth, Timothy Tudor, Ben Cater, after that spin, comes home in sixth place. He'll be frustrated. He was one of the early spinners on that oil. Andy Chitterton in seventh, Roger Donnan in eighth place, Peter Williams ninth, tenth was Ashley Law. Eleventh, Josh Needham, Clive Hayes in twelfth place, Grant Gibson, John Eiley, Bryn Tootle. Good to see they got that car back out after the problems earlier. William Shriver, you predicted it. He won the historic fight <laughs> in 16th overall, but he won historic just ahead of Gavin Wills. Andrew Butler, Rolo Tomasi, Peter Needham in 20th place. 21st, Rafe Higson, Michael Gibbons just about bought his MCR from comfortably in the lead, struggled back to 22nd. Mike Fry, Mike Dodd, Clive Steeper, David Muse, Mark Hobbs, Mark Noiro in the pits, and everyone below that was also a non-finisher. And I think we can hear that Jack's down in the pit lane with hopefully some happy but probably bemused drivers. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out exactly who we've got. So obviously we've got, I think, winners from all the classes. I'm just trying to... 117 will be with you shortly because he took the chequered flag twice. There he comes. Got it. Okay, it's 37 is there. You've got Tony Barwell. I do. I'm just nipping through all of the numbers on TSL to make sure I know exactly who it is that I've got. I've got car number 45 down here as well, which, oh, there we go. We've got that car there. Perfect. All right, let's try and grab a word with a couple of our drivers. You can see here we've got a driver of car number 77. That is Tony Barwell. You might need to correct me unless it's James in the car. We'll just to try and get him to turn around. We'll grab, we'll grab a quick word. Sorry, he's so. Um, it seemed like it, it got rather scrappy towards the end. Obviously, there was a bit of fluid on the circuit, but it, it all seemed to go your way. Uh, yeah, I mean, it felt hard work from start to finish. Um, it was very tough keeping up at Gavin at the start and um, made some right moves around cars coming. To, we were lapping cars, they were coming past. Managed to stay with him, and then when the oil came out, you know, all bets were off and just kept concentrating and kept pressing on. And in terms of traffic as well, was that slowly starting to, to become an issue at any point throughout the race? Well, I think the thing is, we're so close pace-wise that any slight advantage, a yellow flag at the right time, a back marker at the right time, anything like that can just give you that bit of time to latch onto the back and try and make a pass. Great stuff. Cheers, Tony. Congratulations. We will try and grab a word with somebody else. We do have Gavin Wills here. Uh, Gavin, you, I mean, bad to say, smile on your face. That seemed to go all right, didn't it? Yeah, no, I'm delighted with that. Uh, it's been 16 years out of the car. Uh, yesterday was the first time I drove it, so I'm, yeah, absolutely delighted. And a win in historic, A. Eh? What a way to come back into motorsport, eh? <laughs> well, I mean, it was just great. It was great to have a nice race with, uh, you know, with the other guys and, and be at the sharp end, so, yeah, brilliant. Great stuff. Congratulations. We've got another couple of drivers further down behind me, so we will try and pick out exactly who it is that we've got by the looks of it in front of me here. We've got Colin Peach. We do have Colin. Um, an extra lap towards the end. Was it just that the flag didn't come out? It popped up on TSL that maybe you hadn't taken it. So I didn't even know what was going on. I didn't know what position I was in or anything like that. So, um, yeah. Well, I mean, you didn't just win your class. You won the race overall as well. Yeah, so. yeah I was like blown away. We worked so hard overnight building the car, getting it ready for today. It's like, <laughs> I don't know what to say, really. It's, it's an old car. It's 20 odd years old. So it's, it's great to be battling with the fast cars at the front. So. And you get to do it all again later on this afternoon. That's going to be something you're looking forward to. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Great stuff. Congratulations, Colin. And then I think uh, we also have, uh, is it Steve-O? It is. We've got Steve with you uh, or with us. Um, throughout that race, we saw we saw bits of you and we, we saw you carving through traffic, but you had to work for it, didn't you? I certainly did, yeah. It was, it was tough with that one. And the oil everywhere. Um, it's a good job I've been in Formula V for 20 years. 
um, dealing with oil all the time. So it's yeah, it was really good, uh, great race. I thought I got a chance on Colin. I didn't realise I was it had been for first place actually. I thought it was going for second, but uh, yeah, great race. Anything you're going to change for, for the race later on this afternoon? I don't think so, no. No, I think it's running pretty well. <laughs> great, stuff. great stuff. Good to hear from you, Steve. Um, and I think we've got one more driver over my uh, right shoulder. We'll try and pick out exactly who that is. I'm trying to find them on the entry list. And I can't quite pick them up. It's Needham, I think we've got here. We'll grab a, a, qu a quick word. Um, so throughout that race, it, it seemed like it was full of pretty much everything. There was a bit of traffic, there was oil down, and it must have been a busy job, Steve. Yeah, it was quite a, a fraught race, really. At the start, two or three laps, and there's everybody sort of getting a bit close, and we were all racing fairly hard. And then the oil made it very difficult. And uh, But it, it was enjoyable, except I haven't been in car for 18 months, and that was the first time in it, and there were a lot to do in the first, oh, first race back. I'll tell you what, Peter, what a return into <laughs> back into cars as well. It must, have been, it must have been hard work. By the looks of it, you need to lie down, but you've got to do it all again later on today. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure I'm keen on this three-race format. Two, three, well, qualifying and two races in one day is a bit too much for me. But we'll see what we can do. <laughs> you watch by the end of the day. We'll have to try and drag you, <laughs> drag you out of the car. But I think that's all we've got uh, uh, down here. So back up to you two as we've got another race on the way. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Jack. That was brilliant to hear. There was uh, a few uh, exasperated, exhausted drivers, but uh, they're, they're pleased to be back racing again for this season. Pleased to see that there is uh, plenty of people up in the, uh, the, the, the BRDC grandstand, as we can see you on the images right now. And... Uh, Basking in a little bit of sunshine there, Ian. Mm, yes, so it turned out to be a very pleasant day. Yeah, it, it really has. It will wait because I'm down in the pit lane tomorrow, so it will be all changed tomorrow. Oh, is that you, Jack? Oh. No, Formula Ford car is coming out. Unless it's Jack's impersonation of no, the I, I just I think he might still have his mic open there, yeah, but right. uh, thankfully it's not an issue. Yeah, I mean, we're now going to go Formula Ford race in the United Formula Ford. And, of course, it does include for the second race today the Jim Wolf, uh, Walsh Trophy, mm. uh, supported by Val Adaway as well. Uh, Formula Services fame. She's uh, been a lady involved in various aspects of motor, motor racing administration for a very long time but we better give you the grid as the cars are coming down to it now if you have a digital program page eight is where the cars are listed there are one or two changes number 12 pablo jeckier is actually running as number 21 number 21 alex ames is running as 29 and we have an addition in the person of number 52 jeremy fairburn fairburn f-a-i-r-b-a-i-r-n jeremy fairburn from the usa uh, and also previous competitor in the Walter hayes trophy the uh, grid will line up on a one-by-one one basis. One-by-one one for Formula Ford. You used to have 4-3-4 here in Formula Ford. Really? Day. Oh, yeah, 4-3-4. Wow. Four. Um, anyway, 26, Jason Smythe is Oz Smith is on pole position. His uh, dad, Neville Smith. Uh, Neville Smith uh, won 1 1.704 his time. And at the front of the grid on the one-by-one one basis, with him is number 59, Jason Pribill. 26 and 59, first and second. Third is number 40, uh, Andrew Rackstraw. And fourth, number 88, Morgan Quinn. 40 and 88, third and fourth. Fifth is 154, Lewis Fox. And sixth is 29, Alex Ames. 154 and 29, fifth and sixth. Seventh is 32, Isaac Canto de Silva. And eighth is number 20, Charlie Mann. 32 and 20, seventh and eighth. Ninth is 21, Pablo Jecchier. And tenth, number 82, Ben Cox. 21 and 82, ninth and tenth. Eleventh, 52, Jeremy Fairbairn. And number eight, Nigel Dolan is twelfth. 52 and eight. 11th and 12th, 13th is 17, Klaus Dieter Heckel, and 14th, number 5, Adam Fathers, 17 and 5, 13th and 14th, 15th is 72, Tom Radburn, and 16th, number 11, James Harridge, 72 and 11, 15th and 16th, 17th is number 13, Stuart Kestenbaum, and 18th, number 50, Dave Porter, David Porter, 13 and 50, 17th and 18th, 19th is number 14, Gerhard Hausschulter, and 20th is number 77, Chris Sharples. 14 and 77, 19th and 20th. 21st, number 4, Mark Atkins. And 22nd, number 19, who didn't actually get into the qualifying session because of car problems, but has done enough laps to be allowed to start the race from the back of the grid, albeit number 19, Innis Hickman. 4 and 19 complete the grid, which is now making its way around on its formation lap. Uh, the circuit will be familiar to those drivers who raced in the Walter Hayes Trophy at the end of last year. 
the Silverstone National Circuit. Uh, a driver finished third in that is the South African Andrew Rackstraw, starting third on the grid. But Jason Smith, his dad was very quick over the years, Noel Smith in coming over from uh, Ireland to race in the Walter Hayes Trophy. Uh, was certainly on the podium, I think he may have won it more than once. And uh, Jason now looking to do the same. Uh, and uh, Jason, we've got two Jasons, that's making it easy, isn't it? Two <laughs> Jasons on the front row. Uh, I'll get it right for a little 59 while. 59 Jason Pribble, that's right. With Andrew Rackstraw, the South African third, another Irish driver, number 88, Morgan Quinn is fourth, fifth is the first uh, British driver on the grid, number 154, Lewis Fox, and sixth is 29, Alex Ames, a driver well able to uh, win this one as well. And of course, one of the, the delights of Formula Ford, it's not a single make category. You can have uh, a great variety of makes, and the cars are still unbelievably being made today. So you've got some fairly late model uh, cars, well, 2013, Van Diemen JL13 and Pablo Jequier. Uh We've got 2014 Ray GR14 of Lewis Fox. We've got a GR20 somewhere. Charlie Mann, yeah, the Ray GR20. Uh, so they're still being turned out. They're powered by different engines, some by the original Kent engine, others by the Juratec engine, others by the Ctech engine. I don't think we have any Ctechs now. They're the 16, the 1800s, the 1600s on the grid and the grid looks to be complete the last car Chris Sharples Paliso which I remember him telling me years ago he bought as a birthday present for himself when he reached the age of 50 yes that's right he's over 50 now uh, so waiting for the red lights on they go out now off goes the grid towards Cops Corner and I think that from pole position, Jason Smith has the advantage. Yes, he turns it, but challenged on the inside there, I think, by Jason Priville, who's not raced a Formula Ford car before. So this is going to be a complete new experience. Qualifying, he turned to his advantage by getting on the front of the grid. Can he turn this into a, a race where he leads? But he's got, got the lace racing experience, I don't suppose. But as they turn through Beckett for the first time, it, it is pole position man Jason Smith in the lead, but he's got five cars ganging up on him as they go down the Wellington Strait for the first time, Chris. Yeah, I mean, that was back and forth where the challenge was going to come from, and it's now a challenge for the lead again from Jason Pribble. The American driver looks so good in qualifying, but he's then under pressure from Andrew Rackstraw as they turn left at Brooklands. Just about fends that off, and it is the uh, Rackstraw car that sits there. The sort of white car with the blue flashes on it tells us it's him. Small gap then, though. Even though he was under pressure from the 88 car of Morgan Quinn for a little while, Quinn's having to have his hands full with a, a whole load of fights behind. Some lovely uh, famous liveries on some of these yes. cars as well, isn't there? Absolutely. So the order is, as you called it, to get down to ninth place, number 52, Jeremy Fairbairn, up a couple of places from where he was on the grid. So... The, it's very much grid order, not entirely, but mainly. Uh, Quinn fourth, uh, fifth is Fox, sixth is Ames, De Silva is seventh, eighth, and and. Rackstraw's got himself up and passed as they got down to Maggots. He dived up to the inside of the grey 59 car of Pribble, and he got that nice and cleanly done. Fair play to Pribble, though. He saw that one coming. He wasn't going to shut the door too late, and so he sits there able to fight back. This is great news for Smith because it's enabled him to gap ever so slightly. Not that lasts for long, but so many challenges still happening further down as they go to turn left at Brooklands, the right-hander of Luffield, and if anything, it is still the challenge on for that second place, but Rackstraw which was one that you said to keep an eye on because he went well at the Walter Hayes at the end of last calendar year. Well, he's picked it back up again, up into second. And now the uh, front row start in Pribble is under huge pressure from Morgan Quinn, the 88 car, as they went flashing past our box, down towards Cops Corner they go. Uh, but Rackstraw, he's now got to try and reel in the 26 leader of Smith, who hasn't really got enough of a lead yet, no. has he, to relax? No, it's uh, absolutely classic. It's uh, the, the, the difference between this and the Walter Hayes is that the sun shines. Yeah, and it's not freezing. And it's not freezing oh. cold. And a challenge there for the lead, but it wasn't quite successful. So it is still just uh, in the lead, Smith from Rackstraw. But Rackstraw certainly a man on the move. He gave the impression, I think, when Jack spoke to him this morning, that he was keeping a little bit uh, in hand. He was happy with the way things had gone in qualifying, even if he wasn't on pole position. He's now going to try and challenge for the lead. Is he succeeding in doing so? Runs a bit wide there. 
but the, the, he briefly had his nose in front, but I think he's dropped out a second again as they come up to complete the lap. Yes, Chris. And I was going to say it's that age-old thing, darn if you do, darn if you don't, because suddenly that has enabled the chasing pair to close in on them, yeah. and it becomes four for the lead again. But look at that, ra Jack Straw, <laughs> Rack Straw. Jack ja <laughs> Straw. Yeah. It's just why two Former words instead secretary. of one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rack Straw is now uh, under huge pressure from Pribble, but, but was ghosting our leader, Smith, the whole way down the start-finish straight. But this is classic row. Oh, there he goes for the inside line, goes for the outside line, I mean, and does he get it as they go through Beckett? No, he's still uh, in the lead then is Smith from Rackstraw with, uh, in in third place, it's uh, Pryle Pribble. and Pribble. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and Quinn is all over the back of him, isn't he? I mean, but then look at the four that are chasing them. Oh, now there's contact and contact back again. So uh -oh. the front two, and I think that was uh, a mixture of the fact that uh, I believe that Raxtral just lost it slightly as he turned left at uh, Brooklands. And I think he's creeping into the pits as well, sadly. And uh, of course, there was nowhere for Smith to go. Made contact with him, and I think he's stuck. He is indeed still stuck on the exit of Brooklands before they get to uh, the right-hander of Luffield. And uh, oh Raxraw's trying to come into the pit lane as well. So that's suddenly our lead two out. Pribble, Pribble is in the lead with Ames alongside him. Also into the pits has come the number 11 car of James Harridge. So an issue for James Harridge as well. We as may have a safety car, huh? Oh, yeah, we're getting the safety car. Yeah, because it's, it's just stranded uh, yeah. there in the middle. There's nowhere for Smith to go, I'm afraid. Which, again, is one of those risks of Formula Ford racing, of, of open wheel racing in general, isn't it? Well, I think, yes, you have closed wheels and they can make contact with each other. But I uh, thought there was two cars there. I did wonder. That's Quinn as well. So that's that explains it. The 88 car of Morgan yes. Quinn was collected by the collected car. Yes, so the top three have in one fell swoop fallen out of the race. Yep, it, it is. And, and I think it was... Uh, you know, it's called an accident for a reason, and it looked like it was just one of those situations, to be honest. From yeah, you can't be dishing out blame for that, really. No. Describe the sequence of events. So Alex Ames has come through into second place, and Lewis Fox is third, uh, and in fourth place is Isaac, Isaac Canto to Silva. In fifth place is uh, number 20, Charlie Mann. And then in seventh place, we have... Number 40, Charlie Mann, I've said. Who's after Charlie Mann? Jeremy Fairburn. That's right. The uh, extra number 52, Jeremy Fairburn. Uh, and behind him is 82, Ben Cox. But now everybody's got to slow down, of course, behind the safety car. Uh, we've still got plenty of time left in the race. 13 and a half minutes just over to go. But uh, the lead in the hands of Jason Pribill. And in second place, Alex Ames. So it's still wide open, if not between the original drivers we expected to see. They're so tangled that it's difficult to tell that it's definitely two cars, isn't it? Well, I had a we feeling so, it we was, saw two drivers and they weren't they just were. from one car. No, they, we they, <laughs> That, that's deemed as cheating, I hear. Well, have more than one driver yeah, in the exactly. car, I think, yes, yeah, heading away. Um, <laughs> cool, so. that's uh, has taken a chunk out of the side of that car, hasn't it, sadly? Uh, so they're going to have to untangle those and then get them out of harm's way. Uh, of course, it's worth pointing out the, uh, the 29 car of uh, Alex Ames, as well as second overall, means that he is leading the, uh, the heritage class as well. So Pribble's in the star class, Her uh, Ames is uh, the heritage. And it's by a long way because the next heritage class car is down in 11th, and that's the number 17 car of Klaus Dieter Heckel. So Alex Ames is doing a cracking job. In fairness, he races a lot of a lot of historics, really, yes. normally, isn't he? Um, yep. And his dad's one of the uh, the racing instructors at Castle Coombe, which I enjoy hosting the racing school there. Yeah. And he's, uh, he's very, very proud of, uh, of his lad's race, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's here somewhere today. Good to see him still sort of jump into something like a Formula Ford, isn't yes. it? There's Chris Sharples. That's a beautiful car, isn't it? It really is. It reminds me of the kind of cars that were on my granddad's uh, Scale Electric back in the day. It's got that kind of shape to it.
designed by Len Wimhurst, uh, and spon Palliser was Hugh Dibley, who was a well-known sports car driver of the 1960s and uh, airline pilot for BOAC, British Overseas Airways Corporation, for those who... Oh, know, wow. Uh, before it became British Airways. Uh, and uh, Hugh Dibley. There's a book that's just been published, the uh, autobiography of Bob Evans, who won the Formula 5000 Championship in his early days in Formula Ford were in a works palliser. Anyway, at the moment, it's not so much the palliser on our screens as the marshals working away to try and move that car that's come to grief and caused the uh, yeah, they've got safety car. One hoisted up by the looks of it, and I think that's Morgan Quinn's, and they did push the uh, pale blue and white 26 car of Jason Smith onto the grass, but it's kind of just ground out on the grass, I'm afraid. Now, that may well be that there's just enough damage that it could work on tarmac, but not once you get into the softer grass, or it is just so soft out there that it's just bogged down. Well, it's now on the recovery vehicle, so once the cars have streaked past in the queue behind the safety car, it should be possible to drive it away, and we can think about resuming racing now. It's still ten and three quarter minutes to go. Yeah, that's only Morgan Quinn's that's up, though. The other, uh, the Je Re um, Andrew Rackstraw cars, still in the middle of Luffield on the grass, and they're just trying to move it into a safer right. position as possible. Which I think they've nearly done. Again, the incredible Orange Army doing a, a fabulous job, as ever. I thank them very much for everything to enable us to go racing. Good news is on this one, we're only just about to tick into uh, to halfway through. Oh yeah, that's the other thing I was getting is Hickman sadly into the pits and whatever issue limited the running of that car in qualifying has limited its running in the race as well. Yes. But again, you know, these these are uh, some historic cars out there that uh, no spring chickens. I mean, Innes Hickman's is a is a 1989. Van Diemen, which I keep thinking isn't that old, and then you go, yes, it is. It's 2024 now. It's a lot. It's a lot. Whereas the 80s, 90s still feel like they weren't. Very That's long 35 ago. years ago. I know it's staggering. Yeah. I'm still not happy that I kind of go, yeah, I didn't. It wasn't that long ago I graduated university. It's like, yes, it was. It was 24 years ago. <laughs> I'm not happy. Yeah, the oldest car is, I think, the Palace I was talking about earlier, the uh, Chris Sharples car from the first period of uh, Formula Ford. Yeah, it was that 1969, wow. So, safety car lights are indeed off. So again, they've done a brilliant job to get the cars out of the way. Safety car now pulls away. Nine minutes still left on the clock as uh, the cars get themselves back in towards Brooklands and Alex Ames is doing a cracking job, just glued to the back of Pribble and slightly further ahead as well, possibly. He's looking ready to go as soon as he thinks that Jason Pribble's going to go. He's going to try and go with him. In fairness, the ones behind him are doing a rather good job as well, aren't they? They are. It's all a very goes. tightly packed bunch as they come through Woodcut and come across the line to resume racing. And we have eight and a half minutes on the clock. That was incredible because uh, Jason Pribble, I saw what he did uh, as uh, he, he was looking in his mirror. Alex Ames has been mugged by the cars mm, behind, but Jason has. Pribble just saw Alex Ames go to do a zig uh, and, uh, and that was the point that he dropped the hammer. So he left him there vulnerable to everybody. Still got the safety car board flashing on the start finish straight. So hopefully that won't confuse the drivers when they come back round in a moment. But it is a big old gaggle of cars for sort of second or third backwards as they come back down the Wellington straight and uh, Jason Pribble's just scampered off into the distance look, hasn't he? He's done a cracking job there Alex Ames has done well to hold on to that second with that gaggle behind him Yes, he may never have raced here before or raced Formula 4s before but he certainly knows how to drive a racing car well in a race uh, and so Pribble at the moment is looking pretty strong Alex Ames was under pressure there from the uh, blue 154 car of Lewis Fox, I think it was. Yes, it was indeed. Lewis Fox was looking very racy. Up two more places goes the 52 car, and that was the one that uh, uh, we didn't have down on the list. Jeremy Fairbairn started 11th, is now up into fourth place in that 52 car. So keep an eye out for the, uh, the red and white Jeremy Fairbairn. 
because it didn't look like his job was finished. Challenge for second place. Up goes uh, Fox and Lewis Fox jumps up into second. And it looks as though we've also got a challenge from the number 20 car of Mann trying to make a move on Fairbairn. So that's Charlie Mann, the red number 20, another uh, uh, hopeful young driver from memory in Charlie Mann. And uh, it really is do -si do your partner. So up into second goes Lewis Fox in 154. And there's contact behind. And the car in the middle with his hands already up in the air. Number 32, Isaac Canto de Silva, is just there going, what's going on? Because he's the sandwich between the car on the outside and the 21 car of Jekia just uh, uh, getting the blame for that one, I'm afraid. And you'll know that there is another car on the outside. The car on the outside is probably going to blame the 32 car, unaware that there was another car on the inside of him. And where that's happened, I just, uh, just yeah, no, uh, here. Yeah, yeah, can't leave them. Brooklyn's again, isn't it? At the end of a very fast straight, that is not six a good minutes place. on the clock. There's a few frustrated looks going around to a few of those drivers there. Yeah, that is in the firing line, I'm afraid to say. 52 Fairbairn there, under, still under some pretty big, big pressure. Alex Ames is ahead of him, so that means Fairbairn is third. No. Pribble, of course, if we forget, Pribble's scampered off into the distance. Fox in 154 is second. Down into the yellow flag zone they come. Alex Ames, the yellow 29 car in third place. Then it's Fairbairn under pressure from one of the Oldfield motorsport cars, I think. Yeah, number 82, which is uh, Ben Cox. Ben Cox. It, it was looking like a Tinder keg really wasn't it that gaggle that was for sort of yeah. third fourth backwards so who have we lost in that 32 Isaac Canto to silver uh, and 20 man and 21 Jekia so yeah Charlie man that was looking racy to silver and, it, and Jekia that was the one on the inside so that's the two South American drivers who've gone the Brazilian and the Colombian Boy, and Fairbairn's thrown it up the inside there is that down at uh, Maggots, isn't it? Yeah, so up past Alex Ames, so up into third place, but they're now going side by side by side because they go three wide down the Wellington Strait. One of them decides better of it. Of course, they're into the yellow flag zone, so they can't still be overtaken, so it has to go back into what a shame because that's, they were all uh, lined, right. weren't they? That's a proper overtaking opportunity which has been taken away from them. And we've got four and a half minutes. Seen on the screen there is Ben Cox, number 82, in third place. In, sorry, in sixth place, fifth place. It was my foxes and my coxes. <laughs> so through they go, and it is still Jason Fribble who leads up into second place. Has come number 154, Lewis Fox. And Jeremy Fairburn, from some way back on the grid, has come through into third place. Helped, of course, by the opposition eliminating itself in various ways. Alex Ames Red down flag. to fourth. Oh, dear. Red flag. Now, I think there's every chance... Uh, This'll be it. It, it, it. And it will be the uh, the Luffield incident where they're just not able to move those cars that yeah. are in the firing line. Still arriving pretty quick. The marshals are there trying to pick up the pieces. It's gravel on the outside, so there's not really somewhere else to be able to, uh, to move them. What did we get to? 80%. So yes. I'm I mean, four minutes is a reasonable amount of time, but 80%, I think they might call that, mightn't yeah. they? Yeah. I think they, that's why they let it run for another couple of laps. Get to that, yeah. get yeah. to that, and then you can uh, call that a race. Disappointed for the drivers, but they have another bite of the cherry this afternoon, later on, because they're not here tomorrow. The, and it's the, it's the, the later race will be for the Jim Walsh Trophy. And Jim is here to uh, present the trophy. So that does look like, uh, yeah, checkered flag has been given. So it is a victory, although it's completely changing it now because they've come in here at the, uh, a different order, but that really shouldn't be changing the, uh, the race order, yeah. of course. It will be a victory for uh, Pribble, the number 59 car. We just need the uh, TSL to refresh itself to make sure that we get uh, the order in the correct in the way it should be so I'm hoping that they're, they're going to make it right because at the moment it's showing Fox, Fairborn and Cox which and Pribble dropping down through the order which is not the case 
at all. He just missed the uh, the entrance and had to sort of duck in a little bit later than everyone else. So as they're in the pits crossing the line, it's still registering them. So it'll update shortly, presumably. So that that you see on the side is not what is going to be the uh, the final results. We think not. That's Jason right. Jason Pribble will have taken that victory. That is just TSL sort of updated as they came into the uh, uh, the pit lane at that point. And of course, red flags always go back a lap as well, don't they? Um, so it will be a victory for Jason Pribble. But I can't remember beyond that, if I'm honest. I think it was Lewis Fox. So, so Jack, it's a question of... Uh, Take your pick, really, because we've got two results here. And they need to just work out and go back because that third place is going to be I an issue. Yeah. Another, another lap, I would have had a go. <laughs> I'm down here with James Beckett, and he's asking me, and I'm asking him. And I don't think many of us really know exactly yeah, which no. order they're going to. It will be. The here we go. It's done now. Right. 59. Pribble takes the victory. Second is 154. Fox. Third is number 29. Alex Ames, which wins the Heritage as well. And if you wanted fourth, which is third in the uh, Star Class, that's Fairbairn. So that's the four cars you've got there. So Pribble, Fox, Ames, and Jeremy Fairbairn. Right, right on the screen there. Okay. Perfect. So I've got Ben Cox down here as well i can see we've got alex ames we've got jeremy fairben unfortunately i don't think we've got jason pribble we do have the 154 of lewis fox so we'll we'll wander over and grab a quick word with with lewis i'd imagine lewis is around here have we got lewis here here we go um so lewis that's p2 yeah. i don't know whether it was aided by sort of w what was going on out on circuit at the moment yeah. but you, you were doing something right because you you came out of it in p2 yeah i'd say so um we were kind of in a good position but obviously the little accident there helped us a bit and then the late red flag has probably helped us a bit more but I think we were catching the leader so yeah not too bad really and of course you've still got another race to go is there anything you, you're going to change because in theory you're starting on the front foot now uh, no we'll carry on as we are I think might put some tyres on it maybe or something I don't know <laughs> yeah be alright great <laughs> great stuff congratulations on P2 if we spin around we do have Ben Cox here we'll grab a quick word with uh, with Ben um, Ben obviously you've been racing these for what two years two and a half years now almost three I would imagine this is the start of the third season for me so yeah start of the third season you know what you're doing you've, you've got to be pretty happy with how race one has gone you've still got race two to go but you started the day right yeah it's mainly surviving chaos I think that's first part get through a race weekend to make sure you get to the end of the race first to finish first you, you have to finish first um, yeah, it's a bit tactical moves, trying to get myself out of trouble and come over with pink five from 10th on the grid. So I can't complain too much about that. Well, if you do the same again, you'll be looking all right for race two, right? <laughs> well, I'd like to do that. I'd, I'd, that'd, be, that'd be a great idea. <laughs> great stuff. Congratulations. Uh, best of luck for the rest of the weekend. I'm going to have to spin that way because I think we've got another driver over here. We've got to try and pick out exactly who this is. Do we have Jeremy or do we have Alex? Alex. We've got Alex. Um, obviously, a number change at the start of the week had left us wondering um, yeah, earlier on this morning. I was 21, and then uh, I got changed to 29. So uh, there was a little bit of confusion this morning, which, never mind, it's all good. Um, yeah, I managed to do a reasonably good time without a toe, and then managed to have a good good battle with the Dolan cars that gave me a good pull along. So for an old car, she's doing pretty pretty well, to be honest. Um, first weekends on different tyres that run from the historic tyre to the more modern tyre actually gives it a lot more turn in things, so it was good. But the race was made a good start, had a bit of a sat there just thinking, well, I can sit here just about. And uh, then there was a bit of a clash coming together, and I was like... Oh, okay, I can I can get around this one, and, and then suddenly I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm in <laughs> second. Like this is this is amazing. Um, I just need to stay here. Um, but yeah, that was uh, whew, <laughs> a little slippery as well. There's some oil and things that were down uh, through Luffield, so it's choosing your lines and trying to not let everybody else get the run on you. So le don't leave the door open, but le like yeah, try and get the max maximum exit. So yeah, very very happy. Yeah. Great stuff. Best of luck for the rest of the weekend. Um, great answer there for Alex. I, I asked him. I asked him about the number change, and we got all of that. So great to hear from uh, from our top four in the United Formula Four Championship. Back up to you two. Thank you very much for that, Jack. Yeah, sadly, is that uh, obviously the, uh, the, the 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 officials, the marshals down there, are just going to have TSL, aren't they, to see the order that was, and that was jumbled at that point. So uh, we. With everything that went on in that race, it must have been very busy behind the wheel. I mean, what an introduction to a full season of United Formula Ford. Yeah, oh yeah. It's um, it's certainly something. I mean, this was my first standing start. I actually hadn't gotten any practice standing starts, and it turned out to be a really, really good start. 
So I was happy with that. And then uh, my dash started going a little crazy too. So something got disconnected there. I haven't talked to my team about that yet, but I had lights going, but the numbers just didn't make sense. So I just kept going and didn't blow the engine. So <laughs> at least we're good for this race. But yeah, it was a busy race and awesome. Great stuff. Uh, best of luck for the rest of, uh, of the weekend. Uh, back up to you two for the second time. Well done, Jack. That was brilliant. I'm glad that we got to hear from the winner then with that uh, American uh, accent. And, and like I was, was, in, was about to say, in, is that you picked him out as someone mm. to, to keep an eye on, didn't you, at the beginning? And, and he's delivered. I know there was the incident at the beginning, but he was always going to be always, in there. He was up there, yeah. yeah. Right, we've got a, our only rolling start uh, of the weekend. will come today. In, I haven't quite finished the sentence. I'm oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> the only rolling start races will be the uh, Bernie's V8s and Historic Outlaws races. Uh, and that means pole position moved to the left-hand side of the track uh, rather than the right-hand side of the track. Uh, how long have you got the to KAs, explain why that is? That's why I said what I said. The KAs, oh, KAs are rolling as well. Yes, yeah. they are. <laughs> uh, tomorrow. A, a little bit different in noise, though. Quite different. <laughs> Noise, sound, shape, everything. Uh, yes. Uh, right, do you want to do the grid? Uh, yep, we will do. So it's a big one. I'm going to take a bit of a run up. We've got 24 cars that are due to be out on this uh, Bernie's V8s and historic outlaws. And it's just an eclectic mix that, that sort of changes up over the course of a season uh, as, as they sort of add a few more here and there. But it will be lining up as follows. On the front row, it's the TVR Tuscan 177 of Stuart Robb. And against the Corvette, the Chevrolet Corvette, uh, number 11, Gary Lapidus. Second row, the Corvette, number 90, Chris Tilly. And triple nine, Sam Every in that beautiful gold, sort of metallic gold uh, Chevrolet Corvette. Third row is number 80, Matthew Smith in the multicolored TVR Camara. And a TVR Tuscan, number 56, Matt Holborn, alongside him. Jack, are you needing to come in again? I, I am. We've got the uh, United Formula Ford uh, podium here. Um, so we've got uh, already, by the looks of it, yeah, we've got um, uh, trophies and bits. We've got Val Alloway, um, obviously, providing the trophies as well. So in third place, we've got car number 21, Alex Ames. 29. 29 now. <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> So Alex Ames up onto the podium, handed his trophy over the moon with that. Um, second overall driver of car number 154 in his ray, it's Lewis Box. So again, Lewis just up onto the podium, trophy being presented. And even after a little bit of confusion, onto the top step of the podium after his first standing start, Jason Pribble. So as they all jump up onto the podium, they've got trophies in hand, I think. Yeah, so Val just providing the trophies, quick shake of the hand, and then it'll be over to the drivers to get all up onto the top step, get uh, let the media get their photos. And I'm guessing with maybe still a race to go, I don't think uh, Jason will be popping the cork on, uh, on his champagne. So yeah, drivers with trophies in hand. That was the podium for the uh, Jim Walls trophy for United Formula Ford, supported by Val Appway. Of course, Val providing the trophies there. And of course, we've got the Jim Walls trophy later on this afternoon, haven't we, guys? Uh, yes, we do. The, uh, uh, the James Beckett there, who does so much work for everything Formula Ford, uh, that uh, classes Jim Walsh as his motorsport hero, and uh, completely fitting that it's then the... Uh, the Jim Walsh Trophy, well, I'm sure that uh, Ian Tinsworth will talk more about that because it's very much up, right up his Straza is, uh, is that one when we get to the second race, the Formula Fours, because it will be uh, a struggle to, to, to stop him with uh, remembering fondly those days of Jim Walsh racing the Formula Fords. Right, so in terms of the Bernie's V8s and historic outlaws, the... Um, they just sort of finished the, the, the clean-up of the Formula Fords, and I think we're largely there. So we hopefully we'll see coming around soon will be the uh, the grid will be released from the assembly area, come round, and uh, it should sit, be a standstill to start with. Then they'll go behind the safety car that you see on your screen there, beneath the uh, Silverstone gantry. That will lead them round on their green flag lap, dart out of the way, and it will be a rolling start for the 20-minute race for the uh, Bernie's V8s. They've got one today and one tomorrow. 
and uh, for this first race I will start again because then we keep it all together for the Bernie's V8s the grid will be lining up as follows 177 Stuart Rob on pole position in his uh, grey TVR Tuscan with Gary Lapidus in 11 the Chevrolet Corvette row 2 number 90 Chris Tilly in his Corvette and the 999 Corvette of Sam Every alongside him. Third row, number 80, the multicolored TVR Camara and 56 Matt Holborn, who did have some issues in the qualifying earlier, sort of disappeared out of our sight. So hopefully that car is okay for this race. Row four is 427 Darren Smith in another TVR Tuscan. Alongside him is number 87, the MGB uh, GT V8 of Peter Samuels. Fifth row, 58 Clive Letherby in a TVR and 33 Kevin Borland in a Chevrolet NASCAR. Row six, 761 the TVR uh, Tuscan challenge car of Guy Carter and the Camara 99 Stephen Wiggins. Row seven, number 16 Chad Donner in the Mustang Boss and 83 Phil Walker in his MGB. Row eight, number 27, Martin Reynolds, the Mustang that kept making that shooting noise anywhere, anytime it was anywhere near Jack Werrell down in the pit lane. Alongside him will be the wonderfully large Plymouth Barracuda, or Plymouth Cuda as they call it, number 48, Matt Snowball. Row nine, 77, Tim Brook and 151, Jason Andrews. 302, Simon Roos and 575, Bruce Carter on row 10. Row 11 sees 47 Grant Thompson and 74 Peter Carter. And then on the 12th and final row, number 6 Bradley Jones Chapman and 25 Bill Thompson. So that is this uh, fantastic 24 car grid as we see them making their way round now. I mean, it is just an incredible sight, sound, and in this commentary box, feeling, I would say, as well as they rumble past us, Ian. Well, yes, it's the nearest you get to how Formula 5000 used to be, which was single-seaters yeah. rather than touring cars, but they had, uh, uh, but used to have the uh, full grid and there was no silencing on the cars in those days, and uh, the, the world did tremble around you. Uh, but these uh, cars make a fabulous sight. It's uh, great the effort that's been put into this by uh, Bernie Kodosh and his sons uh, into building this up. I can remember in its earliest days, it didn't get terribly strong support. Some of the cars were rather scruffy, but you won't see a single scruffy car on the grid these days. Uh, and they make superb sounds from... No V12s allowed here, so you don't get a Ferrari or two. <laughs> um, they're all V8s or one or two four-cylinder cars like... Uh, the, well, the Porsche 911 actually is a non-start of Rob Holliman's car. Uh, we haven't got a V8 Porsche in the uh, 911 shape. We could have a V8 Porsche, of course, the 928. Right, the last car coming into position. They'll then set off on a parade lap behind the pace car. And then that'll peel off at Luffield and the cars in good order will maintain their order until they get to the, the green light goes on as they come across the start line but that's at the end of the lap they're about to begin well stuart rob was pretty dominant in qualifying his best lap to one minute 2.316 gary lapidus number 11 in the chevrolet corvette from 1973 he did a one minute 4.778 so there's quite a gap between Stuart and the rest uh, and Stuart has come to rob the Brits I suppose isn't it <laughs> Scottish driver uh, but certainly he was very much in control of things I mean, he's, got, he's got TVR Tuscan like quite a few other drivers have we were saying earlier on about how good it is to see the uh, TVR Tuscans out in good numbers not as many as we used to see in the TVR Tuscan challenge but uh, nonetheless, there's a good handful of them. Uh, and then the American Iron, and then the, the British cars as well, the MGB GTV8 and the TVR Chimeras in class GB. I love the fact that the 33 car we were just seeing, you can see it sort of there going down the Wellington Strait. It is a Chevrolet NASCAR. It's not an ASCAR. We used to have a few of the ASCARs out there, but it is actually a NASCAR out there racing which is, is brilliant of course those who don't know what I'm rabbiting on about the Ascar was a, a, a sort of a British variant of it I think is the best way when yeah. we were talking earlier weren't we about Rockingham 
that it was a shame that that's disappeared. And of course, that, that was a championship particularly aimed at that circuit, wasn't it, really? Yeah, there's a fascinating fact about NAS NASCAR, which has, has its origins in immediate post war, about 1950. Uh, perhaps it even goes back before the war, before World War II. Um, but it goes back a very long way, and then Ascar was a kind of British attempt to emulate it. Yeah. Right, safety car is uh, has peeled in already, so it means that uh, Stuart Robb has this field under control. Round they come. It's a fabulous car, that Chevrolet. It really is, and it's massive, isn't it? And yeah. Down they come. Red lights are on. They make their way most of the way down the straight with those red lights on before they're able to go. Different positions for the checker flag. Lights are off. There goes the rumble. And it just really does shake this commentary box as they go down to the first corner. And is it Stuart Robb? Yep, he's got that. He's kept the uh, Gary Lapidus Chevette just a uh, Corvette, sorry, behind Chevette. <laughs> Corvette behind him. And uh, it looks like Sam Every's got himself up into third place, is he there? Yes, because the uh, bright yellow Chris Tilly has dropped down a few places. No, actually, it's the multicolored Camara of Matthew Smith, number 80, that is up into third place now. But I don't think they're looking to win it on these first few corners, really, are they? Oh, and no. the golf livery, Matt Holborn, has got his car sorted and he's coming through the field. Yeah, uh, 999 is there. That's Sam Every, as you were mentioning, in the early, the 1959 Corvette. Uh, which is the old shaped Corvette going back into the 1950s, obviously. The car we're missing from this, or a type of car, is an AC Cobra. We could have got one of those in. It uh, mm. would have fitted in nicely as well. There's the number 90 Corvette, which uh, is looking very Le Mans, as you said this morning. That's Chris Tilly running in uh, Class HM. So they go then, and uh, in the lead, Stuart Robb. We can take that as red, I think, for the rest of the race. Just enjoy the way he extends that car. Second uh, is number 11, Gary Lapidus, with his Chevrolet Corvette. But at the moment, the camera concentrating on the mid-pack. There's the TVR number 25 of Bill Thompson in the red TVR Tuscan. Cars disappearing over the brow, up towards Maggots and Beckett's corners. Yeah, that Bill Thompson started right on the back row and has already, that red 25 car, got himself up into... 14th place from 24th on the grid, so 10 places made up into the pit. Sadly, it's Darren Smith 427, the blue TVR Tuscan. And uh, we look back and down, Gary Lapidus has lost a place there because the multicolored uh, TVR Camaro of Matthew Smith, number 80, has got past him up into second. And I was watching that Lapidus car as he accelerated up towards our commentary box, and the front end yes, gets really does, loose, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? That's right, yeah. Just the power as it just picks up that front oh, end. It's, it's, it's a wonderfully exciting car to watch. I'm sure it's even much more exciting to drive, but he was teetering on the brink there as he came out of Woodcut and uh, went over the... Uh, the fin start line, finish line being a bit further back, <laughs> uh, and uh, so through they go. It was only change of significance in the order. Yes, Tilly up into fifth place ahead of Samuels. Uh, go ahead of Samuels also gained up, gained a place and dropping back a couple of places. Sam Every in the Corvette number 999. Up a place there goes uh, Matt Holborn in the Golf Livery 56. Although once they get onto this straight, yeah. look at the power of Gary Lapidus. This, uh, Corvette is just a monster of a car, but now we get to the nimbly bits uh, and Holman's trying to come back. He's not managed to, so he's had uh, to slot back in again there. I was interested to see because Matt Holman we didn't see for many laps, did we, in qualifying? So I was right. wondering whether he might be able to challenge Stuart Robb, but not at the moment, especially where he's held up between, behind this tiny little car. <laughs> yes, he probably wants to take his time, having lost most of qualifying. He doesn't want to tangle with others having their own tussle. Oh, and the 90 car of Tilly, that's getting up to speed now. It kind of got dropped down through the order in the early stages. Yes. But it looks like that just needs a little while to get everything limbered up. And it looks yes. like it's back on the case now, doesn't it? Yes, in that, uh, it's, it's not a golf car. It's just in the, uh, probably because he likes the colours, as quite a lot of people do, the orange and blue, pale blue colours. And side by side through Beckett's, it's just number 90 in front. Chris Tilly of that battle that's going on for fourth place. And it wasn't, and then it back was again. That's what I say, Tilly in that uh, wonderful sort of Le Mans-esque version of the Corvette. It just Now he's got himself up to speed. He's going to start working his way back through this field. It did start third on this grid. He's now got himself back up into fourth place. His next target is the front row starting Gary Lapidus. Bit of a, an age difference between those uh, Chevrolet Corvettes, isn't there? Indeed. 
That's a beautiful car, it's, isn't it? This is a great looking car, the uh, 999. It's where yeah. you just look. If you look on the program, it says uh, number 90, Chris Tilly, Chevrolet Corvette. Number uh, 999, Sam Every, Chevrolet Corvette. Number 11, Chevrolet Corvette of Gary Lapidus. And you go, oh, they'll all be the same. They're not even remotely similar, are they? No. They really did change the design. They did not have a type, did they? <laughs> That's right. In, in a way, you could say a bit like Porsche, because they had very... I know the engine was always behind the drive from the Porsche, but there was a lot of different types of Porsche. Uh, and the, the Corvette followed a pattern for its first few years in the 1950s, like that car is. Then it changed substantially in uh, the 1960s. The Stingray appeared on the scene. Yeah, because that one we just saw then was the 302 car of Simon Roos. That was a, a lovely Ford Mustang, Mustang as well yes. to throw in. Then we're going to be having the Ford versus Chevrolet battle later this year at Brands Hatch. But uh, at the moment, we've just got a Chevrolet battle. And it is Gary Lapidus, number 11, just keeping number 90, Chris Tilly, ahead of him. But there is your race leader, the TVR Tuscan of Stuart Robb, number 177 just effortlessly, like you predicted, yeah. easing away from the rest of the field and now just patiently picking his way through the back markers, such is the situation when you're on the national circuit, is that it doesn't take long to catch up with some of the back markers, does it? No, he's uh, totally dominating the race. We've uh, still got 14 and a quarter minutes to go, and already his lead is approaching double figures. By the end of this lap, I think it will be in double figures. So yeah, agree. Stuart Robb with the fastest lap, obviously. Uh, I think it's fair to say that if those of us who remember the TBR Tuscan Challenge, uh, which was uh, riddled with good drivers, top-class drivers, we're seeing from Stuart Robb that level of performance that we used to see uh, from people like, well, Richard Hay, of course, did it of Hay Fisher fame. Uh, he, he used to do the challenge. Ben Samuelson, Martin Short, Jerry Marshall, Chris Hodgetts, Jeff Allen, uh, so lots of very good drivers. Steve Parrish, as I said, uh, when we were Well, yeah, he's a, he's a lorry driver, a motorcycle racer. I think he's more, yeah, he's, his success was on two wheels, wasn't it? But uh, uh, lorry driving success as well, but he, he did jump in this and have some fun. And, and that was the thing, I mean, these TVR Tusker Challenge, if I said to you earlier before we were streaming that for me, it, was, it still sticks in my mind as the yeah. number one championship for me to remember it, because it just grabbed your attention. They, they, they were really brutal to, to control. Yeah. Uh, Lapidus just tumbled back again there, and it looks like he was kind of half mugged, uh, Lapidus, sorry, uh, down to ninth as he went through last time. So there's a problem, sadly, with that car. Well, it, it probably wants to look after it as well. You don't want to start exchanging paint with no, that car, do you? But he lost six places on the last yeah. lap, and he's still gone tumbling down through the order a bit more yeah. now. But yeah, the, the Duskens, they, they, they were absolute animals to control, clearly, weren't they, with the yeah. power on them, whereas I can only assume when you watch them now, they, they've been modernised in some way because they, they, they look less raw to handle. I might be wrong, but it, it no, just don't look as... It's modern technology. Computers have done it, you see. Back yeah. in the days of the TBR Tuscan Challenge, yeah. computers didn't exist. No, exactly. How, how did... Uh, was it Peter Wheeler who was the owner of TBR for a while? And uh, the, the design of the bodywork was done by his dog. Really? Taking a bite out of the, the fiberglass, yes. <laughs> Well, so, so it was said, but uh, yeah. But then there's also people say TVR says tow vehicle required. So uh, well, it, <laughs> yes, it actually stands for Trevor. Trevor does uh, it. Uh, Tr Trevor was the uh, original um, man who founded TVR. Is it Russian owned now? Do I remember that? A, a, a Russian did buy it, but that was a few years ago now. Yeah, and I just uh, don't it, think it, it exists at all. Didn't, didn't really go to everywhere in his hands now. Yeah, it's a shame. Uh, it's some time before. Still, in fairness, uh, Lapidus did go down through the order somewhat, but it seems to be back up to some kind of speed, putting pressure on the 25 car, Bill Thompson. Again, remember, Bill Thompson in that uh, red TVR Tuscan didn't set a time in qualifying and started in 24th place and is up to 7th now. Oh, and Lapidus again, look, that, that just looked like he missed a gear or something there. He's not aimed towards the pit, so it, it just suddenly stalled out as he was coming through Luffield on him. Yes, yeah, so just going back to Bill Thompson, you were mentioning, number 25, up into... That was a silent Lapidus. Lapidus. Yes, yes. Uh, number 25 in seventh place. 
and his next target is the number 999 Corvette of uh, Sam Every. But carrying on over there, number 761. And down the pit lane comes, which one's that? That's uh, that's uh, the 575 Bruce Carter, I'm afraid, the Maverick. Was running down in 22nd place, I think, when he came in. Yeah. For Maverick. Stuart Robb's lead now is 16 seconds over Matt Smith, number 80, in the second place with his TVR Chimera. And in third place is the number 90 Chris Tilly with his Chevrolet Corvette. Well, he's now all over the back of the, uh, the number 80 car of Smith as they got down towards the right hand loop back down at Maggots uh, and, and back he's coming. And we also got Samuels moved up to fourth place ahead of Holman as well. So that's the MGB moving up a place to fourth. Jack? Yeah, there will be a part of the circuit where we won't see any changes, however, because it's uh, waved yellow flags at Cops Corner. Whatever's going on, I'm just being shot up by Martin it, Reynolds again. But It's just the uh, um, Lapidus is being pushed back down the pit right. lane towards you, in effect. You will see him appear, appear at some point with the marshals pushing him back. So, right, sadly, okay, that makes retirement. sense. Mechanical gremlin, I'm afraid to say. But yeah, good to see the uh, the GB class, the MGB GT of uh, Samuels, car number 87. So Peter Samuels, uh, the Tadworth driver, moving up through the order, up into fourth position now. And in fact, he's not only up there, he's pulled away from that golf livery, uh, golf-esque livery, uh, Holborn, number 56. So eight and three quarter minutes remain. Stuart Robb leads, 10 laps completed, and it'll soon be 11 completed by him. As the gap goes up now to 18, nearly 19 seconds, 18.9 seconds. How is Bill Thompson getting on? Has he gained any more places? Yes, he's now into sixth place, second in his class. Just watching, coming down the Wellington Strait. That looks like there's uh, an interesting fight between a pair of TVRs still raging there as well. Excuse me, there's, there's, sorry, there's Samuels and there's Holman. So that is um, fourth and fifth. The MGB that you can see firing up the uh, straight ahead of him there. So just about to turn right, that's the 87 car that is sat in a fourth position, just putting a lap on the 77 of Brook. I know he calls it a roadster in the entry, perhaps an MGB GT V8. It's certainly got a fixed head. The roadster is the open car. That's um, Peter Samuel's car. 16 on the screen is the Ford Mustang, Boss Mustang, 30, Boss 302 Mustang of Chad Donner, bringing back memories of uh, Steve McQueen, I would have thought, and Bullet. That, that Plymouth Cuda is just a monster of a it car, is, isn't it? it? And he's right behind Martin Reynolds in the uh, number 27 uh, uh, Ford Mustang as those two go charging down. And that's taken up a lot of that's track, a, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful <laughs> picture, that, though. Great image there uh, of 27, the other car, then Martin Reynolds with his Mustang. That was a brilliant camera shot. And it was showing, uh, they were showing uh, Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen how they can take that corner side by side. Uh, it does, it did, <laughs> it could, yes. And these are a lot bigger than those. <laughs> yeah. As it flashes past, can you make sense of all the sponsors' decals on the bodywork? No, I can't. I did pick out the word Mustang, which is uh, <laughs> relevant to the car. Uh, 22 seconds is Stuart Robb's lead now get Bill Thompson up another place. He's four seconds behind fifth placed number 56, Matt Holborn. So he may not do that in the time available. Well, it's six, six minutes, perhaps he, perhaps he could. Right, there is the number 48 Plymouth Cuda. 
past us. And, and it is important because those two are battling for third and fourth in the modified class, the M class. So one of them will get, uh, well, I don't know whether they actually get silverware for the uh, top three in class, but we would, I would assume so. Uh, and so by the 48 car of uh, Matt Snowball making a move past uh, Martin Reynolds is that he's now got himself a pot. I do think, you can accuse me of being biased, I do think that Silverstone National Circuit, or even the Grand Prix Circuit as well, lends itself to racing these sort of cars. Yeah. Take them to most circuits in the UK, and they're a bit too small, uh, but the space to express themselves. Yeah, I agree, because you get, you'll get throw in a lot of the, uh, the, the twiddly bits, wouldn't you? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I've seen them around the likes of Alton Park, uh, the Brands Hat Circuit, both of which we love dearly. But you're right, is it probably doesn't look quite as good as these where they can really stretch their legs stretch their legs and, and if they run wide occasionally they run wide occasionally but uh, they don't do it that often but you can just appreciate the cars yeah. in a more natural habitat for them whereas other cars are more suited or as suited to to park grand Hatch. I bet these would be a handful going down through the craners at Donington goodness me the weight yeah. transfer will yes. just be trying to take you into the next county. <laughs> Four minutes, 20 left to go. They get them set up brilliantly. I mean, despite the size of those cars, they're not leaning at all, are they? Uh, no, they are, as you say, set up well. And Stuart Robb's lead is now 23, over 23 and a half seconds. We've got four minutes of race time remaining. How is the Bill Thompson progress going? No, he's not really reduced the margin that much. So I think he's probably reached a level, but it's a pretty impressive level. He's in fifth place, sixth place, and he started 24th right at the back of the grid. That's the MGB GTV8, number 87 on screen. Peter Samuel's car, which is running in fourth place. There's the, uh, the NAS car that was going through yes. there, just ahead of Tim Brook in his uh, Chevrolet Corvette. Followed by the number 16 Ford Mustang, Mustang Boss. They're also cars with personality. Yeah, definitely. Aren't they? I mean, not just because of the liveries that the owners have given them, but they, they look as though they've got something to say. There's a reason why these cars have, you know, a, a, a American you know, car outings where they all get together yeah. with their muscles. There's one in Swindon, my hometown, only this last week, and apparently there was a big turnout of people that own these muscle cars. So, oh, right. Sort of sat there, you know, in, in the car park, they had live bands on and everything. But this is what you should do with them, not parade them in. Agreed. Yeah, 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 agreed. But just to show that there yeah. is great love for them. Yes. I agree, definitely. I want to hear and see and, and, and smell them out in places like this. Two and a half minutes to go. There is your race leader, Rob Smith. Uh, sorry, Stuart Rob, even. I think I was thinking well, not Rob Stewart. Else. No. <laughs> it is Stuart Rob in the 177 car, leading away comfortably by. I wonder if he's going to get to 30 seconds by the end of this race. With Getting close. He is two minutes, 10 to go. Here he comes, just serenely going off. He's still having to be careful when you've got those big cars that. Uh, you know, might not quite see the smaller TVR Tuscan Challenge car. God, he's just, wow, that was a big closing speed on that back mark yes. as he got onto the start finish straight and it's to just suddenly jink over to the right hand side. That woke him up if he had uh, gone into a, in a trance in that comfortable lead. There is the second place car, Matt Smith, number 80. You wouldn't miss that one, would you? It's always been that multi coloured livery as well. So, as he comes through, are we going to see the gap over 30 seconds? 29.915, so it is going to get past that Should before do. the end of this race. Yeah. The red TVR Tuscan Challenge is one that's, uh, that's done a great job over the course of this, uh, this race because he started back in uh, 24th place, he's running in 6th place. I think that's probably about as far as he's going to go. It is, uh, Change for third overall is that the 87 car, Peter Samuels, that blue MGB uh, 
uh, is up into third place ahead of number 90, that uh, more modern looking uh, Chris Tilly Chevrolet Corvette. Yeah, more modern looking, but still a car that goes back some years to 1999, that car, and Chris Tilly. That was a very well. slow lap, 1.11.9 compared to 1.04. By Chris Tilly. Yeah, so I don't know, either he made a mistake, which I'm hoping that's all it was, or he's got an issue and he's nursing that towards the finish. I'll have to keep a, an eye and ear out for when it comes up and past us. So our race leader is on to his final lap now, 25 seconds yeah. to go. So the car that I was looking for, Chris Tilly, down from third to fourth now, is just coming through the Luffield section. I have a feeling it may have lost more places unless that's lapped cars. In fact, it's, yeah, it's dropping back oh, yes. even further. It's under pressure from Avery, and he is. He's down to seventh, about to lose out to eight, so he is nursing yeah. that one to the end. Yes, he's very much nursing. He's not uh, fighting to retain positions. The win goes to Stuart Robb, just as you saw there, takes that chequered flag. Such was his lead that we were busy watching the uh, the cars in sixth place coming through in front of us. But victory for Stuart Robb. Yeah, it, very impressive. He's been right from the start of the day uh, in qualifying and now in the race. It's been... Uh, an immaculate performance by Stuart Robb. Ah, thank you. I've just had uh, an, an email from Scott Putnell that says that car 999 is, uh, let me just make sure it's the right one, Simeon Chodosh. Now, of course, we had 666 as Simeon Chodosh, uh, 999 as Sam Every. And in fact, even on the TSL, I've got it wrong then. So there's uh, so a. So what? 666 six, is. 999 is Simeon Chodosh. 666 isn't even out there now, so I have no idea. I said earlier in qualifying, didn't I? I said, I thought that gold car was Sinian Chodosh, but it's down as, as Avery. Uh, and TSL thinks it's that as well. So, so I'm deleting 999 and replacing the 888 with the 999. And that does it, doesn't it? 666 yeah. with 999. So 666 becomes 999, Simeon Chodosh. Bloody Bloody Bar, St. Albans, etc. And 999 is no Sam Every. Correct. So Sam has had every credit in that race, but uh, shouldn't have been. But nobody told us. Thank you to Scott from MSV for dropping me a line to, to clear that one up. Right. Stuart Robb, 177, takes the victory by 38 and a quarter seconds in the end, ahead of number 80, Matthew Smith. Then it is Peter Samuels, number 87, rounds out your top three. Holborn in fourth in 56. Fifth is number 25, Bill Thompson. Sixth, 58, Leatherby. 999, Chodosh, and it does say that on the timing screen now, that it says Chodosh. Well, you told that. Uh, yes, uh, 90, Tilly, 761, Carter, rounding out your top 10, 33, Borland. So that is the top 10. And I'm hoping, although I've got a horrible feeling that they've been waved away from stopping the top three. Second place has stopped, but I think, is that not our race leader that's carried on down? Jack's down there. Did, did they miss the race leader, Jack? I'm sure that he's down the far end now, but uh, I'm not sure. No, I think, yeah, we, we unfortunately, we haven't picked up Stuart Robb unless he is... I thought I spotted him just carrying on down the pit I lane. think so as well, um, yeah. But we do have Matty Smith with us. So we'll wait for Matty to get out before we jump in and, and grab a word. The race winner, I believe, is just coming into the pit lane. I thought uh, I'd missed him. No, here uh, he is. It yeah, is. So here hopefully, he is. Oh, that's good. Hopefully he sort of flicks his way in, which he does now. And then I can't see Peter Samuels. I think he, Peter Samuels was the one that we missed. So I can see just getting out of the car with a big smile on his face. We've got Matt Smith with us. Matt, that was um, a hard-fought race. It looked like traffic slowly started to become quite an issue. For me, yeah, it, um, I think Chris Tilly, it closed him right up on me, and he's got so much power down the straights. So I just had to sort of drive smart and try and hold him up. And then I don't know what happened. He dropped away. And then it was just sort of not slow down, but not push, just ease up a little bit, not too much, and just enjoy it to the end. And in terms of managing tyres, because you've got plenty of power and not really anywhere to put it, go on. <laughs> the back end just got looser and looser. It was like, oh, my God. So that's why I just eased off a bit, try and let him come back. But, yeah, I'm 
I presume I'm second. I don't know. Yeah, P2. P2. Yeah. Congratulations. Absolutely fantastic. Here comes Rob. What's he in? It's, uh, it's just brilliant. Really enjoyed it. Great stuff. Congratulations, Matt. So over this way, we do have our race winner, Stuart Rob. He's been congratulated by Matt Smith at the moment. Um, and, and they must have a great relationship, obviously. I'm sure they might share a little bit of data, being both running TCR, uh, TBRs, pardon me. They will, uh, <laughs> I'm sure they'll share a bit of data. It's great to see smiles on the faces as well, even after a hard fought race. So we'll jump in with Stuart, who looks fairly comfortable there. <laughs> that must have been good fun. Yes, sir, it, was, it was good. The car went, ran well. I didn't know where anybody was. I really didn't. So I just had to keep going. I was looking, but I couldn't see anybody, but I wasn't sure. <laughs> and we mentioned it earlier on today. I'm sure a run down to Silverstone's a fair way for you, but it, it gives the TBR an opportunity to sort of um, stretch its legs compared to your, what I imagine is your local circuit of Knock Hill. Oh, yes, uh, it's totally different. Um, uh, Silverstone is, is very flowing. It's fast. It's not as hard on the brakes as Knock Hill, surprisingly enough, but uh, it's a totally different experience. And, uh, yeah, the Tuscan uh, obviously was... When in the heyday, they had balls of fun here. Great stuff. Congratulations and best of luck for the rest of the weekend. Back up to you through the commentary box. Thanks very much to... Uh... Thank you. Right, so next out is the Miata Trophy. Thank you, Jack, for that. Uh, and uh, we go back to Ma Miata Trophy runners. Again, 20 minutes. The car's going up onto the grid. A grid based on the finishing order, which became quite a sort of uh, <laughs> shuffling, didn't it? It was as if it a really pack did. of Mazdas had been gathered together and they were shuffling them around. It ended up with number four, Nicholas Stott on pole position and number five, John Langridge alongside him because they were classified first and second in the previous. We're, we're back to pole position being on the left-hand side of the track, looking towards Cops Corner. Second row, 33, Dylan Stepney, and who suddenly appeared on the scene, quite yeah. kind of out of the blue, didn't he, um, in the closing stages of the earlier race, uh, and the results are number one, last year's champion, Declan Lee, 33 and one, row two. Row three is 42, Carly Atkins, and then number 73, Daniel Parrons smith 42 and 73, row three. Row four, seven, Alex Miller, who came up from the back of the grid, but picked up a penalty, as did many of the drivers around him. Some picked up more penalties than others. Seven, Alex Miller and 10, Ed McDermott. Seven and 10, row four. Row five, 14, Connor Clifford and 88, Rowan Lundy. 14 and 88, row five. Row six, number two, John Robinson and 26, Drew Fletcher. Two and 26, row six. Row seven, 44, row Raymond Worley and 24, Charlie Lane. 40 and 24, row seven. Row eight is 55, Simon Fleet and 28, Jack Hodges, 55 and 28, row eight. The ninth row, 121, Gary Smith, and 48, Chaz Allen. 121 and 48 is row nine. And at the back, we've got six, Colin Wells, and 19, David Chapman. I'll start with him because uh, I think, Chris, you were fancying his prospects, weren't you? Yeah, I think it was certainly a name that, uh, that that leapt out at me a little bit. I wasn't quite sure how high, and he was doing well in the early stages. Yes, in fact, oh, yes. he qualified yeah. third, yeah. Uh, was, was due to start, and, uh, and, and, and was going well. But suddenly something happened during that race, mm. and he did come into the pits. He then went back out again, picked up penalties, as uh, amongst many others. Um, but yeah, he's got to work from that back row. It could be interesting to see what he's able to do this time. What is also interesting, Alex Miller. Well, yes, exactly, I agree. Seventh yeah, for yeah. the number seven car, rather than 25th on the grid uh, and a 10-second delay. He's going to be starting a lot further up and, and he's going to want to barrel through as quick as he can. If you weren't with us earlier on, Alex Miller started the day by taking pole position provisionally for uh, the first of the Miata Trophy races of the day, but then after scrutineering, it was discovered that his car, or during scrutineering, it was discovered that his car's ground clearance was inadequate, so he was uh, excluded from the qualifying session, sent to the back of the grid with a 10-second penalty, so he had to start, as Chris has just said, 25th, or whatever it was, 24th, 25th, and work his way through the pack. Uh, he was doing rather well. In fact, he could have made the top six. That was, in fact, my prediction, but he ended up uh, seventh because of the penalty that he, like many others, picked up. Daniel Barron's, Barron Smith, uh, we thought was in the top three, but then more penalties were coming onto the screen. And uh, in fact, in the end, he, he dropped down to sixth place. Uh, Declan Lee did a pretty good job. I think he may have even picked up a penalty, but yep. uh, Nicholas Stott, 
was the one who emerged. He was he was there or thereabouts uh, for the second part of the race, certainly. But it uh, he wasn't the the favourite. Now is he going to win this one? I suggest it's Declan Lee. Oh really? No, I'd go for Declan Lee. Well, if John yep. Language has got his issue sorted with that car that uh, befell his yep. knees, he was comfortably yep. in the lead, wasn't he, for a, for a good while? Well, he had to fight for it, didn't he? Yeah, with Daniel Parent Smith, I think he, he had a bit of a yep. battle at, for the first Agreed, part of the race. Agreed, but at one point he'd actually built up a reasonable yes. buffer. Yes. Right, green flag has waved. 20 minutes of Miata Trophy racing here to go. It is the. Uh, Mazda MX-5, red lights are on, long hold, off they go, and it is a great start from John Langridge there as he fires himself off that line, down towards Cops Corner he goes, very steady start from David Chapman at the, at the back there it looked like, up into second is your prediction, Declan Lee is up into second already, past Nicholas Stott, and uh, the uh, third place Dylan Stepney, the bright yellow, oh, bit of contact, and that looks like uh, Roan Lundy, I think, was it not, the 88 car, the Burgundy, and... Declan Lee is into the lead, so last year's champion. Half a lap and he's in the lead. Right. I tell you what, you should do this professionally. <laughs> <laughs> he's done a great job there, and that's just unsettled John Langridge enough that he's under pressure from Nicholas Stott, the, uh, the pole sitter, race one winner, and he's looking to see if he can get himself up into second place. Down the Wellington Strait, they come in towards Brooklands. Is this going to be a challenge or is it an optical illusion? I think a bit of both, really, wasn't it? <laughs> it's a pretty good bunch, though, nonetheless, as they turn through Brooklands and go up towards Luffield. Uh, so it's the car, of course, in the appropriate place for it to be in British Racing Green that of leads course. the way. Yes. Uh, uh, fourth place for Miller, by the way. Alex Miller, the number seven. So come. he's got up from seventh. Yeah. So he could well be a factor as the race unfolds, but uh, in the meantime, getting away, Declan Lee out front. What's his lead at the end of the first lap? It's already eight tenths of a second, seven, uh, nearly eight tenths of a second. Stott is third, Miller is fourth, Parron Smith is fifth, and Stepney is sixth. Ed McDermott is seventh. He had a problem as well, didn't he? I seem to remember but, uh, with GT, British GT4 Championship experience under his belt now. John Langridge, I still don't think they've sorted the issue on that car because he's now been challenged by Daniel Parent smith Parent smith is through, so that puts him up into third place. Remember, he, on the road, won the race, but with the time penalties, it just went tumbling back down to seventh place in the end. Sixth place, sorry. Into the pits has come another significant car from that first one, 26, Drew Fletcher. So that's him out of this race with a big old uh, dint in the side there which I would hazard a guess will give an indication why he's in the pits. That was the first corner spin probably. Oh yes, oh. yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I, I, I think they're running wide getting these penalties uh, at, uh, at um, Beckett's because we've seen quite a few shots of cars with all four wheels over the kerb there. Yeah. Ooh, uh, there we are. John Langridge, that was on the start finish straight just because he suddenly Different saw. Place, yes. Yeah, that, that was because Stepney suddenly kept coming sideways and he jinked to avoid any kind of collision on the start finish straight. I don't expect them to get done down the start finish straight because I don't think they get yeah. any real advantage there. But Cops is a traditional one, but they don't seem to be too bad no. around there, do they? No, I, I think it, it, they're, they're taking the mickey up to so some extent. They're, they're being a bit here. casual about the way in which they respect the track limits. This is the bit you're saying, this bit yeah, here. That's isn't right, it? yes. Yeah. Uh, Not that time any of that we saw then, but on previous laps we've seen cars with agreed. all four wheels off the tarmac. And, and I think coming out of Brooklands as well, there's a, there's a bit of Mickey take in there. And it was interesting to hear uh, one of the drivers earlier say that, oh, uh, I thought it was if all four wheels went over, I didn't realise if it was two. And it's like, we're into about the third year of that being the rule. <laughs> It is to, to stop extended. But, you know, you were saying that drivers like to come and race here because it feels a lot safer with the yeah, space, but yeah. also it gets abused a lot it more does. because they can get away with it. Walls and gravel, not so much. So Declan Lee is in the lead, as you predicted, but he's not getting his own way because all of a sudden Alex Miller, number seven, is up to second place and set the new fastest lap of the race. So remember, he was the pole sitter before he got penalised for ride height. And it's Daniel Parron-Smith in third place staying with them, isn't he? Uh, absolutely, because again, remember, that's another one that thought he'd taken the victory yes. in race one uh, and, uh, and, and has had to fight from sixth on the grid. So absolutely, this is three 
key protagonists, isn't it, that are now duking it out at the front of this bat uh, at the front of this race. They now need to make sure they stay between the white lines so that we know who's won it at the end. Yeah, and we don't start picking up all because it became a bit silly towards the end. Yeah. So many penalties being applied. Not saying they shouldn't have been applied under the rules, but nonetheless, we were getting a lot of uh, late changes to the result. This is brilliant. This is what this we is know stuff, from yes. MX5, isn't it? De uh, Declan Lee in the lead in the number one car, but only just. This was first and second in the championship standings last year, let's not forget. Uh, and Alex does not want to come runner-up this time. And he's got a good run through Woodco onto the start-finish straight. Just been <laughs> biffed a little bit wide there as they go side by side all the way down the start-finish straight towards Cops. One third distance cover then of this 20-minute race. And running side by side there, number seven, one of them, Alex Miller. I was like, how many corners can they keep this side by side going? Still. The whole lap. <laughs> I, think I, think we did, I think we had a BTCC race here some years ago when I think it was Matt Neal and Jason Plato did a whole lap side by side. See. Not, not as, a, a, as a, an act, it was all genuine racing. And that like was this. Miller pushed wide there, which has enabled Daniel Perrin-Smith to come at them. But watch out, Stott and Stepney are directly behind them, trying to pick up the uh, the pieces from these three falling over each other. And in fact, Stott's going to move up past Daniel Perrin-Smith, up into third place. Has he done it? Yes, he has. So the uh, race one winner, Nicholas Stott, number four, moves up into third position now. And that's become, what, a seven-car train now, is it? It's great. One, two, three. Yeah. yeah, seven, that's right. Wow. Although I noticed that has enabled Declan Lee to, to build a little bit of margin. John Langridge there, that, that good to see that the pole sitter from the first race after uh, Declan, uh, sorry, the uh, the penalty to Alex Miller is back on song again by the yes. looks of it. Now we've got seven in the leading train, plus another two that aren't that far behind. It could well catch it up because the train itself is possibly getting each other's way and slowing themselves down from what two one two three four five six seven oh, then <laughs> move the camera pan over to the no, there's two more cars there we are eight nine ten i think there's ten cars in that think, that line yeah there's a there's a good chance they're not quite on the back of that uh, seven cars just yet are they but they're about to join and here we go is this a challenge from miller he's going to look up the inside as they get down towards the braking zone for the left hander of brooklands are they going to do it are they going to come out the other side they are still side by side yet again or oh, nearly some side to side contact yeah. as Declan lee comes back at him no nope. miller's got to settle back into second and hope that he can keep daniel parent smith who's back up into third again ahead of stock and these two that are in the first two places at the moment were first and second in the championship last Correct. year weren't they yeah. yep absolutely but daniel parent smith two, three, is trying to come four, and make six, a move seven, on second place eight, nine, nine, so get down towards what is it is the white car's just going to settle into second and keep miller behind him and has this allay, enabled declan lee to it, it doesn't really does it you think oh great declan lee's going to scamper away it doesn't last for long they look to be very well set up for racing cars in other words they, they're quite stiff aren't they yeah but, uh, uh, they're very maneuverable they've got a lot of handling and uh, very raceable as a result i remember the the first uh, mx5 championship was run by the brdc here in the days when the brdc ran race meetings uh, and uh, patrick watts won it oh wow okay so we had about i think 10 starters andy wallace drove it as well and now his, uh, his daughter races the MX-5s these days. Yes. Amy, uh, very successfully last weekend from what I saw. He was quite an emotional dad was his, uh, was his phrase. Yeah. Watching Amy doing well. Uh, with, of course, his, I assume it's still the case, girlfriend with Freddie Hunt, James Hunt's son. So, uh, yes, the, the motorsporting dynasty still exists, don't they? Indeed. Through they go to complete what will be their seventh lap now. And it is Declan Lee, Parron Smith, up into second place with Miller and dropping fact, back a little yeah Parent Smith's challenging for the lead already so 73 cars got a good couple of laps just forced Declan Lee a little bit wide there at Cops Corner but he's wrestled that back towards the main part of the tarmac he's going to have the outside line no is there's a, enough of an inside line there for the kink before the, at uh, Maggots before they get to the Beckett's cut through and I think they yes they have bunched up again the first yeah. few <laughs> the daylight that was appearing between second and third has disappeared 
there is a momentum element to this as well, isn't yes. there? And you make a challenge and you can lose that, which they said the slipstream is great unless you catch up with the person at the wrong place. But here we go, Daniel Parent smith diving up the inside at Brooklands. He's got that one done. Has he managed to do it enough before the switchback? Yes, yes he has. Yes. Yes, he so has. that was a nice move all the way down there, and he'll have started that before he even approached the, uh, the Maggots Beckett's cut through, wouldn't he? Dare I say this, but it's a better battle, slipstream battle to watch than Caterham's are, because Caterham's don't look quite, they, they look nice cars, these, don't they? Yeah. It's, it's a good looking car, the MX-5. I, I wouldn't comment, because I don't know what's happening. Anyway. <laughs> Chicken. Yeah, well, absolutely. Well, well they, they, they provide a lot of close racing, the Caterham's, but somehow they, they look like what they do. They're very sleek, these cars, definitely. Yeah. They look good, slow and fast, these cars, to be fair. Um, that snake just working his way yes. down through that part of the circuit looks so good. John Langridge just bringing up the back there ahead, with Clifford ahead of him, Stepney 33, the Dayglow Yellow just ahead of him in fifth place. Then it's the race one winner of Alex, uh, uh, Nicholas Stott, sorry, uh, in fourth place for the number four car. Alex Miller, number seven, just sat there in third. He keeps challenging, in fact, He's sat there watching these two go side by side, and it looks like Declan Lee. What happened to him on the last lap? He's just done back, and it's like anything you can do, I yeah. can do too. Back in front then, and in third place at this particular part of the circuit, Alex Miller. Daniel Perrin Smith in second place. Yeah, Alex Miller still lingering in third. Oh, yes ready to, to, to challenge, isn't he? But I don't think anyone's looking to do anything too severe just yet, are they? We've still got nine and a quarter minutes to go. I mean, a 20-minute race in these cars is, is a pretty decent length race, isn't it? Rather than the sort of, you know, even just five-minute difference, 15-minute sprint, they've got yeah. to think about the, the longevity of the race a bit. Caterham's, of course, the, the top class of Caterham's get 30 minutes, don't they? Yep. So it's... Uh I think you're right, that is the bad bit, isn't it? Well, well, it seems to me a place where they are going, getting all four wheels off the tarmac. And it obviously gives them an advantage. So it does uh, call for a penalty, I suppose. Yeah, and obviously they can get away with it a couple of times and then yes. they start getting warnings and then the penalties start increasing, which is what we saw with all the way up to 15 second penalties that we, we saw applied which from memory is is that that's the five and then the next one's a ten, ten isn't it so yeah. it's just the cumulative ten seconds of worth of penalties so through they go ten laps into the book and it is Declan Lee from Daniel Parron Smith number 737 Alex Miller in third then it's uh, number 14 Connor Clifford now he started ninth place and he's running in fifth at the moment so that's that's a good fight through from Clifford Stepney in the day glow yellow was having a look at somebody in the background and he was getting very close through. I think that is on Clifford, the car I was just talking about. Did they get through that section? Yes, they did, and they're still side by side in the background. But look at this, Alex Miller's got a good run. They've got a back marker in front of them, and the thing is that that is not a slow back marker, is no. it? Because that's Drew Fletcher in 26 that came in with the uh, battle scar damage from the, well, we're pretty sure, the first corner incident. There's six and 48 having a great fight and that is uh, those two miles. keep changing don't they and Alan and Wells oh, and Alex Miller looked put his nose up the inside and it just got snapped off well just when it seemed the top two were breaking away so they bunched up again in fact we're almost getting back to the nine or ten car train well Declan Lee has uh, lapped the delayed car Daniel Perrin Smith still second. Alex Miller third. Nicholas Stott fourth. Up to fifth now. He's uh, doing what he did in the early race, sneaking up on us, Dylan Stepney. He's now into f up into fifth place. Yeah, I kind of looked down from my commentary box into the pit lane when they wheeled that car back again, when everybody realised that actually he had uh, finished in the top three and there was uh, what looked like a family member giving him a big hug so I think oh. it was thoroughly enjoyed yes. throughout the family that uh, that podium for Stepney and, and, and it often happens doesn't it the old yeah. monkey off the back challenge here for the lead but it's going to be the outside line for Daniel Parent-Smith so Declan Lee holds on to that one 
But yeah, you get the monkey off the back and you, you suddenly got that yeah. confidence to go and do it again. And even if he's done it before, it's the start of the season and yes. he wasn't necessarily showing in the top three earlier in the day, but he, uh, he did a great job to get it. Daniel Parent smith gets a good run onto the start-finish straight. The gap's kind of disappearing somewhat as they go down towards Cops. Is he going to lunge towards the inside line? I don't think he has. No, he's just sat there to take the pace through. There he is, still in second place with Alex Miller directly behind him. And Alex Miller's being kept honest by the race one winner, Nicholas Stott, isn't he? Yes. Another one that's probably buzzing from that first one. Side by side, Daniel Parent Smith's going to have the inside line, and Miller's trying to follow him through here. So the lead does change. Declan Lee drops down into second place at this stage. And uh, <laughs> Alex Miller determined to find a way to, uh, to get himself up onto the, if not the first, then at least the second step, but not quite on there. Well, he should be getting a good draft there as they come down Wellington Strait. So for the moment, the new race leader. Daniel Parron Smith. Cool, four wheel drifting from uh, Declan Lee there in second place as he came th out of Brooklands towards Luffield. That rapid switch of direction being a challenge in the best of cars. And it's very much the four of them together. Daniel Parron Smith has, has managed to make this, this lead take stick this time, hasn't he? Because it was sort of fairly fleetingly a couple of laps ago. But uh, now he's up there in the lead. But Again, they, they can get a good run out of Woodcut down onto the start-finish straight, yeah. can't they? And make it count in towards Cops. Still happy with my money on Declan Lee. Even though he's running in second place at the moment. Time ticking away. Four minutes and 20 seconds remain. Pan back. There's uh, number six, Colin Wells. Ahead of 48, Chaz Allen. Yeah, they keep do -si do your partners, those two, I think. They keep chopping and changing, and that's one of the great things is know that you're going to find a battle somewhere. Talking yes. about a battle, three wide heading down Wellington Street. This is going to be a hold-your-breath moment, and somehow they come through in exactly the same order, but it did not look like no. it was going to be that way, did it? Absolutely not. Because they have to funnel into that left-hander, don't they, to be honest, as they no. get down towards it. Alex Miller looking for the inside line. Any opportunity to move forward and gain second place away from Declan Lee but Declan Lee still has the position Alex Miller beginning to be obviously he spent last season racing against Declan Lee so he knows his opponent's strengths and weaknesses trying but desperately to shake off the toe there as well aren't they now it's the old story about the uh, if you're in the lead you've got somebody right behind you that's one thing but if you've got to try and gain a place as well as defend your place that's more of a challenge. So order hasn't changed. It just seems to be getting a bit tighter now, closer and closer to each other as the time unravels. Three minutes remain. It's, it's the fighty end of the race now, isn't it? And yes. you, can, you can just sense it, can't you? Yes. Because they're more prepared to, uh, to throw their nose where it isn't necessarily welcome now. <laughs> and it's, it's just a little bit more... I'm not going to say desperation because it's not into that realm, but they're prepared to take a little bit more of a yeah. risk now. And it's early in the season, so they're not thinking of keeping any points accumulated or anything yeah. like that at the moment. They want to take these victories as they come towards us to complete the 15th lap with less than two and a half minutes to go. Daniel Parron Smith, number 73, just about has the lead from last year's champion Declan Lee. Alex Miller sat there in third place with, in fairness, Nicholas Stott, number four, still ready. It's, it's all about those four this time because it's a big gap before we get to, to uh, Stepney. Dylan Stepney, number 33, in a lonely fifth. John Langridge in a lonely sixth position as well. He started on the front row, but that car just hasn't been firing since halfway through race one. Now, we haven't seen much on camera of number 40. That's the very smart cream and yellow car, Ray Worley. Now we're seeing it. Where is he? down near the bottom end, 17th. Yeah, 17th yeah. But it, it looks nice, that car. It does, and, and normally I'm commentating on one in, in that car in the, uh, the, the MSVT Track Day Trophy or Championship. Oh, yes. Uh, so it's really cool to see him out in that, in, uh, in a one-make series as well. Well, the uh, quartet, the quarrelling quartet are still together as they come through the lap times like are we going to this is going to be the start of the last lap one minute 18 one minute 17 the lap time is one minute eight 
to go over the line. I would say there is there's probably yeah. three seconds in it or so, not a right. lot. We yeah. may just get another lap in after this one. Yeah, I think you're right. Penultimate lap time uh, this time round. And whether they'll know that or not is, is tricky because it was that tight yeah, that it won't it be was, obvious no. when you're in the in the middle of the fight yourself. But uh, yes, I think... Uh, well, here we go. Is this the last lap or is it the penultimate lap? We think, unofficially, it's the penultimate lap. He wasn't over the curb, was he? He was, he was part <laughs> over it. I don't know, perhaps that was a little bit too far. But there's no penalties being notified in this race, have there? Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure without hearing what we're saying, they will have decided <laughs> on penalties. But... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, and I think they were appearing by this point, weren't they, to be honest? So. They, they certainly were, yes, by... It, it was late, now. but not this late, of uh, 15 seconds left to go. So. 121, let's see, that's, that's Gary Smith, but he's way down the order. Well, here come the four leaders together. How's this going to unravel itself? So let's have a look, what have we got? Three, yeah, it was uh, between two and three seconds left One on the clock. 21 with a spin, by the way, Gary Smith. So this is the last lap now. This is when the gloves come off and already Nicholas Stott trying to get himself up on the podium. Currently sat in fourth place with Alex Miller just behind, uh, sorry, in front of him. And they're still side by side as they go through Maggots. Bit of a lock up, bit of a side tap. That's unsettled Stott. Is he going to wrestle that back towards an apex? Just about. But that has just scrubbed off all his speed now, yeah. hasn't it? So he's dropped away. Yeah, the momentum you were talking about is gone. Uh, from Nicholas Stott, winner of the earlier race, but uh, not going to win this one. Right, there is now a penalty on the uh, screen, so it was your fault. Uh, <laughs> McDermott is number 10 that's picked it, so no one up in this fight at the moment. No. And it's a big lead for Daniel Parron-Smith this time, isn't it? Yes. He's done a brilliant job. He's broken the toe and the spirit of those chasing him. Yeah, it looks like he's got it. He's done it. He's going to be keeping his counsel, isn't he, until he comes in and makes sure there's no penalties. So here he comes. Daniel Parent smith comes across, takes the chequered flag, punches the air with delight. Second for Declan Lee uh, from the fourth on the grid. A great job there. Alex Miller comes home with a, with a podium as it stands after the penalties earlier. He'll be pleased with that one. And behind that, it was almost a dead heat. But uh, getting through, Dylan Stepney takes fifth. Six, Connor Clifford. And Andy Language, number nine, takes seventh. Eighth, 88, Roan Lundy. Ninth, Ed McDermott with his penalty, number 10. And in 10th place, number 42, Carly Atkins, who hasn't shown in the latter part of the day the speed he was showing no. In qualifying, the original first full qualifying session. Yeah, and obviously don't really know the, the, the history of Atkins, but, uh, you know, it could be sort of gradually it takes its toll physically, mentally and everything else. And, uh, yeah, but still did a lot to, to catch our attention in the, towards the end of qualifying and race, excuse me, race number one. So well done, and I was just sort of waiting to see everything unravel, and it does look like McDermott's the only one that's picked up a penalty this time. So Parent Smith does hold on to that race win, just ahead of Declan Lee, number one. Alex Miller rounding out your top three. So those are the three that should be making their way down to the below the podium to grab a, a an interview with uh, our very own Jack Werrell. I think frustratingly uh, this time... Stop is being waved through. Obviously enjoyed stopping there, as did Stepney last time. Got Will back towards it. But uh, jumping out of the car is our race leader. And I think that uh, Jack Werrell is going to have a very happy slash very relieved race winner. <laughs> Definitely embracing there, Jack, by the looks of it. Yeah, 100% there. Uh, clearly over the moon. Because it, it was not just a brilliant battle from start to finish. It was a brilliantly clean battle as well. There was, if any, very minor contact between them. But that is just motorsport and that is just uh, the Miata trophy. So I'll jump in and try and grab a quick word immediately with uh, Daniel. It finally came. It, it must have felt like it was slightly stolen from you earlier on, but that's a good way to bounce back. Yeah, 100%. You know, I tried my hardest, starting fifth, uh, made it up to second, dropped back, and then got in the lead and managed to get a gap. So, yeah, I'm really happy finally to get the win out overall and not just two on tracks here. 
And you really had to work for it because you were just trading places consistently. I think both at the same point. If you would dive on the brakes up the inside and take the lead one lap, it would happen exactly the same to you the second. So it, was that a case of just sort of working the battle, hoping that tyres would go off and then run away from there? Yeah, I think, you know, the toe round is like half a second. So you're never going to break away unless the two of you back fight. So you can just see him in your mirrors coming at you. But no, I'm really happy with it. And yeah, finals get a win. Be re it's really good. Great stuff. Congratulations, Daniel. We'll wander over and grab a quick word with, with Declan. You, again, you, similar question. You really had to work for that because you're in the lead. You're in second. I think at one point you're in third, back up to second. Never mind watching. I'm sure doing it. That must have been a busy job. Well, I got uh, front row seats for watching the race, but uh, it's so hard to lead here because it's always in the toe, so it makes for really competitive racing. I feel like the engine's a little bit down on power, but that's my driver excuse, so really, really happy with that. And I watched all of the uh, previous races that MX-5's had at, at uh, Silverstone to work out all the tactics, so shout out to Luke Herbert for watching his tactics going uh, into uh, turn three and learning from that so I could actually keep second position because I nearly lost it just at the end. And for the rest of the season, surely that's a massive motivator, knowing that you've got the car underneath you, you've got the pace, and maybe even a bit more power to come as well. It's a, it's a really long championship, so I'm playing the slow and steady game. I've got a couple of subframes I need to redo. They're currently sitting in my porch outside my kitchen, which I should really do, because I can tell the car needs a little bit more just to be there. Really great, <laughs> great stuff. Congratulations. Cheers, Declan. We'll wander over and try and grab Alex. We've got Alex over here. So, Alex, um, you? you were there or thereabouts. It was a brilliant combat drive this morning. And then, yes. obviously, that race, you had all the work to do again. Yeah, yeah. This morning was a, 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 a massive disappointment. I, all my own fault. We, we didn't check the ride height and we got pulled up on that. But, so, yeah, it started not only at the back, but 10 seconds back as well. So, there was a lot of um, expletives flying around in the cockpit in that first race. But, yeah, it came back to give myself a chance in this race at least. And, yeah, it was a good battle there at the end with these two guys. But, yeah, I was a bit old for this sort of stuff. So I thought I'd just follow a moment third. I think it makes sense to me. But, yeah, happy, happy. You know the pace is there. You know you've got a solid chassis and the, the car's quick enough. Um, so rest of the season, you must be running on fairly high motivation. Yeah, I think we'd, we've been there or thereabouts all weekend on, on pace, so happy with the pace of the car. Amazingly enough, happy with the pace of the driver at the moment. Um, hopefully we carry that on for the season and mount a bit of a challenge. That's the idea. Great stuff. Congratulations. Best of luck for the rest of the season. But I could already hear the next cars are out on circuit, so back up to you two in the commentary box. Back, Dave. Right, so the Clubman Sports Prototype Championship second race. We're just getting a further amended grid, but not for this. Um, a one by one grid it'll be for these, uh, with pole position on the left hand side for a standing start, and in the order in which they finished the earlier race. So number seven, Steve Dickens, is on pole position. And to his right, and uh, to his slightly to his rear, 55, Ben Malik, first and second in the earlier race. Seven and 55, first and second. Third, number 50, Clive Wood. And fourth, number 32, Steve Collier, 50 and 32, third and fourth. Uh, fifth is 24, Mike Lane, and sixth, 53, Will Freeman. 24 and 53, fifth and sixth. Seventh, 15, Adrian Holy, and 8th, number 74, Lee Parks, 15 and 74, 7th and 8th. Ninth is 58, Tom Muirhead, and 10th, number 40, 4 Mike Upton, 58 and 40, 9th and 10th. 11th, number, 30, number 52, Roger Watton, and 12th, number 5, Neil Chapman, 52 and 5, 11th and 12th. 13th is 54, Barry Webb, and 14th, number 22, Peter Begley, 54 and 22, 13th and 14th. 15th is 42, Pippa Tanner Wood. And 16th, number 12, Tom Commander. We're now into drivers who retired in the earlier race. We've got one who's pulling off the grid now. That's number 88, is it? We're just carrying on with the grid. So 42 and 12, 15th and 16th. 17th is 17, 
uh, Alan Cook and 18th number 66 Adrian Lester 17 and 66 17th and 18th 19th is 65 Ian Crombie and 20th number 76 Maurice Hart 65 and 76 19th and 20th 21st is 11 Alan Davenport and 41 Charles Go Jones is 22nd 11 and 41 21st and 27th and the last car on the grid 47 Graham Wilson now that's the complete grid as issued but because of some cars having uh, problems in the earlier race, race there's no guarantee United that all of these cars the uh, will be or that's just that's mentioned all will be on the grid for the race we're about to see Club and Sports Prototype Championship. These cars have their origins in the first Clubman's Formula Series, which was 1965, started by Nick Syrett of the British Racing and Sports Car Club, based around Lotus Sevens and very early U2s, as uh, Arthur Malik used to call his original cars. He didn't apply his own name, Malik U2, just U2. But these days, for many years, they've been called Malaks. And uh, Arthur Malik's sons, Richard and Ray Malik, Ray Malik, who, whose company is the one that builds many of the components for cars that race in the British Touring Car Championship these days. And no mean drivers themselves, the two Malik brothers. And now Matthew Malik uh, is uh, running the company. Uh, and it continues to enjoy considerable success with its uh, unconventional design with the engine as uh, Arthur Malik always insists it should be it should be in front of the driver you don't put the engine behind the driver ridiculous idea uh, although of course these days it's uh, the natural way of things right we've got what looks like a pretty full grid I think the one that was pushed off was where is it 66 Adrian Lester right should have the red lights coming. Red lights on, lights out, and away we go. Good start again from pole position. I would suggest that Clive Wood's my favourite to win this one, Chris. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, he looked like he was on it. I was just holding my breath for a moment because someone went tumbling back down stationary, but they all avoided, and we had a couple at the back who were uh, clearly nursing an issue, so we weren't going to get away too quick. But thankfully, we're away for it at the moment. Well, there is a change for the lead. It's Ben Malik, number 55, that takes the lead from your pole sitter to Steve Dickens. And that's the first time we haven't had Steve Dickens in the lead, isn't it, throughout the entire it, it, day? I think you're right, yes, that's right. So it's not gone to plan on the start, but he's still there, chomping at the bit behind Ben Malik. Great expectations from Dickens, weren't there? <sighs> seriously. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he did, there <laughs> really was. Uh, he, he's, he's not fallen away. Clive Wood has fallen away a little bit. He, you know, I agree with your sentiment because he was flying and yes. catching them hand over fist. He was settled down. He was down. And it's good to see that Steve Collier's back, isn't he, in the uh, yes. 32, because clearly something was wrong with that car at the end of race one. Because he just stumbled away from them and just held on for that fourth place at the end of the race. But he's still there and he's looking very, very quick. But Ben Malik. He never really fell away, did he, in that first race? So he no. was always there, ready to pick up uh, some pieces. This time, he, he's made that stick from the get-go. So it's only a 15-minute race, like you said earlier, just sort of a good, short, sharp sprint race for these guys as they... Well, they only got 10 minutes last time, didn't they? On of the course restart. they did, yeah, yes. So yeah. They'd like to go the full 15. Great fight there. The uh, the second place running number uh, CSP2 running car, 11th overall on the road, was Chapman in number five. There is uh, Clive Wood and, and the 32 car Steve Collier sat running third and fourth respectively. Just kind of posturing at the moment because look, Clive Wood is catching them yeah, back well, up again, isn't see, he? That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not guaranteeing. I mean, he, he is a football. They're all champions, these uh, top three. They've all won the championship in their time. Steve Dickens, uh, not the top three, sorry, Ben Malik hasn't. Uh, but Steve Collier, as well as Steve Dickens and Clive Wood, have won Clubman's Championships over the years. So through they go. Ben Malik leads. Steve Dickens is second. Clive Wood is third. Steve Collier is fourth. Mike Lane 
And then in sixth place, it is 63, is that 65, Freeman. Keep an eye on 33, Tom Brown as well. In fact, there he is, speak of the devil. Just as I was about to start speaking, it was the car that's just gone past number five. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he, he started right at the back. Remember, we lost him for the first race completely, so he started right at the back, and he already made up four places. This is Graham on Wilson talking lap. about, 47. No, yes. no, no, no. Uh, the 33 car of Tom Brown. Right. Yes, Yeah. that, that is potentially a quick car. Yeah, and he started right at the back, and uh, he's, he already made up four places last time. I've, I've watched him make up at least another one this time round. Through went the leaders, still Ben Mallock, 55, leading the way by about half a second as uh, from Dickens, Wood and Collier. Yeah, as the programme notes tell us, uh, Tom Brown has bought the X-Works Mallock uh, and uh, is intending to go hill climbing with it, but he can't resist that this isn't a hill. I was going to say, he lost his way. He, he lost his way and uh, thought it, the car's too good not to race occasionally as well as hill climbing, because there's always been a long connection between hill climbing drivers. Crichton Brown, who I was mentioning earlier, he was a hill climber before he turned to circuit racing with the Mallet U2. And there were several others as well over the years. Uh, and uh, that car then is, as Chris is saying, is one to watch out for coming through from the back. It is. He's up to 11th place after having started uh, right at the rear. So sort of 20th, I think he started. And I don't think he's done yet. New fastest lap of the race goes to Clive Wood. So uh, Mr. Titchmarsh's <laughs> prediction for the race. And you can see that the number 50 car is already having a sneaky yep. look towards Dickens. Wasn't quite possible this time. So he slots himself back into third. But he is there loitering with intent, isn't he? Yeah. That's a good run onto the Wellington straight, isn't it? Being forced towards the outside, is he? Is that a yellow or is that... There we are, that's a good move, that uh, switches to the inside, he goes into Brooklyn's, and I think that's given him... No. No, it hasn't, it thought it had, but the camera was deceiving us. Uh, I think he got himself up, hadn't he, but he just was going to have the tighter yeah. line, so I had to break a little bit earlier than Steve Dickens, and Dickens knew that, didn't he? Well, it's, a, it's a building up very nicely to a good old battle, this. Great expectations. Uh, you could say that. <laughs> Have you ever read it? I don't think so. <laughs> I You'd think I started. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, Pat Marker just doing a good job staying out of the way there. There's the 33 that I was talking about earlier, and he's right up. In fact, the number 12 car started right at the rear as well. Uh, that's Tom Commander, and of course, he retired with an issue, didn't he, in the first race? So he started right at the back, behind 33, Tom Brown, to be honest with you. So both of them are coming back through yeah. this field. I don't, I don't think Tom would see himself as a winner these days, Tom Commander, but he, he has, in his time, been a, a winner. Uh, as I said earlier, very much a stalwart of Clubman's Formula Racing. Yeah, they're in eighth and ninth, respectively. Oh, and we've now got a challenge coming. So uh, Clive Wood has made the move on Dickens, and in fact, Collier's now trying to... Uh, unseat the unsettled uh, Dickens, and he's done it at the moment. But uh, Stephen Dickens, Steve Dickens, sorry, is coming back at him right in front of our commentary box yep. there, and that was a good duck back to the inside as they came through Woodcote, wasn't it? And this is all being conducted at very high speed. These cars are no snatches; they're lapping it under the minute, or just around about. No, the, the leaders are under the minute mark. I think the aren't they the quickest here this weekend? I'd say so. Yeah. And look at that, in a blink of an eye, yeah. Wood is uh, is right on to our race leader, Ben Malik. And 32 into third place, Steve Collier retrieving third place. So dropping down to fourth, his early leader, Steve Dickens. Yeah, he did. He lost that down to fourth, and then he got yeah. it back again in front of us, and he's coming back again, isn't he? Yeah. This is Dosi Do, your partners. He's going to have the inside line into Brooklyn's. I think you'll find he is going to take that yes. back again, isn't he? So those two are trading places over the last uh, lap and a half. Meanwhile, 55 Ben Malloch leads the way under real pressure from Clive Wood. As they come through to complete lap seven. Could be any one of these four could win this. Eight minutes to go. Who's that in the pit? 74 Parks. So Lee Parks. Lee, Lee Park. yeah. he, he does, yes. He, he, he lives he, up to his name. Is, yeah. <laughs> he has been pushed straight back. They know that that's uh, game over. So just pushing him back into the, uh, to the garages, sadly. Down to Wellington straight go our leaders as we uh, look at... Uh, was that a, a challenge there? The 24 car... 
Mike Lane, who should be well up. Fifth, yes, fifth place, fifth yeah. Place, so yes. I think that may well have been Leicester making a move on him there. In fairness, Leicester's coming back through the field as well, isn't he? In that 66. Well, he up. started, I think, from the pit lane because he was pushed off the grid. I'm sure 66 was, or was it 88? Uh, 68, Jared Leicester. We're watching 66, Adrian Leicester, aren't we? Yeah, but I still think he, he started. Well, let's have a look. Oh, yeah, he started 18th place. Yeah. So uh, he's worked his way up now into that will be now fifth place for him. Yes. Looks weird seeing it in a completely different livery rather than that sort of green that Jared's still in, I think. Last time around, Clive would set the fastest lap of the race. And it just looks it. Just watch him now. He's, he, he he's was quite an exciting driver, Clive Wood. Yeah. Good one to watch. Well, he just the, the, the gap looked comfortable, and, and he just instantly ate into it, and it evaporated. And he's there. But again, look, he's not doing anything daft, is he? He's no. just patiently waiting yeah. for the right chance. Dickens and Collie still close together. Yeah, he's been around the block a few times, Clive Wood. It's uh, still a, a quick. He knows. He knows his stuff. Well, there on screen. Oh, oh. Si oh, that's 66 in the walls again, or not in the walls, but mechanical his maladies. Waving because he's not able to get it going. So Adrian. Oh, Lester, it's on the track, isn't it? He's he's thrown that around, hasn't he? Where is that? It's down at the cut through, isn't it? Maggots Beckett's cut through. Yeah. Yes. So he's lost that under braking, hasn't he? Oh, that's enabled Clive Wood to close right up onto the back of Ben Malik there. Last time round, new fastest lap of the race went to our race leader, number 55, Ben Malik. Another one with his hand up going slow. Jack, was that you? No. You said Ben Malik was going slow. No, no, no. Uh, ben Malik did a new fastest lap of the right. race last yeah. time round, but someone else was going slow on the uh, right. Wellington right. straight. And what a great job by Ben Malik there as he got in towards Brooklands. He dived up the inside of a back marker, knowing full well that would put a back marker between him and the chasing Clive Wood until a corner later. That was a brilliant job. Talking a brilliant job. What about the well, mighty... Marshals. Well done, Marshals. Marshals and the, uh, the, the, the black crew there as well. They've uh, done a great job. Uh, Commanders. That's the other one that was going slow. Sadly, Tom Commander has uh, got, got that re the issue reappeared. That's a real shame, isn't it? It looked like he was coming back through the field nicely, didn't it? Yes, I think he kind of reached as far as he was going to get there based on previous years. So, four and three-quarter minutes to go. Tom Commander's achieved safety. Oh, and there was a challenge coming in towards Brooklyn's yes. Clive Wood was trying to throw it up the inside. Now we've got a back marker that's going to have to pick a side of the track to go on. Well done to uh, Ben Malik. He's thrown that one up the inside of the back marker. Clive Wood's just followed him through. So they sit there going at it. Four and a quarter minutes left to go. A very defensive line initially there from Ben Malik, but he then decides to whip back over to the outside yeah. to take the full race in line. Good tactical battle, this. Clive Wood has the speed. Ben Malik has slightly less experience than Clive Wood, uh, but he's uh, going, oh, Clive one way, then the other. That's uh, a switcheroo, I think, and uh, doesn't quite work for him that time, but really is applying the pressure now with increasing intensity. Down the straight, then he's got the inside. Well, it's going to be the outside line for Brooklyn's, though, isn't it? He can't change again, can he? He's had to commit to that as he made a mistake on switching. No, oh. uh, uh, no he's still no. got it. I was, I was worried they were about to come to blows yeah. on that one. <laughs> one of the good things about, in fact, both drivers, but Clive Wood is he always got a little bit in reserve. He doesn't take a chance that's going to be ridiculous and cause problems for them. They ride, race on the limit. Meanwhile, on the screen, we can see uh, extinguishers being applied to top commander's car. It's interesting because I was nearly about to say a couple of laps ago is that when you look at it, this picture now, as the cars yeah. disappear off into the distance, there's a lot of heat coming off of the wheels. Yes. Uh, ergo, presumably, the brakes as Clive Woods uh, now got himself uh, alongside. Uh, oh, that was go always going to disappear, that gap. But that's yeah. unsettled Ben Malik. Job done. So he didn't well, make contact and he didn't actually fully make the move, but he did enough to unsettle the car ahead of him. I don't think, yeah, that was uh, quite a menacing move, but there was no contact. 
And Ben Mallet comes back wow. and goes down on the inside into Brooklands and takes the lead back. Wow. But they're side by side. This is a brilliant, this is the race of the day. Isn't it? Uh, as uh, they come through Luffield into Woodcut and they're still side by side. <laughs> How much longer have we got of this wonderful race? Two, two and a half minutes just under. Side by side again over the line. Ben Mallet takes the inside line heading towards Cops Corner on the outside line uh, it is. Clive Wood, Clive Wood tucks in behind, but he's, far, he's having a go just about every available corner or every available passing place, isn't he? I think he's got the rule, oh, no, it's going to disappear very rapidly there, but it just was a slightly quicker line through Cops for Clive Wood. He's got the switch back again now, yeah. and it's the same place <laughs> yes. onto the Wellington straight, yeah. but not enough to snap across, so still the inside line is going to be covered by Ben Malik as they go up. Oh, and they're doing the, the who Formula needs One thing. Who needs DRS? Yeah. <laughs> you don't need DRS. Do Down the inside, uh, going into Brooklands, it's uh, still the blue car, 55 of Ben Malik just hanging on to the lead. His heart rate's got to be through the roof, what, what, hasn't what's it? What's the uh, time for two more laps? The one they're about to start and one after that. So two more laps. Oh, well, that's not the news he wants to hear, is it, Ben Malik? Oh. He wanted this to be the last one. Are we heading for a Silverstone type finish? It's getting to look like that. The Formula Fords are going to have to go some to improve on this one. So uh, out of Cops Corner, up the brow, into Maggots and Beckett's. He's got the run again, hasn't he? He's always got a good exit yeah. of cops, and he's got himself he's done. Tight line into the corner. He's got through again, but he's got to run wide coming out of the corner. But he stays on the track. He just he just puts two wheels over the curb, but not over the curb, just on the curb. So he should be all right. Has that done it for him, Chris? I think so. And that's that. We've watched it several times now. Is he's yeah. absolutely master of cops corner, and he carries that advantage all the way down. But it was about finding enough of a gap to be able to make the move and make it stick when they exit onto the well and straight well this time he's done it masterfully which almost feels a shame because ben malik has been absolutely, absolutely. brilliant throughout really has race. yes he's driven a, well now he's dropping back a bit ben malik is that because I, he's i think he knows i think he knows it's yeah. done you know he's, he's not going to be able to come back there's enough of a gap and and, and possibly slightly deflated which he really shouldn't be because he's been absolutely yeah. brilliant through yeah. this race yeah it really has been a high quality battle between these two uh, and that's the sort of thing that makes Clubman's racing so much fun. That's why year after year drivers come back to it, having discovered it, uh, and do it year in, year out. Peter Richings, who wrote the notes in the program, uh, he was a champion in Clubman's racing. He was racing Clubman since uh, moving out of Formula 3. Uh, and so we've got the cars in the final corner. There it is. There's Clive Wood. He's in amongst some slower traffic as he comes through the final part of the final lap. I don't think it's going to give Ben Malik a chance to come back at him. He's clear, he's just got slower cars to negotiate and he comes up, takes the chequered flag after a superb drive and the gap of the flag in the end, 1.021 seconds. That was the gap uh, and was that the best lap on the last lap? No, it wasn't quite. So Ben Malik is second uh, and Steve Dickens third, Steve Collier fourth, Mike Lane fifth, uh, and in sixth place, number 23. No, not number 23. Number, f number 53, Will Freeman. And there may have been other battles going on as well, but we're kind of, I think, justified in focusing on that lead battle. Who won? Tom Muirhead, I think, won that class, didn't he? Which was closely contested. Tom Muirhead ahead of Pippa Tanner Wood. So father and daughter both finished the race. Number 42, Pippa Tanner Wood in 15th place. And fourth in her class, in fact, after having to retire from the earlier race. Well, Jack, I think you should have a, a delighted winner to have a word with or two in a moment when they arrive in the pit lane, because that really was the race of the day, or certainly one of the races of the day. Win to Clive Wood, second Ben Malik, just one second behind, 1.021 second, and third Steve Dickens with a few class winners as well.
great thing is, I mean, I was frustrated that uh, I, I uh, was so close to their end of season awards due. I was hosting the uh, uh, Classic Touring Car Racing Club's awards and just down the corridor was the Clubman's and I'm like, I'd have loved to have been in theirs as well because uh, an absolutely wonderful bunch with some amazing racing. And I agree with your comment, that's, uh, that's going to be hard pushed to beat in terms of the excitement of that race. And I'm hoping that they're going to receive it in the best uh, possible way. I mean, Jack, I know you're down there. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the spirit like between them? Very happy, very smiley. Of course, these three have already shared the podium once today, uh, albeit in a different order now. Yeah, very high, uh, very sort of smiley, very happy. And I think they're just over the moon that they, they got to the end after a brilliant battle and they can they can walk away happy. So I will jump in now with Clive Wood. We'll grab Clive nice and early. And of course, you, you made it onto the third step this morning. What a way to, to bounce back. Top step now, you must be feeling good. Yeah, no, really good. The guys were quite difficult to catch and to overtake, um, especially Ben there. He was he made a real race of it. And then we got some yellow flags and where I was quicker through cops and, and that I couldn't overtake him. So um, we were side by side through Luffield a couple of times, which was quite exciting. No, excellent. No, really good. Really pleased. Really pleased. And we also saw a little bit of weaving as well from, I think, a couple of others as well. Was that just trying to break any aerodynamic assistance yeah, from the car yeah. behind? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. Then we, I think we, I think um, Ben went over to the inside down the pit straight and I went on the outside and then swapped over. But um, only one weave, only one. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Massive congratulations, Clive. We will uh, bring the next driver over. So let's have a word with Ben. We'll get Ben over first, obviously P2. Ben, that's two second places. That's not a bad way to start your 2024 campaign. That's absolutely brilliant. I'm, yeah, I'm amazed with that. That was great. So I was surprised at the first result, and this one's just even better. So that was great and fantastic race. So Clive was all over me all the time and uh, eventually managed to pick me down in Beckett. So, yeah, he drove really well. But, yeah, it was great fun. Really good. And in terms of aspirations for the rest of the season, naturally some more silver air and a couple more podiums. But surely you've got to be going for that top step now. I've got to win the next race, haven't I? Surely, yeah. Next race, tomorrow, I'll be on podium. <laughs> Great stuff. So we'll uh, hopefully uh, see um, uh, Ben on the podium. We'll bring Clive over. So we've uh, not Clive, pardon me. We'll bring Steve over. Um, Steve, you won race one, the third in, in, in the second race of the weekend. That's two podiums from two. You've got to be pretty happy with that. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. I just made a rubbish start and Ben got away. And then I could see Clive coming in and I sort of just got mugged by Steve and Clive. And then there was a yellow flag off Beckett and they got away. But... Um, no, I'm, I'm happy with third to have two podiums in the, in the day. I'm, I'm really happy with it. So in terms of uh, the further races, is that just going to be a case of getting the starts nailed down and naturally the car will sort of follow suit for the rest of the season? Uh, yeah, I mean, the start was rubbish. That's why Ben got away, f uh, away but so I need to improve that. But the, car, the car's good, just getting into a rhythm, really, which I did towards the end. But at the start, Ben just got away. It's one of those things. Great stuff, no problem. Congratulations. As ever, it's brilliant to hear from our winning drivers. But back up to you two in the commentary box. Thank you very much, Jack. That was, uh, yeah, I think a couple of them, Ian, sounded like they'll be relieved that they've got another race tomorrow because they don't feel completely satisfied today. Well, if you get the chance to race a Clubman's car, you take it and there's another mm. race tomorrow. And so, yes, I think they'll... Uh, and, and 50 minutes shows itself to be just about the right duration. That's what yeah. they they like rather than the 20 minutes. We're going to get 20 minutes now for the Formula Fords, but they're not here tomorrow. They only get their second race now. Uh, so let's give you the grid based on the finishing positions of the earlier race. Uh, on pole position, 59, Jason Pribill. Uh, and with them at the front on a one by one grid, 154 Lewis Fox, 50, um, pole, pole position on the left hand side of the track looking towards Cops Corner. Uh, and then Lewis Fox, number 154, is second. Third is 29 Alex Ames, and fourth is 52 the extra runner, 52 Jeremy Fairbairn, the American driver, 29 and 52, third and fourth. Fifth is 82 Ben Cox, and six is number eight Nigel Dolan, 82 and eight, fifth and six. Seventh is five Adam Fathers, and 17 is 8th, that's Klaus Dieter Heckel, 5 and 17, 7th and 8th. Ninth is 72, Tom Radburn, and 10th, number 13, Stuart Kestenbaum, who's been racing Formula Fords since before they were invented, it seems like. <laughs> anyway, Stuart, he actually did race in Formula First as well, if you can remember that. Uh, so 72 and 13, 9th and 10th. 11th is 50, Dave Porter, and 12th, number 14, Gerhard Hauschulter, 50 and 14, 11th and 12th. 13th is 77, Chris Sharples, and 14th, number four, Mark Adkins, 77 and four, 13th and 14th. 15th is number 20, Charlie Mann, we're into the 
of drivers who had problems in the early race. Hopefully they've all been repaired because most of them were accident type damage. 20 Charlie Mann and 32 Isaac Canto to Silva. 20 and 32, 15th and 16th. 17th is 21 Pablo Jequier and 18th number 19 Innes Hickman. 21 and 19, 17th and 18th. 19th is 40 Andrew Rackstraw. Want to watch coming through from the back, the South African driver. And 20th number 11 James Harridge. 14, 11, 19th and 20th. And the last two on the grid, 21st, number 26, Jason Smith, who was leading, and number 88, Morgan Quinn, who was right behind him when they had a bit of a tangle uh, at uh, Beckett's, uh, and both retired with damaged cars. 26, Jason Smith, and 88, Morgan Quinn. So three to watch particularly, 26 and 88 from the back of the grid, and Andrew Rackstraw from just ahead of them. Uh, don't think 26 is there, I'm afraid. Oh, that's a shame, because... Uh, he was, well, he was the leader and he did start from pole position and he is quick. It, it, was, it looked like quite a big uh, chunk that was taken out of the side of that car, unfortunately. So uh, I assume that means they haven't got it fixed. Plus, I'm sure there was a, a big old chunk of frustration. Um, not that it was anybody's fault, it, it, he, but he was a completely innocent bystander and collected from a car that just got an overcorrection on. Uh, and took him out. Uh, th there looked like there was a couple of others missing from the back there, but I couldn't quite check who it was because obviously we've got that Pablo uh, Jacua in 21, 32 Isaac Canto de Silva and 20 Charlie Mann. Those three were involved in an incident together that uh, I think caused a reasonable amount of frustration for two out of the three of those. Uh, we'll leave it at that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm not sure that all of those have made it onto the grid, but you know, there's still going to be some very exciting ones that uh, are going to be working through this field and they're going to be wanting to do it as quick as possible, aren't they? Oh, well, they are. It's interesting to reflect on the fact we're seeing the Clubman's cars before the Formula Ford cars, but when Formula Ford emerged in 1967, it was seen as a rival to Clubman's racing because Clubman's racing was the route that young drivers took because okay. there really wasn't any equivalent single seat. Formula 3 was expensive to, to uh, run, uh, the one litre F3 cars. Um, and so we're now seeing them back to back. They've evolved, obviously, over the years. The Clubman's cars have. These haven't, really. Formula Ford cars are still Formula Ford cars. Uh, they may have uh, different tyres from the, the road tyres that were mandatory in the earliest days of Formula Ford. With the challenge now of not, obviously, having even tyres around anymore. Uh, That's 20, another chance, right. Yeah, Charlie Mann is there. So we're missing the silver Jequia. Uh, and Jason Smith, unfortunately. I'll tell you what was racing at uh, Castle Coombe Easter Monday, the Formula 500s. Oh, right. That was incredible, and they really put on a show because it was the 500th race day at Castle Coombe, and, of course, they were there on the very first one, so it was absolutely a must that they would race. The first big race meeting I ever went to had a f Formula 3 race in it, 500 cc's, Jim Russell and Les Leston and... and uh, yeah, that brings back some memories. Yeah, exactly. Green but flag. Oh, right. Sorry, green flag's waving at the back. The red lights are on. The engine notes are rising. Off go the lights and off go the field. And it's sort of a fairly equal start from the top three by the looks of it as they launched away from the line. We'll have a few changing behind. And it looks like it's Alex Ames that has got himself into the lead. The yellow sort of camel liveried number 29. Uh, the smoking things are available, uh, sadly. But uh, he's already trying to shake off the attention of the cars chasing him. That was a fabulous start from Alex from third on the grid. Yeah, Alex Ames for the lead, as it were. So, uh, <laughs> oh, But then they all run rather wide, don't they, at Beck uh, not at Beck yeah, Beckett's, that's right. So that's where they were. And now they are on the Wellington Strait, heading down towards Brooklands for the first time. And uh, Alex Ames has lost the lead, hasn't he? Yes, Alex Ames dropped back behind Lewis Fox. No, but Jason Pribble. Jason Pribble as well is yeah. moving forward in the ray. So down to second for Alex yeah. Ames. So yeah, Jason Pribble into the lead in 59, where he would expect to be, just didn't get the start that he wanted. Alex Ames in number 29 slots into second. Small gap before we then get to Lewis Fox in the blue 154. Under huge pressure from a car that came on very strong at the end, didn't it? That uh, Jeremy Fairbed, 52. And uh, he's trying to make a move in these early stages. He's not been able to move past fourth at the moment. There is the one of the cars coming through, Andrew Rackstraw, number 40. The, uh, the sort of um, almost looks like the Kevin Mills racing colours on that one. The white middle with the, the blue top and bottom with the red flashes on it and already moving up further. There's Adam Fathers fighting with, I think that's the, uh, is that, was that number eight? No, it wouldn't have been. I'm 
missed what the number was on that. Uh, yeah, Nigel Dolan it is, the red number eight of Nigel Dolan that is trying to challenge on number five, Adam Fathers. Well, there's no breakaway going on at the moment as they turn through Brooklyn's for the first time. So we may have Alex Ames in only second place at the moment, but Jason Pribble with uh, no previous racing experience in Formula 4 1600. He's clearly raced cars before, but not Formula 4 1600 before uh, today. Uh, has done a great job winning one race already and now looking as though he's going to try and make it a double. He is, they're weaving every which way to go. We've not got the timing or the uh, the graphics on there, but the, the team will be working hard on that, I have no doubt. But I can tell you that it is Pribble that is in the lead. Number 59, 29, Alex Ames from 154 Lewis Fox. Fairbairn putting huge pressure on him in that uh, number 52. Uh, and we've still got 17 and a half minutes to go. Great gaggle. That's uh, yes. Charlie Mann coming back through this field as well in the number 20. Another one that got collected in an incident. Yeah. Yeah, Charlie Mann who started on row seven. Yeah. Or even row eight, actually, row eight. Yes, of course it is, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, working through, which means Morgan Quinn's just behind him. So Morgan Quinn is doing a great job in the white 88 From car. From the last place on the grid. There he is. There's the uh, white 88 car just got past. I think that's uh, Nigel Dolan he's passed. Yes, it is. So the 88 car uh, last time round was up into 11th. Um, be at least a place higher than that through go the leaders pribble ames fox no fairburn is is past fox now so up into third goes the 52 car rack straw number yeah. 40 is up to sixth man number 20 is up to seventh and quinn morgan quinn 88 is up to ninth so that's the uh, the key uh, fight back through from the back of the field yeah andrew rackstraw then as you say in sixth place uh, he's come through from 19th place on the grid and certainly has the pace, as he showed at the Walter Hayes last year, to uh, win this one. And we're still early days. It's uh, still got 16 and a quarter minutes to go. So it may well be that at the moment it's uh, in the lead is Pribble, but Jason Pribble won't stay there, I don't think. Yeah, I, th I think he. I suppose he's not building up a big enough lead, is he? I mean, no. he's, he's got the skills to be able to do it, as we know. And uh, But he's under huge pressure. He's gone flash past yeah. in front of our commentary box. He is still under pressure from the heritage class car of Alex Ames, who is going great guns. And he certainly sounded very happy when we interviewed. it. That is the battle for third and fourth. So one of those will get... Uh, on the podium, the other one won't, and at the moment it is the red and white Fairburn that's got it. Now, Andrew Rackstraw didn't gain a place on that lap, he stayed sixth, but he has set the fastest lap of the race. Uh, and he is 1.4 at the start of this lap, 1.4 seconds behind number 82, Ben Cox. Mm. And still, we've got, we got just over time. 15 minutes to yes. go, haven't we? Yes, yeah, so plenty. And here we go again, third and fourth place going side by side. The, uh, the blue car of Fox sat there in fourth place, not able to make a move up. So Fairburn in that 52 car still sits there, able to hold on to the uh, podium paying position as it stands at the moment, as they come through to put five laps in the book now. Through they go, and uh, we'll be interested to see if we get any more fastest laps yeah. in the race this time oh, round. Yes, I thought we had, but we haven't got an improvement on the Andrew Extra lap from the uh, fastest lap from the previous time round. But he's there challenging again, isn't he? Yes, he's he forced uh, Cox number 82 into a new personal best, such as the fight, but uh, he's, he's rapidly closing on that fourth place. He took a second out of him last time, and it was only six tenths of a second is the gap as they cross the line. Yes, he's not inexperienced, Andrew Rackstraw. I'm not saying he's experienced at Silverstone, but he has raced in his home con country of South Africa before coming over to Europe. And he'll also be racing this year in the... He's the one, isn't he? He's going to be racing in the Carrera Cup GB. Uh, yes, I think you did say that. Rackstraw was the one who was going to do that. Look at this side-by-side -side for third position. And uh, it looks like we're going to get the move by Fox. Up the inside goes the 154 Lewis Fox. Kind of, sort of, just about. Yes, he's managed to do it now. So up to third goes Lewis Fox. That was a really gutsy move and really just held that on. Directly behind him now is, is Rackstraw. So the number 40 car did make the move and is already glued to this battle for a podium position. So from right 
right at the back, 19th on the grid. He's now about to challenge for fourth and third in one fell swoop. And another new fastest lap, he said, hasn't he, last time around under Rackstraw? Oh, good spot. And there he goes. He's going around the outside of Fairbairn. This boy means business, doesn't he? You know, he's just been forced wide there, knowing that... Uh, and that was really good racecraft, wasn't yes. it? He knew that Fairbairn was going to just push him out as wide as he possibly could. And these cars don't tangle very well, do they? No, as they showed in the earlier race. Mm. Uh, the lead uh, is still in the hands of Jason Tribble, but only by half, well, less than that, a quarter of a second last time through from Alex Ames, who's got plenty of Formula Ford experience, as well as experience in more powerful single-seaters, and is very much in contention there as they go through. Now the next train of cars comes through, and the order is Fox, Rackstraw, fourth now, Fairbairn, and then Cox. Andrew Rackstraw heading for the podium. Rackstraw's just gone up into third place there as they got down towards Cops Corner. So he made the move by getting the, the uh, slipstream onto the start finish straight. So up into third place from 19th on the grid. Yeah. It's absolutely brilliant. It really is. When you consider how quick these two are. Goodness me, they didn't even bother uh, keeping themselves on the circuit even remotely there. <laughs> they just took each other. It was a follow me leader, which now means that they're under huge pressure. Is that Cox that's just behind them, I think? Oh, and Alex Ames is challenging for the lead there. We just saw heading in. Yeah, he's he's done it. it. So great move there by the Heritage Class car. He's up into the outright lead of this race. Alex Ames, number 29. Very twitchy he is, but it's all controlled twitches, I think, because he turned into Woodcut. But fair shout. Jason Pribble's coming back at him. Yes. He's going to have the inside line as they get to Cops, isn't he? Well, he may have raced Formula 4 before, but Jason Pribble certainly knows how to race cars. Oh, or carts. He's turning through Cops Corner now, back in the lead. Although, yes, he, he led over the line as well, in fact, even though he briefly lost the lead to Alex Ames. That's good, good patience, isn't it? Not yeah. suddenly losing your call because you've lost the place. Just wait, it will come back again. Oh, Alex... Outbraked himself. Yeah, or, or was brake tested one or the other, whichever one it was. That caught him by surprise. Chris Sharples is in the pits, I'm afraid to say. An issue with that beautiful-looking car. Even with the round wing mirrors on it as well, I see. Yeah. So, how much further can we see the number 40 car of Rackstraw? Incidentally, the other cars coming through. Morgan Quinn, number 88, is up to seventh place. Charlie Mann, number 20, up to eighth. Then well, the other two. Uh, yeah, Andrew Rackstraw is now third, isn't he? So he's in a podium position mm -hmm. from last time around. Got ahead of Mr. Fox. Lewis Fox. Jeremy Fairburn fifth and sixth is Ben Cox. And we have, we're only halfway through, no, two third, a third of the way through. It's a, no, no, it's a 20, half, 20 minute race, yeah. so halfway through, yeah. The big problem now for uh, Rackstraw is that uh, he's got a big gap before he joins onto the back of this battle that we're looking at now. This is the lead battle. Jason Pribble, number 59, sat there in the lead at the moment. Alex Ames, number 29, in second and leading the heritage class at the moment. And that doesn't matter because they get involved in the fight. Oh, and a little look there from Alex Ames, but he was a bit too far back as they got towards the left-hander of Brooklyn's. But you saw Rackstraw all on his own now in that yes. third place. He doesn't have to defend. And, and I don't think you get left fully stranded when you're on your own in these cars. There is good uh, drift effect. Um, if you can break the toe that from anybody, um, from anybody behind you, that which holds you up a little bit, slows you down a little bit. You can just get your head down and drive as quickly as you exactly. can. And I think in the remaining nine and a half minutes, it may well be that Andrew Rackstraw can do just that because he's certainly pushing on, lapping quicker than anybody else. And that's a change there. 52 Fairbairns up to fourth place has managed to move past Lewis Fox. So Fox is down to fifth place. Looks like Charlie Mann's picked up a penalty for something. Let me just have a little look and see. Five seconds, that's got to be track limits, yeah. hasn't it? Morgan Quinn, remember he was also at the very back. Morgan Quinn, number 88, right at the back. He has worked his way up into seventh place. Yeah, Quinn and Mann have been stuck in that seventh and eighth for a few laps now, so I don't know whether they're going to enable themselves to get further. They were two front runners that got involved in, uh, in incidents in race number mm. one. Well, it is still Pribble from Ames, from Rackstraw. And the gap between Rack, uh, Ames and Rackstraw is 2.9 seconds. 
through go the two leaders. That's 11 laps completed. There in third place is Andrew Rackstraw. 3.19. That's gone up that gap, hasn't it? Second to third. 3.19 now. Yeah, he lost about two tenths, did Rackstraw there. And I just wonder whether it's just take a little breather. There's still just mm -hmm. over eight minutes left to go. And he's had to work really hard to get through this field now. You can see the cards there and, uh, and, and just sort of bide his time, ready to work his way through. No one's biding the time in this battle. This is fourth, fifth and sixth. 52 Fairburn, 154 Lewis Fox. And then the 82 car of Cox just behind there. Someone's recovering from a moment. Just, was just looking to check which white car that was, make sure that wasn't uh, Morgan Quinn. No, there's Morgan Quinn and uh, and Charlie Mann there together, the 88 and uh, 20. I would even suggest those two in the background, you can see there, they're almost working together now, aren't they, to bring yeah, themselves yeah. further through this field. Because they're not really challenging each other. Three leaders through, 12 laps completed. First to second gap, three tenths. 0.38 of a second. Uh, second to third, wow. slightly down, but we're talking about hundreds of seconds. It's still much the same as it was on the previous lap, yeah? Another great move into to Cop's corner there, and it means that Lewis Fox 154 has just got past Fairbairn, so up into fourth place he goes, but Fairbairn's got it back again by the time they get to the uh, Maggots and Beckett's cut through. So these three are really trading places, and look what that's enabled to happen. Not only is Cox still with them in that black 82 car, but suddenly, the two that have been fighting through from the back, Morgan Quinn and Charlie Mann, is now glued to the back of them. So they might be seventh and eighth, but at last they've got themselves glued mm. to the battle for fourth, fifth and sixth. Battle for the lead becoming ever more intense now, as we saw in the Clubman sports car race. Uh, as the race gets towards its end, the battling becomes ever more intense. 13 laps completed. We've got six and minutes and 20 seconds to go. Spin there by Stuart Kestenbaum. He runs as number 13. Yes, Stuart Kestenbaum, number 13, is preferred number. Is, is it Stuart Kestenbaum that's the pilot? I can't remember whether it's him that's yeah. the, the pilot. Yeah. Right, leaders on screen coming through Beckett's. And on to Wellington Strait. Alex Ames really putting the pressure on to try and take the lead, but even if he takes the lead now, he's still going to have to hold him on to it for another five minutes. Side by side they go through Brooklyn. Alex has the inside line. He's not quite level with Jason, so he has to drop back again. It, it, it's brilliant to watch this. Is It's not always the, the actual moves that make the difference. It can be the psychological moves yes. that can just end settle. And that's one of the tasks. Adam Father's into the pits with the problem, by the way, in the number five car. But, yeah, just try to unsettle the car uh, ahead of you. I'm just looking. It looks like Cox has lost out two places now. Quinn and, and Mann have both got past uh, Cox. So that means that... Uh, Morgan Quinn, 88, is up to sixth place now. Fifth for Charlie Mann, but with a five-second penalty pending. Fairburn is back ahead of uh, Lewis Fox, but that keeps going backwards and forwards between those two anyway, doesn't and it? And Rackstraw has pulled back half a second on Ames last time around. Look at this. This is for fourth place, side yeah. by side in the cut through. And that means Morgan Quinn, 88, is now trying to get involved. Knows firmly involved now. And uh, looks like it's alongside at least Fairbairn. And, uh, ooh, and they're just having to make sure they miss each other. Bearing in mind, the mirrors on these are next to useless invariably. They vibrate. They're tiny. So they just need to be able to see enough to not get involved. <laughs> And somehow they're staying completely. I mean, this is fabulous racing, it is, isn't, isn't it? it? That really is. Not a single bit of contact there. Shh. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so five of them. Oh, and Pribble's got a penalty. Our race leader has now got a penalty, a five-second penalty, right. as has Lewis Fox sat there in fourth place. So suddenly they're, they're dishing them out this side. Side by side for the lead. Alex Ames is diving up the inside. Doesn't need to. No. He doesn't need to, no, but I, I doubt that he really well, knows. No, he won't know. No. Really. So he's now made the move legitimately, and uh, Pribble is going to get a penalty. He needs to be able to make sure he's ahead. So at the moment, you've got to say that uh, Rackstraw is up into second place once the penalty is applied. That's right, uh, but uh, Ames will stay. Th will be third. He'll still be in a podium position. He leads the race at the moment. Pribble will be in third. 
Uh, Alex Ames is fine. He's in the lead. He's got no. Yeah, he's not. He's not penalised. That's right. And of course, as I say, he is actually the the, the heritage class in in, uh, in a wonderfully liveried car. Through he comes. Yeah. Bribble's not letting him go though, and he's got a good run through Woodcote onto the start finish line. Down he goes with just under three and a quarter minutes still left to go. So we've got a good uh, three laps probably out of this uh, as as yet. And uh, it looked like a challenge was being mounted. Now, now Andrew Rackstraw is 1.7 seconds behind Pribble, who is nothing at all behind Alex Ames until you add the five seconds. Yeah, so that's why Rackstraw is, is officially second now, isn't he? As long as they don't pick up penalties. And look at this, still raging, isn't it? You've got Morgan Quinn ahead of Fairburn 52 now and was all over the back of uh, Lewis Fox. Lewis Fox has got a penalty that will be applied later. Still Jesus. Ah, we got the change back again. So Pribble is back into the lead, but remember, he's got a time penalty. And uh, it, it's almost like there's no radios to these drivers to let him yeah. know, is there? Look at Rackstraw right with them. Exactly, in the that's what I was going to say. Blue and white car, brilliant. Yes, he's uh, almost with them. And the man he has to pass, of course, is Alex Ames. Or, yes, he's got to pass Alex Ames if he wants to win the race. That just is, is amazing, isn't it? Oh, and Alex yes. trying to get past the back marker that That's wasn't fully playing ball there. Stuart Kestenbaum, who should, should be. Here we go. Here goes Rackstraw. He's got the good run. Uh, uh, Alex Ames was held up by the back marker. I mean, okay, they can't disappear. So uh, it probably was circumstantial. Rackstraw's through past Alex Ames. And that means that with the penalty that's going to be applied yeah. to Pribble, is that he is now leads. in the lead of the race mm. from 19th on the grid. Mm. That is super impressive. And he has had to work for it. He's not inherited anything. Oh, here. no, absolutely not. No, he really has worked. Doing a bit, but he's not there yet, though. He's not home and dry. One and a half minutes on the clock. So next time through, there may still be time for another lap. But anyway, it's Andrew Rackstraw leading in the spectrum. And it is Kevin Mills racing. I thought it was. Like yes. Judging from the I, just saw the I think KMR most, on it now. most of the spectrums are run by him. Mm. And what's going on then behind? So, uh, Andrew... Jason Pribble will hang on to... Right, so on track, Andrew Rackstraw is ahead of Alex Ames. So less than a minute still to go. 18 laps completed so far. That is uh, Morgan Quinn just ahead of, uh, of Fox and Charlie Mann. The, the blue and red cars actually have penalties that we applied at the end. And... Uh, lost the time in at the moment but I think that's because we had a few erroneous names at the bottom but uh, they will come through fairly soon uh, fortunately it does show it on my laptop so I'll pay attention to that one for now but this is the actual on the track lead but again we know that Pribble's got a time penalty that's going to be applied to him but Rackstraw he wants to make sure it's done no matter what doesn't he they're going to get through. Let's have a look. Here they come. They are. They're going to get through and do one more tour. So it's going to be a 20-lap race in this 20-minute uh, race. New fastest lap of the race goes to Rackstraw. Oh, and he's just kicked up the grass there that nearly unsettled him coming into Cop's corner. He, uh, he wrestled that back under control again, and it didn't lose him any time at all, did it? If you got the me No, it didn't. If you got the message that uh, on a board that you're actually leading the race, you don't have to overtake him, you'd probably not trust it anyway you'd still if you could yeah uh, try and take the lead on the road but that's what looks as though that's what's andrew Rack i don't think he's got the message if it is being notified to him he is unaware that he has this penalty and i think that he doesn't know that um, his rival has the penalty and i think that the reality is that he still wants to be able to uh, say that he's done it and he's just yes. dived up the inside he's done the switch back no that hasn't worked so he still sits there second on the road he wants to be able to say no i didn't inherit it due to a penalty i actually beat you on the road as well and uh, i don't go. think he's quite going to do it is he no as they come through Luffield and into Woodcut up to the chequered flag. First past the flag, it's almost a dead heat, but first past the flag uh, is Jason Pribble. But Andrew Rackstraw takes the verdict, in fact, from Alex Ains by 1.7 seconds, and Pribble is third. The gap, you've got to put the, add the five seconds back to work out what the differences were. 1.7 seconds, first to second, uh, that's Rackstraw to Ames. Aims to Pribble, Pribble with the penalty, the gap is 4.768 seconds. So the gap first to second on the road was 
two four of a second absolutely amazing and morgan quinn up to fourth place in the that 88 from stuff. the back as well yes. yeah that yeah. was from 22nd on the grid uh fairburn was uh, was having a great fight in the 52 jeremy fairburn finishes in fifth place six was the 82 car of ben cotts uh, managed to finish ahead of the 154 Lewis Fox because there's penalties all over the place. Eighth was a good fight back, but the penalty knocked Charlie Mann down to eighth position. Ninth, number eight, which is Nigel Dolan. Tenth, number 17, Hackle. Uh, 72, Radburn in 11th. Twelfth, number uh, 50, Porter. Kestenbaum won the classic. Uh, 13th for the number 13 car, 14th the number 14 car of uh, Horschelt, uh, 15th number 4 Adkins, and that was the final of the finishers. But Jack Rackstraw, what a fantastic victory he's taken there, uh, and really fought valiantly for well, that one. Uh, Jack, you'll be having, I think, down there Jim Walsh to hand over the trophy, the Jim course, Walsh trophy yeah. for this race. Uh, and that race will have pleased Jim because he, he loved being in the thick of races like that battling away for the lead here at Silverstone in uh, all the great Formula Ford races in the 1970s that we used to have. Alex Ames has got to be pleased with that one as well. He should be, yes. You know, yeah. he's in the heritage and he finished second on the road and a country mile in the lead winning the, uh, the, the, the heritage class. He looks exhausted there, doesn't he? He sat on the side. I think they worked very, very hard. Does he yet know that he won? I don't know, Jack. He's not behaving as if he does know that. Do you reckon he knows yet, Jack? I think he's being told now, no matter yeah. what. <laughs> I, I'm not sure, obviously, he will have been waved in, but I, I'm not exactly sure. It'll be good to have a word, because obviously we spoke to him uh, after qualifying, so I'll wander over and grab a, a quick word with with Andrew. He's discussing with his team at the moment. Um, Andrew, P1, whether you knew it or not, that's, you, you've got to be over the moon with that. Yeah, happy. Um, obviously, race one didn't go our way, got taken out, uh, which didn't feel too great. But we knew, like Walter Hayes, just never give up and it's more fun coming from the back. And then, yeah, I think two or three laps from the end, my team told me that it was P1 and just calm, relax, just take it to the finish line. And that's what I did. So a massive thanks to KMR. They've given me a, an amazing car and yeah, looking forward to the rest of the rounds. And in terms of like the rest of the season, obviously a not so good round, a really good round. There's still, I'm sure, bits to work on, but motivation's got to be pretty high. Agreed, agreed. And I think we're doing this mainly for as practice for Walter Hayes as we really want to win it. Um, last year was third, so this year we want to bring it home. Great stuff. Congratulations. And we'll try and grab a quick word. We'll have to wander back around this way. We will grab a quick word with Jason Pribble. Jason, what the third time today I've managed to speak to you? That must mean you're doing something right. Yeah, yeah, it seems like it. It felt like that race was nothing but me doing stuff wrong, but uh, I'm sure we'll get into that in a second. But yeah, I mean, couldn't be happier. I'm top three in pretty much every session, so happy about that for sure. It must have been hard work because you were having to switch from attack to defend so many times, and obviously that's two very different driving styles. You maybe take slightly different lines as well and maybe handle the car slightly differently. That must have been a busy job. Yeah, it was huge. Of course, I think pretty early on in the race, I got a track limits penalty, which... Uh, in my opinion is just that's just that's just my fault you know it shouldn't have happened it was 100 percent my race to lose and it's just disappointing but trying to defend and not lose time in that way is is really tough and i you know i'm happy to keep third at this point <laughs> great stuff congratulations and we've got maybe one more person to grab we're gonna have to go back that way because i've just spotted alex ames he's uh, chatting away He's currently not not looking at us. Alex, can we jump in for a quick word? Um, speaking to you again, it seemed like you could have been on any step of the podium there, and you settled for the second one. Yeah, um, luckily we, you know, I managed to make a break at the start, which I don't think I could have kept up otherwise. Um, the car, the old cars are great in the tow, but trying to lead is just, they just just out drive, drag past you again. So it's a bit more of just trying to preserve it. I was catching him on the brakes so I could keep up with him. So every little bit I was trying to just gain where, and I thought, well, if we could just do that. And at the end, um, it came past me and I'm like, oh, I lost the tow from that point. And, but yeah, a mega ecstatic for being back here again. It was just a, a very lucky getaway at the start, which was cool. 
Great stuff. And it, it, obviously, older chassis versus newer chassis, you keep mentioning that. Is that a, like a constant hurdle you're going to have to worry about? I think, uh, you know, we, I've spent a long time trying to get this to go as fast as it is to keep up with the modern cars. You know, and like I said, we'd done a big change on the tyres this weekend, which gave us half a second, which I was, I couldn't believe that it did that. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, you've got to, got to take where, the, where you can. And, uh, you know, I've been racing for quite a few years, so a bit savvy on some of the racecraft stuff, which is quite cool. Great stuff. Congratulations. Best of luck for the rest of the season. And I think everybody's going upstairs for the podium. So back up to you two in the commentary box. If, Jack, you want to cover the podium, I know we may be into the Sports 2000 race, but it'd be worth hearing from uh, the drivers on the podium and Jim Walsh as well. Yeah, I'll wander up and uh, see if I can grab a word. Yeah. So the Sports 2000 car is coming up to form on the grid. Two grids. The historic cars get a separate grid that starts, although this sheet doesn't actually say as much, but in the previous race it started 10 seconds behind. So the, the grid will line up like this. On pole position number one, Michael Gibbons, and beside him, number 82, Ben Cater. One and 82 is the front row. The second row, for a two-by-two two start, uh, 117, Colin Peach, who won the earlier race, and 26, Tom Stoughton. 117 and 26, row two. Row three, 77, Tony Barwell. And 50, Steve O. 77 and 50, row 3. Row 4, 48, Andy Chittenden. And 25, Josh Needham. 48 and 25, row 4. Row 5, 40, 4 row, Tim Tudor. We think, but it could be a change of driver here. And Patrick Sherrington has taken the car over. And uh, 44, John Eiley alongside 40 and 44, row 5. Row 6 is 73, Ash Law. And 34, Roger Donnan. 73 and 34, row 6. Row Jack. Yeah, so I've got the podium here. Um, in we're, we're going to quickly run through the classes as well. We're going to bring on our uh, classic winner first, uh, winner of the classic class, car number thirteen. It was Stuart Castenbaum who won the uh, the classic class. <laughs> He's just chatting away. So onto the podium he will go, and trophies are being uh, provided by Jim Walsh and uh, Val Adaway as well. So onto the podium he goes, shakes the hand of Jim, and trophy will be passed over. We will also get our historic uh, winner onto uh, the heritage winner, pardon me. So the heritage winner, um, that is car number 17, Klaus Dieter Hackel, on to the podium as the Sports 2000s head out on their green flag warming up lap. Again, a shake of the hand uh, from Jim Walsh. And it will be trophies in hand and opportunity for media to get their various, uh, various photos. And then we can very quickly run through our overall podium. <laughs> And now we'll go 3 2 1 in uh, reverse order. Finishing in third was car number 59, Jason Bribble. So Jason up onto the podium. A quick shake of the hand and <laughs> trophy provided by Val Adaway. Second place, car number 29, Alex Ames. Again, another trophy provided by Val Adaway. A shake of the hand and Ever a smile on Alex's face. And winner of race two of the weekend for the United Formula Ford Championship, it was driver of car number 40, Andrew Rackstraw. <laughs> Andrew over the beam with that one, jumping around. So joined on the podium by, of course, Jim Walsh and Val Adaway. And that just gives us time to hand back over to the, for the start of the Sports 2000 race. Thanks, Jack. Uh, just, to, just to try and complete the grid as the cars come around to the complete their green flag lap. Uh, on the eighth row, we've got uh, the 88 car, Peter Williams, and seven, Mike Turner, 88 and seven. Row nine, we've got 28, John Owen, and nine, Andrew Butler, 28 and nine, row nine. Row 10, 55, Rafe Higson, and 16, Richard Cook, 55 and 16, row 10. Row 11, 54, Bryn Tootle, and 14, Ad Adrian Ridge, 54 and 14, row 11 at the last car on the grid, the main grid, 36, Rollo Tomasi, number 36. Then the second grid, the historic grid, has on pole position, pole position 67, Gavin Wills, beside it, number 27, Mark Noaro, 67 and 27, row 1. Row 2 is 37, Will Scriver, and 17, Clive Steeper, 37 and 17, row 2. Row 3, 45, Peter Needham, and 33, Mike Fry, 45 and 33, row 3. Row four, 13, Mike Dodd, and two, David Muse, 13 and two. And the last car on the grid, number 57, Simon Aldworth, number 57, completes this uh, very large grid. There were one or two incidents in the early race, but in the end, it all worked out fine. 
uh, and so the car's now ready to go for another 20 minutes Chris yeah I mean uh, it was it was surprisingly uh, um, an awful lot going on wasn't there mm. but uh, thankfully it does look like if not all I think it is all of them are back out there green flag has now waved at the back Red lights are on for the final race of the day. Off go the lights, and it's great to see that Gibbons, whatever the problem was, is, is back out there and starts on that pole position, and off they go. The historics, of course, start 10 seconds later. Gibbons into the lead, and it's Ben Cater that's got a bad start this time because Colin Peach in the orange car is up into second. The race one winner was buzzing, to say the least. Yes. Off go the historics, and it's Mark Noiro. There's a yellow flag down at Cops Corner, so one of the uh, Duratex has obviously had a bit of a moment down there. As uh, the rest of the field arrive there, yes, it's uh, is that possibly Ben Cater that, that is is sort of going very steady out of Cops Corner. I might be wrong on that one. I don't think it is him actually, um, but uh, we'll wait and see this next time round. But th that was a problem with the historics because they all arrived there as one, and yes. suddenly when ah we got a hold position, what position were we in? So uh, <laughs> a, a tricky one for them. Tom Stoughton is the uh, the court bear in his gun at the moment, with Steve O trying desperately to find a way past him in that white orange number 50 car. So the car's uh, complete the opening lap with number one. Mike Gibbons leading as he did in the earlier race. As Chris said, winner of the early race was uh, number 117. Colin Peach, Ben Cater has come through in third place. So it can't have been him who had the moment. Steve O is there in fourth place, number 50. In fifth place is Timothy Tudor, number 40. And in sixth place is 77, Tony Barwell. So it's shown us the same drivers in the cars for this race where you've got a double lineup uh, as in the early race and i know it is for example mark noiro i know that he is uh, he's definitely back out there again uh, i think there's an is a transponder issue for tom stoughton because he's gone down to the bottom of the grid but he definitely was uh, circulating because we were watching him for a little while but uh, there he is just turning left now i think in the uh, green car with the yellow flashes in fact he's gone now he's gone back up yeah. yeah so he did have him at the bottom but he's up in fourth with steve O all over the back of him at the moment that's a great train of cars isn't it very fast train of cars at that and a good looking train of cars as well because mm. these cars do look great uh, and Mike Gibbons leads already after just two laps by one and a half seconds from Colin Peach what's going on lower down oh, oh. is this oh is this uh, Tom Stoughton dropping down the order again because of his transponder problem but what you have seen yeah it was Stoughton actually not dropping down that far down the order but he has lost one place because Steve O dived up the inside as they got down towards Cops Corner so up goes the number 50 car into fourth position now Tom Stoughton and his gun still there cool that looked like a painful bounce didn't it in those cars <laughs> they're rather stiffly sprung aren't they to say the least Historics uh, are being led by 67, 67, 67 uh, Gavin, Wills. Gavin Wills. Martin Waru had been gone away in the lead in the green number 27 car, dropped down to, well, third in his own individual class and about fifth in Historics overall now. Yes, there he is. Meanwhile, we've got the leader completing his lap, his third lap over here ahead of Colin Peach by now over two seconds, 2.1 seconds. Ben Cater, though, up into fourth place, Steve-O, down to... F oh, again, we, we were thrown by that. If you watch the timing stream, because of the lack of a transponder on Tom Stoughton's car, he kind of doesn't get a mention until suddenly he appears in fifth place. This is where he should be. Timothy Tudor is behind him in sixth place, number 4010, Tony Barwell. And then uh, the two laws, uh, number 91, Joshua Law, ahead of 73 Ashley Law. Now, where well, did... that's good news, because I've missed the fact that the 91 car's back out there again. I'm just looking to see where he should have been on the grid, and... I'd imagine right at, at the, the very back, back. Yeah, yeah, because I, that I car that is, must be the has, case. has had near on, well, I would say, engine change, but it's a, brand, it's a chassis that they've picked up and moved the various bits of bodywork over to. Oh, really? So it's a bit triggers brew yeah. then, basically. Jack did tell us that earlier on, so... It's happened, but it's happening for him now because he's really steaming up through the grid and he is in sixth place last probably this time seventh. through. Seventh with the Stoughton uh, transponder issue, I oh. think we'll probably find. As soon as Stoughton jumps back yeah, to yeah, his so rifle Yeah, yeah, so I was just looking to see where they put Stoughton in place, but they haven't this time. Not yet, no. They, no it is difficult for the tie keepers when is. cars' transponders don't work. 
It's, it's why, apparently, if it's a repeat transgression, you do get kicked out of the race. You keep being told to, to sort it out. Uh, the number 13 car, is it 13? The uh, blue and yellow, yeah, Mike Dodd. He is going brilliantly at the moment. He's up in, uh, running in 24th place, which means, yeah, he's the second of the historic cars behind Gavin Wills. So that car is, is doing an absolutely amazing job, which... Uh, I, I didn't get a chance to show you, by the way, is that Jack did find the photo of the car that it, it looks like. Oh, yes, the, the uh, Penske Lola. Porsche, Porsche 917. Penske, Porsche, yeah. yeah. Uh, I knew it reminded me of something famous, you see. Stoughton's all over the back of 77. Uh, Tom Barwell now. Unfortunately, it is still showing him as a missing, but he'll catch back up again. Oh, Tony Barwell. Sorry, Tony Barrow. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, there we go. We just had another move from the uh, the 91 car of, of Law. That's got him past Tudor, so he's up into what will probably be sixth place once Stoughton is top, uh, put back up in his right place. But Ben Cater is up into second again. The 82 yeah. car got past uh, Colin, Colin Peach. Peach. And then Steve O is fourth, and then the change has happened, as described by Chris, up into fifth place. Cup number 91. So how far could he get? Has he got a chance of winning? We've still got just under 14 minutes to go, so there's maybe time. Well, I don't think winning because, again, Gibbons has gone through oh, a yeah. new fastest lap yeah. of the race. 57s is the only driver into the 57s. Now, admittedly, 91 Josh Law is still having to uh, fight you know, through traffic at the moment, and he's still got a best time of 58.2, so it's pretty incredibly quick, isn't it? Yeah. Great battle on camera at the moment between the 25 and 73 cars, so that's Needham has got past the other Law. OK, can we talk Law, Josh Law, up into second place by the end? Yeah, I think that might be possible. But again, don't forget is that Tom Stoughton, has he just jumped up through the order now? Not enough. They're showing him as 23rd, which isn't correct. He's a lot further up than that, unless we missed him, make a mistake and go tumbling down through this order. Well, he's shown, yes, he's shown us 23rd. Uh, here he comes. So he's still in the mix. He's ahead of the 25 car. So he should be showing as in eighth position uh, at the moment, which means that Josh Law is ahead of Tom Stoughton now. Right change uh, up into eighth place has come jo Josh Needham, number 25 in his Van Diemen moving ahead of Ashlaw, number 73 and the fastest lap has just been set by Ooh. Josh Law okay so uh, that's amazing bearing in mind he's, he's not in his usual car as you say and, and yet he's gone and gone quicker than yeah. Michael Gibbons which shows us what we've been robbed of doesn't it, the two of them at the front so yes. hopefully, and I'm not sure what tomorrow's grid's based on, whether it's on their finishing positions, because uh, this one was based on their second fastest qualifying lap time. But tomorrow, if it's on based on their lap times in this race, we could have the two of them starting on the front row together. That yeah. would be good, wouldn't it? Shot on the screen there, the leading car, the reigning champion, Michael Gibbons, uh, number one uh, in the MCR. Ben Cater, 6.8 seconds behind him. So Joshua Law now in fourth place. Although he's just received a warning flag about track limits, so oh. he needs to be careful. Yes. He's got the fastest lap. He is nothing at all behind Colin Peach, winner of race one, in third place. So the podium beckons, but as you say, he's got to be careful. Uh, doesn't want to have any more indiscretions with track limits. Cool. I think that was Ben Cater just having to pick his way through the uh, the back markers. Colin Peach is under huge pressure from Steve O. So up into third has now gone the 91 car of Josh Law. Um, but Colin Peach is under huge pressure from Steve O now as well. Different classes again, so yeah. uh, Peach doesn't have to fight too hard. They do look good, these cars, don't they? Some of them better yeah. than others, but there, there really are some... But I even like the mix of them as well, the, the yes. different shapes and what have you. There we go. Stoughton is now slotted into eighth position, as, uh, as I suspected, which means he's got past Needham, or I can't remember whether 
is just ahead of him earlier or not. But uh, there is Law, the 91 car, just picking his way through the back markers at the moment. That's the problem, isn't it? We've got 33 yeah. cars out yes. there, so it's a busy old circuit. Last year, they did uh, separate out the Duratex and the Historics. But if there's not enough of, of uh, one or both of them, then you can't have separate grids, especially not here at Silverstone. Yeah. OK, just under 10 minutes to go. Michael Gibbons leads by just over six seconds from Ben Cater with uh, Josh Law in third place, 1.8 seconds only behind Ben Cater, and therefore I would have said with a reasonable prospect of taking second place before the end, but he's not going to catch, we reckon, Michael Gibbons. No, because, I mean, he is eating into that lead ever so slightly, but it's still around eight seconds, yeah. and they're lapping fairly similar in their lap times. There's the number 14 car. Now, that was the one that dumped all everywhere, so they've done well to get that car back out again, says us. I'm sure others might question me on that one but Ridge is just waiting hopefully just waiting for an ideal it'll, time to it'll never on. come no <laughs> because there's so many cars in the race it's at Luffield incidentally this has happened another new fastest lap to Josh Law 57.136 last time around he's got the gap for second to third down to under half a second 0.483 of a second is all that there is between 82 and 91 uh, there's 91. And you also realise that Michael Gibbons just did a personal best last time. I think that he's been informed that the shark's coming to get him. He's got the Jaws <laughs> music playing in his ears of, uh, of, uh, of Josh Law coming. But, you know, as long as he just keeps it ticking over, there's only eight and a half minutes left to go. The margin should be sufficient. But look should at that. That be. is the fight for second place now yes. in front of us, isn't it? That's so right. Ben Cater under huge pressure. Again, two beautiful-looking uh, MCR cars. And they are both a newer bodywork livery because you've got the, the gaps on the side where the air flows through them instead of sort of more solid blocks on the side. Oh, and we thought we were going to get... Law was going to have a look there, but wasn't really on. Ben Cater didn't move, just took the race in line, and which meant that gap disappeared somewhat. Ben's doing a good job here, isn't it? Making sure that MCR's very wide. Again, Ben Cater, I mentioned earlier, used to be a bike racer, motorbike racer. And uh, he was then in single seaters in the uh, monopostos. And here he is, he's under pressure. There goes the challenge by Law. Surely that was a slam dunk, yeah. Yes. It was that much quicker that it was a matter of well, when, not if, wasn't but it? But he's responding, though. Ben Cater's fighting back. I think it may be in vain, but uh, he's certainly not letting Josh Law get away from him. Seven and a quarter minutes to go. Still pushing Michael Gibbons to personal best look, down to a 57.44, whereas uh, Josh Law's done a 57.136 as his best, which is the fastest lap of the race thus far. First or second gap, though, is, uh, is that eight seconds? Yeah, just over eight. 8.186 seconds. So Ben Cater, Colin Peach, winner early. I don't think he's going to become a factor. I think he's going to have to settle for a place just off the podium. Unless any of those ahead of him have a problem of some sort. Yeah, I mean, we did see problems. You know, our leader, Michael Gibbons, suddenly out of nowhere yeah. slowed down. We don't know what issue. happened there, do no, we? No, we don't. And uh, which hopefully Jack will be able to find out if he yeah. holds on to the race win, we'll find out what the issue yes. was. But, um, and I think we also had some time penalties, did we not, that got dished out of the end. Well, there you go, 91, five sec So 91 uh -oh. has a five-second track, uh, track limit penalty. Uh, which will cost him second place. He'll drop down yeah. to third again behind Ben Cater unless he can improve on the situation in the remaining six minutes. So that's the big challenge, isn't it? Not really about catching and passing Michael Gibbons that I think is a bit a step too far for him, but he now needs to make sure he is five seconds, more than five seconds clear of Ben Cater, who sits there in third in the 82. This is where you almost, Ben Cater and his team will almost wish they could speak so they could tell Ben, whatever you yeah. do, keep that gap less than five seconds. Yes. Doesn't need to fight with him, but just keep the gap as small as you possibly can. Well, if the gap first to second is seven and a half seconds, and uh, even if 
I mean, Josh Law, as you say, he's got to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. But there's no point in trying to overtake Michael Gibbons, even if he catches him, because he won't get ahead of him in the final result. Well, it's down to 7.6, but actually yeah. went out, back out that time, because uh, there was a couple of tenths lost. But that's how tight it is between them. Talking about tight, 48-73 glued together. And that is uh, Ash, uh, yeah, Ashley Law. And they're going three wide at the moment, but that's a back marker. And uh, the 48 car of uh, Andy Chittenden. So that is what positions are they in? They are 10th and 11th, respectively. Chittenden's past Law this time round, but Law's trying to come back. Not possible this time round. I mean, it goes to show, even with all this downforce, you can still take too much speed into a corner and, and abuse the track limits, can't you? Yes. A lot of the other ones we were watching, like on the MX-5s, it was, it was understeer as much as anything, wasn't it? Whereas these, no, it's uh, just pushing a little bit too hard to get through this field, which I think we can forgive him for. <laughs> I think he's always going to push that hard. Right. Now, Tom Stoughton, you were saying, uh, I wasn't disagreeing, but I thought you were right, had... Uh, not being given one of the laps he should have been given, but he's gradually working his way up the order. He's just shown as being in ninth place, but you reckon he's still a lap it. short. No, 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 not anymore. Oh, they they slotted it up. I mean, it will go tumbling down again and they'll slot it back up. They did that a handful of laps ago uh, to, to catch it back up again. Yeah, okay. Now, the lead margin is down to six seconds now. There on the screen is Michael Gibbons, number one, but with three and three quarter minutes left to go, he must know that he doesn't need to push excessively hard. Yes, you can stroke it home, as they say, apparently. Well, especially with the, the track limits thing, is that, that, you, that there is a lot to be said for that. Stop pushing harder than you need to, otherwise you're going to fall foul. Law to cater is five seconds. So... Isn't it? So he's still in second then, isn't he? Even after his penalty has been applied. Because it was four. I was about. I started that sentence when he was four seconds behind. Then he goes over the line right, yeah. and he's just gone over five yeah. seconds. Good spot. He's uh, he's managed to, to get the lead up, hasn't he? So uh, as Bit. long as it doesn't add any more to it, because the next one would be 15 seconds, won't it? Yeah, 5.18 seconds is how far he is behind Michael Gibbons. And 5.4 seconds is how far he is ahead of Ben Cater. But I don't think in the remaining time, even though their laps are... He's taken well, out a about a second a lap, to be fair, but yeah, he would have to be then five seconds further down the road, wouldn't he? Well, it could be a dramatic finish. He, he gets across the line. No, he, he catches Michael Gibbons, but he's not going to get five seconds ahead of him, is he? No, no. Well, what he now needs to do is get 10 seconds away from the car behind, because I've just looked, the 10 second penalty board is being shown out. And to what number? 91. Oh, my oh. gosh. So it is a 15 second penalty now in total, isn't it? Because that's yeah. uh, added on to his five. We were seeing the 15 seconds given to a lot of the, the cars earlier, and that's what we're going to get. So sadly, he's just fallen foul of the track limits at too many times. So it'll be a lawless podium. He will be. <laughs> I mean, trying to look now, what will he have? Uh, ben Cater's going to be ahead of him. Well, maybe Peach. that's as far as you thought. We're going to be close with Colin Peach. I think Colin Peach will jump ahead of him. Uh, bearing in mind, we're down into the last minute and a half now. Well, I think you could say he's certainly being fairly extravagant with the lines that he takes through some of the corners when we can see him on the camera. Uh, he's pushing on very hard, but uh, over the limit, over the curb limit. You, you kind of think, well, I bet it feels a bit different to, the, to what he's used to. Oof, and the back mark is not being fair oh, to the race it? leader there, yeah. goodness me. The 28 car getting right in the way and nearly snapping his nose off. Tom Stoughton sadly is now into the pit, so the transponder issue... <laughs> Uh, they comes they'll so. be hoping they'll keep flashing it up. We've got a yellow flag down at Cops Corner, so somebody has had uh, a moment, presumably. Although that was, you know, it's still flashing down there. Can't see what the issue is down there, but there's certainly yellow flags down at Cops Corner. 
30 right. seconds. Leader on to the last lap. And that lead is down to under two and a half seconds now. Yes, yeah, so he's going to get the satisfaction of having uh, driven a storming race. Unfortunately, blemished by penalties, curb track limit penalties. It's going to be, he's got to really go for it on this last lap then because he needs to, he's not got quite enough to hold on to a podium place, I no, don't think. No. Well, now he's being held up by, uh, by a couple of the historic cars uh, this time round, but it's because Steve O's disappeared down. That must be the yellow flag yes. down at Cops Corner then. So the number 50 car of Steve O is, uh, is dropping down through this order, I'm afraid to say. But Michael Gibbons for the final time round Luffield. So here he comes then, Michael Gibbons has taken the checkered flag to win the second race of the three race weekend here at Silverstone in the SRCC Sports Racing Car Club Sports 2000 Championship. The gap of the flag between Gibbons and Law, 7.96 seconds, but that's going to be adjusted shortly. So Ben Cater, we think, will be in effect second. And Colin Peach, we reckon, will be third, or will he? We can't be certain of that. Interestingly, they've only applied five seconds at the moment. That's, that, that, that's why I'm hesitant, because, yes, you're, as you say, it, it hasn't come up on the screen. That's what Jack was telling us he'd seen. Oh, that's it. <laughs> um, yes, we have, get so engrossed in the racing and uh, so on. Well, you, you got your time, Jack, to take over the uh, podium to make sure the right three. Cheers, see you tomorrow, Chris. Uh, to see that the right top three we have. The screen is still showing us. Michael Gibbons winning from Josh Law and Ben Cater. Colin Peach fourth, Timothy Tudor fifth, Tony Barwell sixth, Josh Needham seventh, Peter Williams eighth, Anthony Chitterson ninth and tenth, Ashley Law. And what the fate of those penalties will be, well, Jack may be able to tell us a bit more when whoever the three drivers at the podium present themselves at the podium. Just whilst we're waiting for the final post-race podium and interviews, uh, tomorrow is mainly about the Ford KAs or cars, the Enduro Car 5R race, which uh, takes the track first of all at nine o'clock for a 60 minute qualifying session because the cars normally shared by three drivers, so there's three drivers per car who have to get through. Yeah, Jack, so over to you. I'm just, uh, I'm just down here now. I can see Josh Law, and I, I don't know whether he's unaware. He did, he did finish P4 after all of that, and uh, even yes. with the penalties applied, corrected times, yeah, P4. So that means whilst Michael Gibbons uh, still won the race, Ben Cater promoted to second place, Colin Peach up to third. So it all sort of changed towards the end. So we'll run over and grab. We've got to grab a word with, with Josh Law after the day he's had. So. Just taking out his earpieces. Josh, oh, what could have been, I think, because you'd showcased in that race perfectly how quick this car is, whether it's the car you expected to race or not. And even with time penalties applied, what, P4? You've got to be happy with that. Oh, no, I didn't know I got time penalties. That sucks. OK, never mind. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, and, yeah, it's just great. And nice to get a bit of a result after uh, having all the engine problems and all that stuff. So, yeah. I'm chuffed. And you get to do it all again tomorrow, hopefully minus the penalties, but you know the car is quick and we know you're quick already from this year already. So what are you, what are you looking for tomorrow, top step? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm aiming for. Yeah, so we'll see. Great stuff, thank you, Josh. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news as well, unfortunately. So um, we'll have to try and grab somebody else. Who is it that we've got here? Michael, Michael right, okay. So Michael, first of all, explain what happened this morning. 
Um, there's a tiny little bracket that on the gearbox at the back that holds the uh, gear cable, and that fell off, and then I couldn't change gear, and I was stuck in third gear, which is not ideal. Uh, which is a shame because we were running really well and got a nice rhythm and we had a nice gap and it was all sort of under control. But unfortunately, those things happen and um, we got it back together. We even found the bracket that fell off and we put the same one back on. Um, and it's, it's all worked. And yeah, um, it was nice to sort of, sort of right that wrong. And tomorrow, looking over your shoulder because it seems like somebody's back in a, in a quick car and we know Josh is quick, so showcase some good pace. Is that something you're going to have to worry about tomorrow or are you just going to keep your head down and see what happens? Um, like, I, I don't know exactly how quickly he was going. I could see the gap was coming down, but I was in a position where I didn't need to worry. So um, uh, I'm looking forward to having a proper race then tomorrow because today has been disrupted by both of us having issues. Um, and yeah, pick up where we left off last year, next to each other for most of the race, hopefully. Great stuff, congratulations, Michael. We'll wander back over this way where we've got a few more of our drivers as well. You can hear, might be able to hear Michael and, uh, and Josh Law embracing each other because that's all they did last year. They just raced so, so close, absolutely door to door. So we'll try and pick out who we've got here. By the looks of it, we've got Colin Peach here. Do we have Colin? <laughs> yes, we do. Colin, you've done it again. Yeah, another podium. <laughs> um, Second time in my life now, I suppose, yeah. Well, coming into this weekend, if, like not having a podium before, and then all of a sudden come the end of the day, that's twice you've been on the podium. You wouldn't have believed me if no, I told you that. definitely wouldn't have believed you at all, no. Like, my voice is gone because it was like, it was really intense out there as well. So I was just catching Ben at the very end as well. Nearly stuck second. So, yeah, I've had a really great weekend so far. So, really loving it. And you get to do it all again tomorrow? Uh, yeah, hopefully again. Another podium would be brilliant. So. <laughs> Great stuff. Congratulations. Best of luck for tomorrow. I think we also have a uh, driver of Conan Brady too, Ben Cater. Do we, we've, have we got Ben? Yes, we do, Ben. Uh, we had a brief chat, I think, this morning. Um, race two, it seemed like you were under pressure there a little bit towards the end. Uh, well, f foolishly, I thought I'd save my tyres for tomorrow and I wasn't going to catch those guys at the front. And I thought, well, that's fine. There's no one behind me. And then after a couple of laps, I saw this orange blob in my mirror and realised I'd better get my arse into gear. But I, well, I'd got it covered. It was fine. And, of course, having saved those tyres for tomorrow, where, where does that leave you for tomorrow? Is there anything you're going to change? I don't know whether you've looked at the weather. I know I haven't. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to be like. But is there anything specific you're going to change overnight or just a good night's sleep and go from there? I think a good night's sleep is the way forward. And uh, I, there's not much I can do. I mean, I'm new to the championship, so I don't really have any clever secret plans. But, you know, do what you can. Great stuff. Congratulations. We'll wander over this way and just try and grab uh, one one more chat um, as well. Hopefully we can pick up uh, the driver of the number 37 machine, I believe. We're just working our way through, trying to not to get in the way. We should have uh, William. Have we got William here? Is it William? No. No? Who do we have? You stood next to his car, so I was just... Uh, yes. Ah, Will's there. We'll, we'll wander back over this way and we'll, we'll grab Will. So... Uh, it seemed like throughout that race, the historics sometimes give um, a, a few of the slightly more modern Durotech machinery a run for their money. In terms of racecraft as well, is, it, is that just the nature of the car? You can race super close? Yeah, I think so. They're a little bit softer and less aerodependent than the Durotech. So I think we can get away with a bit more and they give off a little bit more of a toe so we can run quite close together, which unfortunately at the start, the yellow flag would drop back a few places. But at least I got to have a play with some of them for the first few laps. So yeah, it was good close racing. And, of course, you get to do it all again tomorrow. So is there much that you can change on one of these historic cars, or is it very much sort of plug and play and get out there? Um, I think there's probably a lot, but sometimes you can get a bit too into it. I think most of the time I'll probably be found by myself paying a bit more attention and trying a bit harder. So I think I'm going to go with that for tomorrow. Great stuff. Best of luck for all the rest of your weekend. Well, at least for me, it's goodbye. But very briefly, hopefully Ian is still up there. Yes, he is. Back up to Ian in the commentary box for the final time today. Thank you very much for all your hard work in the pit lane, Jack. I'm not quite sure whether it's going to be you or Chris taking to the pit lane tomorrow. But uh, we look forward to tomorrow's racing, the main event of which will be the 5R Ford KA race. But we do also have, as has been clear from... Uh, Jack's questions and ask, uh, questions he's been asking drivers. We've got the Bernie's V8s and Historic Outlaws out again for their third race of the weekend. We've got the Club and Sports Prototypes out again for their third race of the weekend. Sports 2000s out again. Uh, that's all in the morning. Uh, lunch was early enough today. It's going to be even earlier tomorrow, 11.35. Uh, and the Enduro car race is underway at 12.35 with all the intrigue. The cars may not be the fastest you've ever seen. They may not be quick enough to race at Le Mans. But uh, nonetheless, a 5R endurance race 
is always very enjoyable. There's a large entry, and we very much look forward to that. And if you can't make it to Silverstone, and please do think about coming here. We'd love to have people along to the home of British Motor Racing, whatever the racing uh, may be, uh, then uh, you can stream the uh, output from Silverstone from where we now say good night and wherever you may be, drive home carefully wherever you're heading and do come back to Silverstone tomorrow or very soon. Bye for now.